PKA, episode 542 with our guest Dick Masterson. Taylor? This episode of PKA is brought to you by Postmates and Smartmouth. A couple of wonderful sponsors. We'll talk more about them later. There it is. 11 seconds different. and we start the show. Why is aren't, why aren't other shows like that? I swear people with no fucking sponsors take a minute and a half to begin their content I'm here for. I saw the title. Start talking about those things. You know what I don't like is is the YouTube like I was trying to learn how to install Battle for Middle Earth 2, which is like a, a computer game from 2005, a Lord of oh. the Rings computer game. And I was trying so hard to do it and like every single video on YouTube is Can like, I can I interrupt you, you and guess yes. what every every single video begins like? Let me just yeah. guess. Hey guys, been a while since I've uploaded. Just wanted to catch oh! you up. Just wanted to catch you up on the nuances of my boring day-to-day -day life and, and <laughs> the things that have made me postpone uploading this video on how to install Total Total. Dude, War it makes me makes me, commit, makes me want to commit Sudoku. This and they're they're fucking just oh you know here's an explanation for why I haven't been making a video and another really interesting thing you might uh, I've been busy with school and it's like no tell me what to download so I can play this game from 2005. Yeah, I, I, here. So I watch a lot of uh, motorcycle videos lately, and so many of them start like this. The title will be like "How to Corner Faster a Motorcycle in the Dirt." Okay, this is something I'm interested in. Video starts. Hey, I'm about to make a video that tells you how to corner faster in the or on a motorcycle in the dirt. Right. I gathered that from the title. Get to it. And then the intro plays. The intro's way too fucking long. It's like 20 seconds. And then he comes back from the intro and says, "In this video, I will be teaching you how to corner." I do. We cover. You're making me crazy. We're 90 seconds into the video now, and you haven't told me how to go faster in the dirt. I no. hate the other people who make videos on the internet. <laughs> It should all be like our video, or I guess your videos, because <laughs> Dick, what's, what's this, making you? Was mad? this rant brought to you by your advertiser? Or <laughs> SEO, has ruined, SEO has ruined the internet. It's like, uh, how do I, how do I make some chicken nachos? Like, well, uh, the nacho was invented in fourteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> How much weight can I put on my deck? Decks are a great place to enjoy summer. <laughs> <laughs> a friend is someone that you've shared a conspiracy with. It's kind of like, oh my God. Fuck you, man. Come on, just give me the. Yeah, anyway. What did you say? How hey, guys. You, you yeah. guys, uh, you guys, I don't remember the last time I was here, but you guys have gotten a lot older just looking at, and I mean, Kyle, you look the same. You look great, Kyle. No, you look the same. What do you look the same as well? Very handsome, but Taylor. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Whoa, shit. You look like you've aged about 20 years from the last time I was here. What happened? Has being engaged done this to you or something? My God. You've I've got been, bags. You've got saddlebags under your eyes. It looks like you're riding cross country for the Pony Express. Look at you. <laughs> you're you're right. I mean, it was probably a mistake to get engaged. I think you're. I think. I think the proof is in the pudding. I'm going gray. Uh, I've I've gone straight like from. The pudding. <laughs> Turn your head sideways. Let us see your gray hair. It's oh, so man, short. I can't tell it's how gray it is. is. There's more gray on the side than you think. The top doesn't really have any gray, but the sides quite Mine's a bit. The same way. Your hair is so gray that when you shave it, it's still gray like a Dalmatian. Like the skin is spotted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like cheetah. A, like a spotted I'm scalp. So you, I'm so glad you look uh, horrible because I got a dog. Well, I mean, my just, just to be clear, you still look like a guy I would not pick up at a bus stop. <laughs> I mean, you, you look like a dangerous, dangerous miscreant. You that do. is true. <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about uh, me or Dick or both of us? Dick! Dick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I pick you up. No, no thank you. If I don't pick me up all the time. Dude, you are living in the, the most fragile glass house. Yeah, I know, Dick. You that. know what Dick calls hitchhiking? <laughs> Hiking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I hitchhike, they go, oh, yeah, I got, whenever I carpool, they're like, yeah, I got the passenger seat. It's good, but the trunk may be for you. Hop in there. <laughs> um, I got a dog recently, so Very my nice. my uh, my schedule has turned from, like, a nice leisurely 10 a.m. wake up, staying up till 3, to, like, staying up till 3, and then waking up at, like, 6.30 in the fucking morning with the dog every fucking, I got a dog, and they immediately ca called all the teachers back to school. Like, I figured, get a dog, girlfriend's up early, she's going to take care of it and then do school. They called her back, so I'm like a single mom. 
now raising this dog <laughs> all on my own doing be, living my best life um actually i'm doing more than a single mom because this baby bites yeah because so you're paying taxes I, yeah oh. <laughs> yeah uh, oh, Jesus. So <laughs> i had to process that but life, that was quality uh, <laughs> that's been my bad decision of the year uh how about what you guys? kind of dog bad? did you get yeah golden lab one? Oh, sorry. Yellow lab. Yellow, Yellow lab. lab. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've had two of those. I like them. Yeah. You want another one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm putting this one in the cloud. I'm selling an NFT of my dog. Dude, I don't we're know the that. worst people ever. We have a dog. She's nine or eight and she's a great Dane, right? So she's living on borrowed time. Oh. I'm picking out names for her replacement. That like, <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel guilty about it, but. You should. That's horrible. <laughs> no, you know what you should do? She's so old. You can just think of a dog name. You don't have to think of it as a replacement dog I, name. It, but it is. Like, Bark Vader and Boba Fetch are leading candidates at this oh. point. And okay. They're just, they're just quality names. Um, we'll see. Dogs, they respond better if you put a Y sound at the end. Like Teddy. Like an <laughs> E sound. Like something that finalizes. Like not, yeah. you know, Dr. Robotnik, whatever you said. Bark Vader? Uh, Come Mark on, Vader. Bark Vader. Vader will be great. Just yelling at it to bark and then having <laughs> it bark. Like, and at like the Abbott and Costello of dogs. Bark! Stop! Bark! Bark! No! Bark! No! No! Bark! <laughs> you can be the straight man. Good, Good idea. You know, you could actually, your dog, your current dog is probably getting deaf. You could start, you know, We could rename her. Name. Yeah, yeah this just, is good. Just start testing the name. She doesn't know. You know, she can be Bark Vader for a bit or or just Vader. I like just Vader more. Yeah, it's probably what we'd call him. Yeah. A little nickname. Yeah. What was Chewy? the other one? How about Chewy? Then there's Chewbacca. If you, if you really Chewy. want to go Star Wars. Chewy's a good name for a dog. Chewy. A little I, I just feel thing. like Chewy's supposed to look a certain way, right? Not a great I mean, day. you could like dress it up like Chewbacca and make it wear whatever you... I mean, it's kind of like a slave. You can make it wear whatever you want. You're making strong yeah. points. Yeah. We'll what see. What about... Uh, Rose, the Chinese one, who is in, and I mean that as the name, that character. Rose, Rose the, the Chinese. Chinese one. Oh, oh the, is new, that like the, the, the chunky new. Chinese character that was so brave and yeah, like, uh, cool. like, 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 why two was Star she brave? Well, she was brave because actually, she right? existed. No, but didn't she like, yeah, have a free escape path and then go back and save someone with a, I mean, doesn't shot? every single character in Star Wars? Name me the cowardly character in Star Wars, the one who didn't come back heroically. C-3PO. Oh dear, I'm, 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 I saved Luke, the day. C-3PO is like the, the linchpin to the whole Luke Skywalker is the cowardly character who merely sent a holographic image of himself that in was lieu a of actual projection. Okay. <laughs> well, asked and answered. All right, Luke Skywalker. He gave his Perhaps life you've so heard that they could him. escape. He Christ-like. Sh he should have went and fought. Be cooler. He should have went and fought. They wrote him that way. Mark Hamill wanted to show up and fight. All right, God damn it. <laughs> they wrote Don't him that way. Don't get me I didn't say Mark Hamill was a coward. I said Luke Skywalker you, was. You, uh, you make a strong point. I'll finish oh, no. this. Mark, Mark Hamill is a <laughs> coward. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Mark Hamill is a, 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 a great, fine man. My favorite I'm Joker. I'm so upset about that. I'm almost as upset about what they did to Star Wars as I am about Game of Thrones. Like, it, it's so fucking upsetting. I, I, am, I'm, I watched Star Wars today. I watched Star Wars today. The Bad Batch. It's the newest uh, Star Wars thing. It's, uh, they, they took that group of clones from the Clone Wars uh, TV show Gave them their own show. <clears throat> and it begins on the day that Order 66 was given, you know, when they told all the clone troopers to kill the Jedi. And uh, the Bad Batch are those five clones who are each, like, mutant clones. Like, Am I supposed big... to know these clones already? I f you, you're... It, you would absolutely know them if you'd, like, watched The Clone Wars and, you know, I mean, I did 10 years it. ago, yeah. Um, so the Bad Batch are part of the Clone Wars um, uh, series, they are five clones who each aren't quite clones. They're like, um, there's like a big hulking one. There's a sharpshooter one. There's one that's like Rambo with like extra senses. There's a super smart one. Um, there's one of them that, that's got like mutated and he's kind of mechanical now. And uh, they work as this like A-team kind of group um, within the Star Wars universe. They're the ones you call in to do like, dirty jobs in the uh as clone troopers they're like a five-man kill squad and uh they, have, they, they because of their mutation 
uh, or were not affected by Order 66 exactly. And so, yeah, they got their own show on, on uh, Disney Plus now. Watched the first episode today. It was an hour and four minutes. Pretty good. Pretty good. I liked it. Okay. What's it called again? The Bad Batch. Yeah, I just want to make sure. We'll see if Gremlin? Gremlins yeah, too. Uh, all I know is May, May the 4th gets worse every year. I think when we all went in for May the 4th, it was when everyone loved Star Wars, and now it's just like more begrudge. Every year is like, oh, God. Here, it's, here, comes the, <laughs> here comes the here comes the war of the I hate Star. It gets worse every year. Um, I, I, Which I don't side know. are you on? Do you hate Star Wars? Do you like it? Yeah, I hate Star Wars now. I hate I hate wars. I hate the stars. I hate I hate the whole thing. <laughs> have a fight on the Earth where God intended. I hate their Amen. names. Flarm Dumpus. Oh, here's the new Star Wars. It's Flarm Dumpus and Peter. <laughs> Peter Plinus. Oh, wow. And they got a, a sassy robot. Schwigger, Schwigger blurred where, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking great, guys. Fucking great. Those are uh, the Tim and Eric names. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just upsetting. It's just upsetting. Uh, I I like, look, I like when companies make tons of money. Like, like I got no problem with that. It's just, I, I feel like they've just bastardized this thing so much, and it's become so woke. Like, I don't know what you call it, but on my phone, when I swipe um, right to left, I get to my other apps. But when I swipe left to right, I get like uh, Google News, like, like all these Google News stories. And uh, that's how I found out about Bad, Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. And it was like fixing the, 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 ableist, the ableist history of Star Wars content with the new episode of Bad Batch. Were there Apparently, a bunch of Star Wars in the people? past it has been ableist. That because mm -hmm. back when um, uh, Luke Skywalker asked Obi-Wan Kenobi about Darth Vader and if he could be turned back to the good side, he was like, oh, no, he's more machine than man at this point. And, and, and apparently people took issue with that as being ableist because Darth Vader is handicapped. And, and they made it seem like they thought Darth Vader was evil purely because of his handicapped like, like, like position in life. Ah, wait, is and that not the point? And so now in the Bad Batch, like I said, you have that one character who's got like lots of machine implants and there's a little line in there where they're like, oh yeah, you're mach more machine than man. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're good. That's, what, that, that's why this didn't affect you. I, yeah. Yeah, Thank God they cut that scene where, uh, where Darth Vader takes his helmet off and Luke goes, oh, you're white? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I never look at content through this, like the political spectrum. Like I'm pretty... I don't know. People talk about how woke this movie is or that movie is or how there was a metaphor built in there that they didn't like that supported the red team or the blue team. I, that shit barely ever bothers me. Even the end game stuff with all the girls, you know, don't worry. She has help. I, what, that was like 10 seconds of the whole movie. However, whenever I hear there's a murderer, I want to know who he voted for. Like that always gets me curious. Now, oh, did that mean? guy kill like 70 people at a country music concert? Who is he supporting? We never found oh, anything out about that guy. Isn't that wild that that happened? It's like the biggest shooting in American history, and we're not going to look into it at all. <laughs> we're not going to say anything. And it's like, what was this? Was this some MK Ultra guy? Like, what? What do you? What, what's going on here? Ooh, I like that. I like what's MK like Ultra? MK what? It's uh, where the they used to use control. LSD to experiment on people to see what they could gauge. It's what happened. It's what Manson game. was. Yeah, Manson was the in the MK Ultra. Yeah, it was. Uh, Ted Kaczynski was in the. Uh, the program where they basically induced hallucinations with L LSD and we're like, maybe it'll give you powers. And it's like, nah, it makes people fucking weird. And <laughs> <laughs> so then like, yeah, it kind of makes them into super villains. And then they get, they get destiny basically to get in a room with you and argue with you about everything you believe and like try to deconstruct you mentally so they could turn you into a terrorist. So it's like Scientology almost. It sounds yeah. like where they, they're like, they're doing their thetan thing and you got to give us the, the bad details on yourself so we have dirt on you. I don't know the details of it. I just know LSD was involved. Are you still harboring ill will right now. towards destiny? No, I love destiny. Oh, uh, but I misunderstood. You know, you know how he argues. It, it persistently. He got banned yeah. from Twitch and then unbanned. Uh, Did you see that? No, he got unbanned from Twitch. Yeah, so basically the way I understand it is he was talking I didn't want I watched like the short little Twitch clip of it and he was talking to some some uh lady I don't know who she is and she kept talking about like Hunter Biden photos and graphic things and I saw Destiny be like, "Okay, don't 
don't show that on the stream. Don't show that. And she's like in the little camera on there. And she just goes and shows like a naked picture of him. It was it was like a, sh- a picture from like the New York Daily News or something like it was blurred out. Like you, you couldn't see penis or boobs or anything. And they knocked him off for that. And I guess that they rightfully saw like, OK, well, this is absurd. Like he clearly told that person he didn't want them to do that. Like mm-hmm. she sabotaged him with anything. Uh, to, to fuck with him. So it's good that he didn't get fully banned. He, he, yeah. He's still uh, departnered, which is pretty That's exactly. huge. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. I thought that I, you said it perfectly, but in my head, I interpreted it as he got mm-hmm. partnered again. But that's not what I no, no, no. And that's like that's a huge deal. Losing your Twitch partnership for his job. Like, that's his job. You know, like you can't get subs anymore. Like. Yeah, yeah he, I, he, I remember he was on the show and he was like, we asked him about it after. He's like, yeah, first thing I did, I got really drunk. I was really stressed out about it. And then the next day it was like, all right, well, I just got I got to figure out what to do. And like he has a pretty big YouTube channel also. But if he didn't have that contingency plan, like he threw he, out a number on how much money it was going to cost him. And I was like, what? What? How much are you making? And, I, and then he kind of wanted to change the topic, so I'm not going to go into the specifics of the number, but it's burned it was into $648,000. Exactly, <laughs> exactly that number. It was weird. Yeah. Twitch has some odd rule applications sometimes, often, where it's like, uh, like that, that would not... <clears throat> Like, I would imagine that someone was like headhunting Destiny there, like boom, I, I want him out because like it's not that just it, it was a weird picture. rules. It's not just they have weird rules. It's the stuff that gets by and the stuff that gets caught by the filter, the filter. Because mm-hmm. um, like I watched a whole montage of like um, of girls the other day, and I was just like, I had no idea these girls were on here. Why am I wasting my time on Pornhub? Like, like I'm <laughs> going to Twitch from now on when I want to jerk off because this is outrageous. Like apparently it's a thing now where they like write people's names on their bodies and like Sharpie and shit. Yeah. So this, this girl's like in her bra and panties and she's covered in the names of like dozens and dozens of users. And then there's, they're just like, like titties everywhere. And of course the body painting and just so much cleavage and camel toe and just, just booty shorts pulled so far up their ass that they must smell when they're done with them. I saw just jumping up and down. It's great. Girl in booty shorts, when there was a significant donation, she wrote your name on a board. But the thing is, she took a whiteboard and she put it behind the camera on the ground. So here, I'll give you a demo. This is how she wrote (laughs) on the board. She'd be like, oh, Oh, Taylor, thank you for your donation. Your name goes on the board. Oh, dear. Oh, we can talk about Woody now and he can't hear. And then she goes and come back. Oh, he didn't mean it, though. What's that? I would, you wouldn't get my donation with that half-ass bend bend over yeah, inside. I'm sorry. You really got like you, you already got I'm the donation. I'm new at this. <laughs> you're gonna have to arch your back. You have to arch your back. You're gonna kind of look back coyly, like, "Oh, are you looking at me?" You gotta, <laughs> you gotta sell it. Did you see that like greasy looking dude who did it? Where it was like hot tub stream, and it was like some guy on like an American flag speedo, like no other clothes <laughs> on. He's, he's like pressing his pecs together, and and it was. You know, it's pretty funny. He was capitalizing on it. Mm. And, you know, more power to you. But yeah, it is odd. But it's weird what gets through and what doesn't, right? Like uh, anything Mm -hmm. that is, um, I guess, anti-trans, anti-gay, they come down hard on. But then there's Mm -hmm. other stuff that seems equally inappropriate that they let go. Uh, Destiny got banned for saying... He was for violence against BLM protesters, maybe. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. In a roundabout way, um, by literally saying it, yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I I wonder if he had had the same vitriol towards the Capitol rioters, if they would have come down as hard on him right there. I don't think they would have. Yeah, probably not. Probably Mm -hmm. definitely not. (laughs) Well, I mean, look, know, know the room you're in, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're you're on a platform by a company owned out of Silicon Valley. You you know, I, I you yeah. know, I, I, I tried not to get like say anything like that's being emotionally driven, you know, I mean, fucking Internet, like, like maybe think about what you say before you say it to some extent. Like, like, you know, we're trying to yeah, make we laugh, don't say but... dumb stuff here on the show. I mean, no, we do all the fucking time. But we don't, like, tell people <laughs> no, you know what? I, I dare anyone to find <laughs> even one. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge you to make a montage. 
<laughs> you guys just have to do opposite day. Like every once in a while, you throw, oh, we're having opposite day. I love the government. Oh, my God. Dick. I fucking hope they last forever. <laughs> I love paying taxes, and I love everyone who votes. You fucking <laughs> geniuses. Uh, I hate whom you've elected. Uh, I feel the same way about your mothers. No, wait, I don't. Uh, I lost my own bit. You lost, right, it. That's, mm-hmm. lost the opposite day. That's okay. Though. I lost uh, you know, I love our viewers' mothers a lot. Dick, how have you been? Uh, I mean, aside from ha- aside from the having the dog schedule, fantastic. I have a weight loss contest going, also at fat.dick.show. I don't know, a whole audience <laughs> weight loss. So I've gained about uh, four pounds, I think, on the weight loss contest. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's, you understand the how that's this fucking works. Hilarious. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure I don't. I'm 100 <laughs> percent sure I don't understand how it works. I just I just can't get it together. So um, are you eating too much? I guess you're eating a caloric surplus, or are you lifting weights? Uh, and it's all muscle. I, I think what it is is the fucking the dog doesn't walk. It wants to go out and it just sits in my neighbor's driveway. So I'm st- I went from like being able to walk every day and doing a pretty good job of it um, to just standing in the driveway of my neighbor looking like an asshole, looking like a weird mm-hmm. creeper, looking like I'm stalking my own house, which <laughs> has happened before. Like some some uh, schizophrenic weirdo showed up at my house uh, wanting to do comedy together. Really? Uh, <laughs> when did this when did this happen? Oh, this happened. This happened a couple months ago. I know, and up. I thought it was a good idea, and I don't call you <laughs> names. All right. <laughs> you could have so, just so, said no. What, what <laughs> yeah. happened? Was it, a, was it a rap on the door? Was it like a DM? I'm at your house. How did no a, a rap on the door? Uh, then I checked my DMs after it happened, and it's like ten thousand, ten thousand unanswered DMs. Uh, going into like uh, just schizo, schizo, schizo. <laughs> what have nothing to do with the next? Like this, I randomly scrolled. I called the cops to get you know the paperwork filed uh, in case I <laughs> would have to request a restraining yeah. order from the state. Uh, and I pulled it up. I'm like, here, well, here's an example of like stuff that he's saying. And I just gave it a, a, a you know showcase showdown mm-hmm. spin on the DMs in the mm-hmm. other box. Yeah. Stop the random one, and it's and the random message. I shit you in front of the cop. I'm like, here you go. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, and it's the guy talking about like the nature of murder and how wouldn't I agree that like when you murder someone, you really aren't uh, you really aren't ending someone. You're just taking them and making them a part of you. And I'm like, oh, I, didn't read, I didn't read these by the way, Mr. Officer. Uh, but oh, your eyes. I hope this is a juicy one and they're not all like this. But, <laughs> Dude, that is actually isn't that a quote from the show Hannibal? Like I don't know yeah, I about know. eating people. It's about eating people where you cook their liver and you make them a part of you forever. That creepy Swede or whatever. Yeah, that you know, was an actual serial killer you were chatting with. Oh, he was just quoting some that he liked, and I took I I took. Or maybe off. he's what that was based upon. Maybe he's he likes to eat more, more, more instructive. Uh, How many cannibals do you think are out there who are out, actually out there right now being active cannibals killing in America? Eating them? Not enough. I prefer to use America because that's where I am. Yeah. I bet there's a couple, a few dozen. Yeah, I bet I, there's I, at least ten, like out there right now, killing and eating people. Yeah, I don't know, dude. There's three hundred million doing, of us who are actually doing cannibal stuff. Or who, who are, are actually out there killing and eating people, like as we speak. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ten. Ten. Less. That's my number. Yeah. I just feel yeah, like so they get a caught more. Doesn't. It'd be mentioned if they ate people. Don't eat people much. Maybe that we, I think that people who eat people are smart because they eat people. Yeah, they're full of human brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, th- that's how it works, right? That's exactly how it works. If, Everyone knows that. You are what you eat. Well, I mean, like, isn't that kind of like if the that were true, I'd thing? cluck more. I think the thing about serial killers is that they kind of tend to exist on the you far do like end to fly. of the fly curve. Where like <laughs> <laughs> Chickens can't fly. They wish they could, though. That Neither is can yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> now <Mouth> words hurt. <laughs> you can only fly because you happen to be smart enough to get that ridiculous machine strapped to your back every afternoon. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, can we talk about the things that happened to those people you know over the last week or so? I uh, not like the if we're abstract one, about it, but we can talk about the motorcycle one. 
Okay, okay. Um, it's probably the better one. Yeah, so so Woody um in his twilight years has decided to start adventuring more. <laughs> That's um, not true. Can I interrupt there? I have been making hey, bad decisions I, I since I was 12. He's right? going to tell you about all the adventures he's gone on throughout his whole life and how he's essentially Indiana Jones. <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, Kyle kind of cut me off at the pass here, but, <laughs> but I want to say my first bad decision was at 12, surfing the hurricane. And there have just been a series of them ever since. This idea that making bad decisions is a new thing. What are you new around here? I've been doing it from the start, but carry on, Kyle. Um, yeah, so his, his newest thing, um, it's brand new, um, is, is motorcycling. Um, he's hating this. I'm doing all this on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's my sixth motorcycle. But <laughs> Not true. I've been on a, I rode a bike when I was a teenager. <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah, I know. Started on mopeds, six motorcycles. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> so, uh, this brand new thing, he just has gotten into motorcycles mm -hmm. for the first time in his life. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, so he went on a little, uh, he's going on this big adventure cross country on his bike, like on trails, like, like literally going cross country all the way to the West coast. And it's coming up fairly soon. And, um, so recently he and a few of his, uh, his buddies went for a little mini adventure, you know, off in the wilderness of North Carolina, doing little back roads, riding up, up on some trails and such. And uh, they were giving Woody a little bit of a hard time because he was kind of falling behind. And he was being a little bad about it. And then all of a sudden, the lead man w drove off a goddamn cliff and, like, broke his back so at the bottom of the ravine. In. It had <laughs> to be medevac oh. helicoptered out. Here's what actually. The lead guy didn't cry. That guy was super cool. And they were really cool about me being slow. But there was this self-imposed, like, I'm eyeing everyone up. And I'm like, ooh, well, this guy's on a bike that's less off-road capable, so I'll be able to keep up with him. I'll be faster than him. I wasn't. He made up for that deficit with more talent than me. There was another guy who got a brand new bike. He had like six miles of experience on this motorcycle. And he was an Indian guy named Zen. And uh, I was like, ooh, maybe I'll be faster than him. Apparently, this guy's a street wizard. And that even the most skillful guys in our group can either barely or not keep up with him on the street at all. He's in his late 30s. He's a doctor. And uh, he's been riding motorcycles for like 25 years. He's just very good. Very, you know, he knows what he's doing. And uh, 25 years on the street, no problems. 10 miles in the dirt. And uh, he was behind me, so I didn't know. You know, like it, I thought maybe I'd be faster than him. My bike was a little more capable in the dirt than his. And I've just worked with so many Indian guys that like <laughs> they don't have sports in high school. Like it's it's just not like like adventuring sports shit isn't normally what their their bag is. But this guy oh. was an exception to the rule. This guy apparently was a motorcycle wizard. But they called the, him the wizard, <laughs> but not on the dirt. So uh, minute, I get to the end. Mean? An, like an actual Indian from India, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, dot not those feathers. Those guys pack like 50 guys on a motorcycle. What do you mean? They're, those guys mm, know the Indian. Yeah, motorcycle. I didn't think of that. I didn't look at it through that lens, but yeah, no, yeah. That's when they crashed. He didn't have the rest of his crew. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dude's very talented. And and every he has like the a deep respect of all the people who know him. I don't know anyone. I'm brand new around here. And uh, uh, anyway... He's behind me and we're sort of waiting at, at every turn where, or, you know, you might not know which way to go. They wait for the group to sync up again and we're waiting and we're waiting. And there's this one guy, I'll call him the caboose, super cool guy. He is there, but Zen's not here yet. Why is the caboose here when all the riders aren't together? Zen. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he had a suspicion because he was riding and uh, we, the, you like kick up dust and the dust stopped. Yeah. He's like, uh, I might know. And uh, so he immediately turns around. He only went to the group to like confirm that Zen didn't make it. He turns around and I don't know how he found it. I, I guess it was the dust trail ending. He had a good clue because this guy didn't just like. Help, it. I'm down the crevasse. Please help oh, me to help me. I left out part of it. So as he turns around and he's looking for him, Zen calls our group leader. And he's like, I've crashed. And I guess I was thinking, how bad could it be? Right? Because mm -hmm. he's on the phone talking. And, and yeah, he's a doctor. You and he's give him a doctor. Tech <laughs> so uh, he calls the group leader. And uh, so we all go back, you know, to see what's up. 
dude, next to the road was a cliff and he fell 30 feet. His motorcycle is 30 feet precariously hanging off a tree. And then he, the rider, fell another 30 feet. He's like 60 feet down this cliff. (laughs) And the motorcycle's hanging off a tree, like trying to fall the rest of the way onto the rider. Could it, the the motorcycle could have fallen and crushed him, you mean? Yes, that was a risk. That was a risk. And a little guy? Smaller than me, yeah. Um, Yeah. And, uh... Anyway, so he's at the bottom of the hill, and we've got guys going down. Just to crawl down this cliff is a real problem. And I never did it because I had this sprained ankle. I'm like, I'm going to be another victim. I literally can't fucking go up and down this cliff on one foot. And uh, anyway, it, it's a real problem. Our guys can barely get down there, and they're, like, checking him out. His head's fine. His back, we're not sure about at the time. His it turns out he's got a bunch of broken ribs, a broken scapula, and some more. Uh, and he's losing pulse in his arm. So we call 911 and they're like, yeah, it's, we're on our way, but uh, it's going to be a little while. And it's like, well, that makes sense. You're getting these big diesel yeah. ambulances here. In the woods. Oh, dude, they rolled fucking deep. The first guy comes up and he's in like a one ton pickup truck. And it's like, all right. This guy's like a mountain goat. You know, we're all I, mm-hmm. like this is a pretty athletic group of guys, dual sport motocross dudes having a hard time getting up and down this cliff. This guy in his 40s doesn't survey the area or anything, just starts walking down the cliff like it's stairs. And it's like, how are you even doing that? And he just goes down and just straight to the victim, starts talking to him, starts working on him. Now all the another truck comes in. The biggest ambulance I've ever seen shows up. It's the size of a fire truck, <laughs> but it's an ambulance, and it's red like a fire truck. And then an ambulance comes, a regular one, and these guys, they don't even know each other, but they're working together amazingly. Barely talking. They're like taking winches, putting them on the side. They've got hitches on the side of the truck for the winch attachment points. And then they're they're like, they got bags full of rope and they're throwing the bags off the cliff and the rope just strings out along the way. On the side of the rope, they're tying like little fucking knots, the knots on knots. I can't even, I don't know why they're tying knots to the side of the rope and the knots to the knots. And then it all becomes apparent as they put together these different rigging systems. And uh, I mentioned, I'm like, guys, I think that, like we've looked at that motorcycle we don't think it's secure we think it's a risk and he's like got it like 15 seconds later they've got a winch on the motorcycle and a redundant line to it attached to the tree the motorcycle's secure now that that the threat's eliminated these guys were so good at their job i was i didn't know people could be this good at work <laughs> you know? despite all that the wizard didn't make it right like, like <laughs> no. They Passed got away. him up. They oh. cared about him in a way that I don't know why I was so surprised. They More cared about did, the even. victim. <laughs> <laughs> but like they they're down the stairs. The winch is pulling him up and they're like holding him level and he's getting a level of pain as he's getting bumped around. Like you can yeah. only bring a this metal like kayak looking stretcher mm-hmm. up so effectively and, and, and gently. And uh, he's in a bunch of pain and he's sweating and his arm is hurt. He's, it's called guarding. Like it, you ever see someone like land on their arm and then afterwards they're kind of carrying their arm carefully. It's called guarding. Yeah. He's doing a lot of that, like, you know, holding himself together. And uh, they, they gave him some fentanyl, but that wasn't enough to like solve all the problems. And they took the ambulance a couple miles away to where the helicopter was. And then they medevaced. No, what is, what is it called? I think that's they, right. Medivac? Is it Medivac? The, yeah. Is that yeah, the helicopter? helicopter? Yeah. So they used the helicopter to take him to this level one trauma center. And I think they had set all that up just by the accident description. Guy fell 30 feet down a cliff, rolled 30 feet more on a motorcycle mm-hmm. accident. And they're like fucking all the king's horses and all the king's men. But once they saw him, there was some luck involved, you know, because he just had a few broken bones and... Uh, I guess the pulse in the arm thing worked itself out. I don't know, but uh, that's probably a pretty humbling day for the wizard. You know, he's so yeah. confident on the streets, and then he gets in the woods, and he's got it, he's got no game. It's at a separate all. skill set, yeah. So it, it's like my takeaway from that was like, all right, so being safe isn't having the most skill; it's riding within your skill set, right? Yeah. You know, and if you were going for safety, you'd you'd drive a car. 
Yes. Or, or you just wouldn't drive. Stay, yeah, why would, yeah. stay you wouldn't home. take unnecessary nothing trips bad, at all. Nothing bad ever happened to me here. <laughs> no, but no. It, dude, it was it was heavy, man. I, I, I uh, then it and it's what was weird for me. I felt guilty about enjoying my weekend. It was great. I had a great weekend. The guys were great. It was my best weekend of the year by far. And I feel like. Well, Zen's really hurt, right? Like he's in a level one trauma center, and I'm like, "Isn't this great? This is this has been a heck of a weekend, hasn't it, boys?" I feel I like I'm feel not bad if I don't know your last name. I, I don't know his last name. <laughs> I See? did just meet go. him, and if you did, you couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> he you seemed know? like a great didn't guy. Mean, didn't but... they cover the survivors' uh, guilt in uh, old dogs, which you clearly watched before you went on this midlife crisis adventure? I don't know this and, old uh, dogs. Is is that... With John Travolta. Oh, and, that's 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 uh, what is that's, that? That's, uh, hogs. Wait, is that, is that wild, wild hogs? hogs? Wild hogs. Wild hogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> old dogs. <laughs> that's a better name than wild hogs. Yeah, that, 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 with Tim Allen. I yeah, Tim Allen. Uh, how Jane much does it Fong? cost to keep a roving band of Marlboro men on hand to protect against uh, uh, middle-aged men throwing themselves off cliffs? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> I actually I just bought insurance today. I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of like um insurance to cover helicopters <laughs> and ambulances and shit like that. We call this dangerous retard insurance. <laughs> that's pretty much that's, that's right on target. So there was Oh you're telling me your your hobbies are fire poi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I had a buddy who was, you know what fire poi I are those yeah, things yeah, that are that... on fire. He he was like <laughs> Come to like like un, literally uninvited oh, sometimes. Come to another friend of ours like house and do like and he was like a chef and so he would cook stuff and then he would except he would start cooking things and then he would take a ton of mushrooms by himself like everybody yeah. else is just, everybody else is just like drinking watching a UFC fight or something and then like once he was really tripping like a few hours later he would like go out in the yard and be like in demand that everybody watch him do fire poi. Was he and good? He get, like. I mean, not as good as he thought he was. Because I feel like any idiot could just swing two of them in the air, right? He, he thought he was blowing our mind. <laughs> and it was more like a, a guy that's like fucked up, like kind of getting a rhythm going. But, <laughs> uh, but he made great grilled pineapple and some uh, skewers. So Fuck yeah. Come. Yeah. It was a net game. Yeah, it was. Now it was. Fire, it was marg It was marginally, <laughs> marginally more impressive than what Woody just did. Did, did. did he sing or anything while he did it? Like chant? Thank God, no. Did he bring like a boom box with like 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 some jams that went to it? Uh, I think he had our other friend put on some. I don't remember the music. And mm. if there, you know what? If there was any sort of synchronization with a beat, I would have recalled the music. But it wasn't. It was just kind of him in the backyard, uh, yeah. by himself, making a scene. Uh, that sounds kind of, really awkward. It was it was awkward. But yeah. I think it's the sort of thing you put up with in exchange for grilled pineapple, right? He brought the meat too. Oh, so, like a lot yeah. of pork and stuff like that. Well, it was it was that night he was he was making like steak skewers. Ooh, like I was gonna say maybe skewers, some kebabs, like some, some onions, mushrooms, peppers on there. Was That's he from Hawaii or? No, from St. Louis. Just That's another... so weird. He's just obsessed <laughs> with that culture. Like I imagine him like like being like uh, like calling you a howley. Like like like, <laughs> like 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 he's an adopted like uh, Hawaiian like 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 he thinks of himself as a native. Oh, I, I do. Uh, a guy that I worked with at the rental car company ended up like moving to Hawaii. This was many years ago, uh, and he like came back to visit at one point. This is when I lived in Idaho, and like he came back to I guess his, visit his family, and we're like hanging out, and it's like he'd lived in in Hawaii for three weeks, four weeks, and he was like telling me like lingo like howly and stuff and it's like mm -hmm. you're you, you know that all those samoans absolutely hate you right like you you know that like you're they don't see you as like oh man this guy is really cool this guy is like one of the I'm, i guess i'm doing tito from rocket power are they oh, man, this guy is really fucking cool they're not samoans Samoan either yeah they're, they're not, hawaiians they're right? islanders well yeah. they're close enough whatever but see, well, samoans, samoans, oh, samoans are from Whoa. samoa that's samoans where the girl scout cookies come from I it, no. it makes sense. Yeah, Let's cook that's how they get so fat eating those delicious, delicious Girl Scout cookies. I on the weight loss thing, Dick. I think the sleep schedule is a part of it. It's hard. Yeah. One, no. a bad sleep schedule will make you hungry. Like it just literally works. I forget what the drug is called in your head, like Lipton or something. I don't recall. But uh, also the hunger, the hunger uh, hormone. 
Yeah, do you know what I'm thinking? Ghrelin? If that's not the one I'm thinking of. Ghrelin is the thing that actually makes you hungry. Uh, Whatever. I could Google. There, I think there's something else that I might be on target with, too. Also, I make all my worst food decisions when I'm up too late. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 think that's my th- I, I like... Like I'll be great all day, but like late night binge eating is just I it's just what I want to do so bad. Like all the time. Like and I if I let that. myself stay up too late, I will just keep eating and eating and eating. You know, and I'll, I, and you convince yourself Do like, you think it's because there's no witnesses? Maybe it might be because there's no witnesses. You know what? Yeah, cuz I cuz I'm overweight and so I'm ashamed when I'm overeating. And so yeah, maybe that is it. Is that, that I'm like oh. No one will even know. do you ever do you ever like make your own like 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 there's the garbage bag, but like Maybe you ate like eight Twinkies, so you've got to like, dispose of that like privately. Like you're like, gonna go under the, the other garbage. You're like Adriana in the Sopranos when she's got the bloody clothes and she doesn't know, she doesn't know how to dispose of them. She can't put them in the regular garbage because somebody I, might see. This is it's funny you say that. It was like for my for my birthday a few weeks ago, my dad just sent me some. He always does this, and I tell him not to. He sent me an entire like box that you'd see at like a gas station of like Reese's Fast Breaks, which is oh, like, my shit. favorite candy bar, and there's oh, fucking twenty God. of them in there, and I love uh, those. And there was one evening that's four where, that's five thousand calories. I know, and I totally I was roundly defeated in the willpower battle, like maybe three <laughs> weeks ago. And I think I ate four of them in one day, and and three of them were like at night. And like as I was like putting the fourth fourth wrapper in the in the trash, I like picked up like a like a, a CVS bag from under all of it, and then laid that. <laughs> And it's oh uh, man, that is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Nobody knows. You dispose <laughs> of the evidence. You're, yeah, you're, you're like no one needs to know. No Those little fast know. breaks, you're like, huh? You know, one of these is 220 calories, and then like you watch 40 seconds of a TV show, and you like bite your finger, like what? No, it can't. It can't be gone already. Is that how fast candy goes? Dude, I'm not even a big candy eater, but I guess I go hard when I when I have it because carrot sticks are good it, for that. I, I know yeah. I sound like an asshole, but like you can eat one after another after another. And when your belly is completely full, you've consumed like 65 calories. Yeah, I'll do that if I'm feeling healthy. Oh, yeah. Carrots have like nothing in them. I eat, I eat carrot sticks until I'm until I get high. Like, I think that if you eat enough, you actually start Wait, feeling high. <laughs> uh, I must be I one shy because I've eaten a lot. It's like the meat sweats, but it was it's like a carrot <laughs> weird carrot euphoria. Like a carrot <laughs> I association. I, I feel it. I really feel it. And I'm like, I gotta get I gotta get out of these carrots. I have had a carrot <laughs> stomach ache. I'm like, I, I like there must be a cubic foot of carrots in here. <laughs> you know, yeah. After I've chewed them and I'm exaggerating, but not what by I, a sugar, lot. Like, I think I think sugar free jello and uh and that Orville Redenbacher uh popcorn are the way to go for like low calorie yeah. snacks because you can just eat like you can eat you can literally eat five bags of that popcorn and it's like the equivalent of like an actually bad snack like it's yeah, like I mean, it's like yeah. 500 calories you can fill your stomach with so much popcorn the problem like, sugar-free popcorn. jello is is like five calories for every jello cup and it's like you can sit there and eat eight of them if you want yeah but like <laughs> eating jello is like taking a big breath like I'm not full. <laughs> it's like having a drink. That's the problem. That's why I am with um, yeah, like a clementine. Photo. You know, I'll be like, you know, I'm hungry. I could go for a snack. I eat a clementine. It's about 35 calories if I recall. And mm-hmm. I'm like, great. Now I have had a shot of water. I'm still <laughs> hungry. It, it, it didn't do anything. I remember uh, I was I was in an office space once, and. You know how like some some companies will be like, hey, we bought a bunch of like healthy snacks and things in our little kitchen area. And I remember like going in and grabbing like a little clementine like that, eating it, going back, grabbing another one. And by like a couple hours later, it's like I've eaten nine or ten of these and there's a visible amount missing from this bag. That was <laughs> in the kitchen. So I just stopped. Obviously, it's there for us to eat. But it's like, yeah, you're 100 percent right. That's ten of those is like ostensibly 300 calories. Not a chance. No, it's just it's water. It's water and the teeniest bit of sugar. Like I feel like one, one set of benching or rows or whatever is burning like five tangerines. I would imagine. Like there's just, or at least a full tangerine. I, I don't, don't know. Think that's accurate at all. You don't think so? I know it's not. No. Oh, I, well, I, I know it. it's. Not. Wait, which part did you disagree with? The caloric count the, the, or the, the calor- burning? The calorie burn of actually lifting weights is like rather low unless you're on a lot of. If you, if you do a five by ten set, if you do a five by ten set of benching, 
Studies have been done. It's shockingly low compared You're to burning more than 35 calories in those 50 reps. Definitely. Well, c- when you lift weights, you burn for like the next 10 hours. Um, I mean, I don't know. What am I? Weight loss no, doctor? I'm counting my dog's calories over here. <laughs> I got treats. The treats are three calories a pop. And I'm like, man, you're very bad. So I need to give you a lot of treats. So I break those little motherfuckers in half. Um, I think she knows too. So it's behaving poorly just to spite me. Probably. Yeah, you, you burn calories when your heart's beating. So, you know, elevated heart rate. To do it. So like, you don't think that like doing like a five by 10 bench, incline bench, whatever it is, you don't think you're burning I, 30? I've read the studies. It's, it's shockingly low. So it's, I, if you- I Googled it. I don't know how, how this is going to sync up with what Kyle's thinking, but 30 minutes is about 100 calories. Yeah, whereas 30 minutes of cardio is like 350 calories. Are you talking yeah. about, you're saying cardio is better than weightlifting? For the burning weight calories, yeah. No, false. Because your muscles burn <laughs> calories. Your muscles burn calories on their own, and after so, so you, are, are you are muscle. you accounting for gaining muscle mass from the exercise? That and the anabolic exercise, like the actual exercise that you're doing, will last a lot longer. The cardio you're burning while you're doing it. Lifting weights you burn long after you're done. No, you don't. No. Th- yes, I you don't. do. No. So what burning you calories. Lift, Kyle? You're, just <laughs> you're, just, you're just wrong. <laughs> Let's see it. What you're do you lift, wrong. buddy? Because this is all I do. I don't way move more than, more than 10 feet a day. I <laughs> weigh 600 pounds. Just, just way more than you. And uh, I'll, 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 talk, I'll tell you later. It's but the, um, but, but no, you're, you're definitely not burning calories like tomorrow from the weights you lifted today. Ten hours. I don't think that's accurate. How about eight hours? Will you give us eight hours? <laughs> <laughs> you're burning calories when your heart rate's elevated. No, you know, I mean, and if you're like, if you're like, if your heart rate stays elevated for 10 hours after lifting a weight, then yeah. Well, that would mean you're really um, unhealthy. It would. It You'd would. have way bigger problems if your heart rate was elevated. So, 10 but Kyle, would. you don't buy the weightlifting long game. Like, I, I feel like if you lift weights for some significant period of time, six months, nine months, that yeah. you've increased your metabolism. And I feel like you're discounting that. No, I don't think you're increasing your metabolism at all by just lifting weights. Like, like your extra muscle mass will burn a minuscule amount of ca- extra calories. Like, like I think a pound of lean muscle is burning like thirty-five or forty calories or yeah. something. We looked at we, like, we like the, the smallest amount of extra calories per yeah, we, pound of you lean mass. At one point, and it is shockingly less. Shockingly than you low. Um, like someone with like ten extra pounds of muscle in their body, which ten pounds of muscle is a tremendous amount of muscle over someone. Like that was maybe like 300 calories over but an entire day. 300, 10, 350 oh. calories a day is huge. I feel like we write that off as not a ton, but just to have that every single day, 350 it's not calories really a bonus day. in that way, because that muscle is making you hungrier too. Like you need more protein, more food to fuel. I've wondered it. about that. I don't know what the truth is, but here's the question I often have in my head. Let's say your, uh, it's a basic met, tab, met- What's basal, the basal, metabolic basal metabolic rate. That's what I'm looking for. Your basic metabolic rate is 2,500, right? And you're comparing it to, say, your ex-girlfriend's. We'll call hers 1,500. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you are 200 below and she's 200 below, do you have the same level of suffering? Or if you're 20% below and she's 20% below, do you have the same level of suffering? Or is it just easier to eat 2,300 a day than it is 1,300 a day? I would bet it would be by percentage difficulty because like 200 less for her is way harder than 200 less for you. Or make it by percentage then. If you're yeah. 20% deficit and she's 20% deficit, but you're at you know 2,200 calories and she's at something like 1,100. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that whole added muscle thing is an interesting formula to look at because like obviously then you're – like you said, your protein requirement goes up. If you're, if you're trying to hit a gram <laughs> per, uh, per, uh, per what pound Kilogram. of uh, – uh, or yeah, per – it's a no, pound per, per it's a gram per pound as yeah, a general a thumb. or sometimes so, so. they have a different formula like uh, but it's a gram per, per like pound of body weight not lean mass right yeah if they use lean mass it's something different like a, uh you know two grams per kilogram or something like that i just try to hit like 200 mass. a day 200 yeah, days mo- most most dudes try to just hit 200 yeah mm-hmm. it's a pretty easy to like calculate thing. Yeah. You don't need a fucking calculator every Especially time. Especially with these Met RX 51 grams. That's oh, and 51? then another interesting thing, I was talking oh, to somebody about this the other day. How much how much protein your body actually absorb at once, right? Because like like my friend was like, 
I read I could only absorb 25 grams of protein at a time. Do I really need to eat, eat eight fucking meals a day? And I thought I started thinking about it. I'm like, I mean, I think it'd be better if you did. <laughs> like, but I think it would be better if you ate eight different meals and each of them had 25 grams of protein and who 25. Who has the time? Who has the time, right? You need like a backpack full of snacks <laughs> everywhere just you, you and go. Woody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just me and Woody. That's it. <laughs> like, like, it's hard to like. Yeah. You're like, I, you wake up and you're like, all right, I'm going to be awake for 16 hours because you've got to get your eight hours of sleep. So that mm -hmm. means every two hours, there's got to be a meal. It's meal, two hours, meal, two hours, meal, two hours. And if you fuck up at all, now you've thrown that precious sleep into peril, right? Mm -hmm. like, like you can't. So, so you've got to be like, hey, do you have time? Can, can you come in here and like adjust the TV? No, I have to begin my <laughs> meal right fucking now or it's going to throw the whole universe out of kilter. Jeff Nipper did a video on this. And he did, yeah. Maybe you've seen it then. I have. The conclusion was that's pretty much true. Now, yeah. the, the, well, the untrue part is your body only absorbs 30 grams of protein. No, it'll absorb it and use it as uh, caloric energy or something. But if you're talking about your muscles doing protein synthesis, better to break it up. That's the better to break it short up. Short version. And it's uh, so like, but, but then like, if you're eating like ground beef, for example, like 25, gra 25 grams of protein from ground beef, you're eating these little meals over and over and over of like lean meats. It's um, and, and, and so that means like you're shitting continuously, right? Yeah. Like, 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 like it you means that your, <laughs> your digestive system is like the, is like a choo choo train of poops that are just like like one is right behind the other, like like, like all day long. It's a it's a weird way to live your life. I don't I don't want to live like that. I don't want nobody to wants to live that way, Taylor. <laughs> I want to be able to I want to be able to have a shit in the morning and then just kind of know I'm clear, you just know, the rest of the day until the evening or like, you know, you know, when you really overeat at night. And like you have a morning shit and then you're like, I got to shit again. And it's noon. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> it's because I ate so much. Last when time. I was I had a bigger caloric deficit more than a month ago than I do right now. I wasn't pooping much. I, I was like Kim Jong Un just using all of my food to build muscle, I hope. And, mm -hmm. and very little pooping going on. Maybe you were sleeping. Well, like so you were having having a, don't poop <laughs> sleep evacuation <laughs> it's true though like i i was like I'm just... in reality you've been shitting the bed every night and jack is <laughs> such a good woman she's she's cleaning she it up me. behind you covering your, <laughs> covering your tracks and she's just like yeah he has accents at night now he's, he's getting older i don't say anything i just clean the sheets clean it up she doesn't I don't want even to think embarrass me <laughs> i don't think he knows uh, you see, like, isn't that like train spotters where that person is like cleaning up the shit off of the heroin addict? Oh, like that. Or what's that? What's that I other really sad movie? Case. It's about. Oh, I try to avoid the sad heroin movies. Uh, you know, after after watching. Um, oh, Requiem for a Dream. That's yeah. a really sad movie. Yeah, that's that's the one that turned me off of sad heroin movies. I just I, I try did you to not avoid like that. train stopping or train spotting? I haven't seen it because I avoid sad heroin movies. It's got you and McGregor in it. You was in Star Wars. You'd like it. I don't know why that's going to sweeten the pot. And I tried. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's from that other thing you hate. It's from that other thing you hate. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see him in something good now, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he's coming back. They're doing. He's doing like an Obi Wan Kenobi series on uh, on Disney Plus. Finally, more Star Wars content. More Star Wars. <laughs> We've been thirsting for it, and here it comes. Yeah. I saw today someone tweeted at me that Mary and you know how the Sopranos guys started like a Sopranos podcast where they're like, wait, 15 years after the fact, we're talking about the Sopranos. Yeah. Like uh, Bobby Bacliari and uh, who is it? Uh, who's the other one? Christopher Multizanti. Yeah, Christopher and Bobby are the two ones doing it. Now I, someone tweeted at me and it's like, hey, uh, Mary and Pippin from Lord of the Rings are doing a podcast about Lord of the Rings. And it's like, man, striking while the iron's hot. Right, <laughs> twenty years after the fact, they're gonna start. Yeah. they are so much older looking, which it's I guess twenty fucking so years. Says, I can't, I can't judge there. I, I've aged terribly in the last last couple months. No. I guess <laughs> it's, been, it's been twenty you years. Know, you know funny? I've lost weight since the last time I saw Dick. In the That's part of getting old, man. You're looking frail, like Mr. Burns. <laughs> That's not the defect. 
until it come out. Dude, it's oh, 30. Oh, like I went, I went to the fucking, yeah, I'm 30. I went to, I went to get my hair cut today. I went to get my hair cut today. And usually I like to keep a little bit of, a little bit of verticality here because my head is so fat and so round. And yeah. she just, just ruined me. Just like basically buzz cut it. I saw with the first stripe, I was like, <laughs> oh, like, but I can't say anything because the, the the length has been established at that point. And so now, like, right. I don't even have enough to push over. I look like a fucking asshole. You look like you're ready to steal Valor. That's <laughs> I look like you're ready. <laughs> you look like you get so much free Starbucks. <laughs> you get all kinds of AutoZone discounts with that haircut. You're the same <laughs> Park in the military parking. Start, you deserve it. <laughs> park in the Walmart veteran parking. I mean, that's what I need to do. I mean, I've already shown through my strength and power that I can conquer expectant mother parking. <laughs> uh, no, one, no one will stop me. It's too big and too intimidating. I barrel into the store. Uh, but yeah, next up is veteran park. I don't really see veteran parking around here, honestly. Where would it be? Who is veteran parking? Uh, well, Home Depot does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see I'm, it every time, and I think like it says something like this is for our current and former service members or something like that, mm -hmm. and I'm like, come on, I need some lumber. I what do I really have to park way out there? Like, can't I just roll in here? Like, I've been shot at. Come on. Everybody volunteered. That, I got it. camo. I got camo at home. Come I volunteered on. and I was shot at. What else you need to know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I should say. Camo. Camo. Like, sir, did you serve? Car. Look, I've had I've had vehicles blow up yards from me. Do you want to hear the stories? Mm -hmm. Do you want no, me to tell no. you about the time I took my friend to the hospital? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear about treating battlefield wounds? To, is that what you want to hear about? Because <laughs> I, I hope not. Because there were YouTube videos that had nothing to do with actual armed service, and uh, you're gonna find me out real quick uh, if I have to start explaining this. I like it when they ask like what division you were in, and. Uh, <laughs> I forget That's top the fifth. soldier. There's one for paratroopers, and it's the very... 82nd Airborne. That's it. But right. if you don't say that. You have to say something else. It's like the 80... yeah. 802.11b. Now that's actually a, a wireless internet protocol, but it's very close, <laughs> and I can't remember it because it's too close. Like no, you, know, you, know what, you know, what my move is. Let me go. Google how to steal what, uh, power. <laughs> where did you? Where did you serve? Who? What? What contingency were you with? And I say. That's a bit above your pay grade, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. That's a. Can you just say podcast? <laughs> like, do they have podcasts in the army? Probably, right? Like, oh yeah, I'm podcasting in the army. Yeah, I'm uh, an army podcast. I wouldn't surprise hey, me if they did. The army has like a Twitch channel where they're clearly yeah. like, hey, hey, guess what? We're the army. We're, <laughs> join up. We're playing Fortnite. It's just like Fortnite. Join up and go to the Middle East. <laughs> Fight a war. They There's nothing to do with you. So, then yeah. they can't trip you up. It's like, I, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm podcasting in the army. Like, oh, yeah, what's that like? Oh, man, it's, it sucks. It's a real pain <laughs> in the ass. Audio's always fucked up. People always <laughs> yelling at you for doing a shitty job mixing. And there's subreddits are fucking awful. Everyone in there is <laughs> getting the gold. It's fucking impossible. You say, we're going to get a tank. We're going to drive it down the street. If we get 50,000 uh, listeners to our fucking <laughs> podcast, then we go we go to Fiverr and get a tank, and it looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we get 100,000 downloads. We're bringing the troops home. Share with your friends and your family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Podcast, army, man. What did you, you do? Uh, oh, you're muted, but yeah, an army podcast. I like the I pulling out of man. Afghanistan as a Patreon goal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to crowdfund the journey home. <laughs> so what you're supposed to say is you're in the 101st 82nd B and all I ever hear is 10211 B which is a wireless protocol. Curry. But, I mean I would say like what branch are you in and they'd be like air I'd be like Milt Marines. Like <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> whatever they're in. I'm actually you know you could steal it'd be easier to steal valor from another country's military here pretend just to start, be a green just gray. start crying Ooh. violently and tell and and, and they'll, <laughs> they'll drop the whole thing tell them you crying were in the french violent. foreign legion that makes violently. sense because you're american you would be in the their foreign french legion foreign legion yeah it's oh. all foreigners like us we're foreign to france might as well tell them you're a fucking apache tracker no <laughs> nobody's gonna believe that no, I, I am like uh, <laughs> my, my, i am I one of 124th apache <laughs> Stolen Valor. Are you really? No, I just what Elizabeth Warren said. Oh. 
it, I wish I was when I did that genetic test. Sorry, I was like fucking fingers crossed. Like, is there some way I can get in on this casino uh, deal? Can I can I get on one of those reservations and Ooh. fucking get those impoverished people under my thumb? Like, is there some <laughs> is there some way I can manipulate this into into some no money? Dice. No dice. Not even a a tenth of a tenth of a tenth percent. I got fucking Neanderthal. Nobody. There's no Neanderthal fucking like support Parking. groups. Yeah, that's no Neanderthal thing. parking. There should be Neanderthal no. parking. Our people were bred or raped and murdered out of existence. We get nothing. That is true. Yes. We were. We're the ultimate minority. The Neanderthal. I, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Oh, boy. That's so true. <laughs> it is true. We, you know, like we all have Neanderthal DNA in us. Like it's mostly like a European thing. And I guess because Europeans fucked him up and, and killed him. You know? My mother yeah. had some unusually high percent. I didn't do the test myself, but my mother did. So you like, should do it. It's a hundred bucks and it's fascinating. A hundred dollars? What am I made of money? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. Adventure the World with like <laughs> third, you, you got like a you got like a quarter million dollars worth of hobbies in your garage. <laughs> yeah. I think you can afford a hundred hundred bucks to get a DNA test. <laughs> My garage is looking good. We got the floor epoxied. I love it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, my my basement's doing terrible. My oh, garage is fine, though. How is your basement? Update. Oh, it's like, are you I in the so basement fun. aging at the same rate? Do you both look? Mm. Oh, we both look I like shit, it. man. We both look terrible. <laughs> so basically, this was like two months ago now. And it was funny. I was like, initially, like it got down to like minus 10 here, which is very, very cold for St. Louis in the middle or in the beginning of March. And a pipe burst exploded in my basement, destroyed the ceiling down there, destroyed my walls. I had to have everything torn out in the finished area of my basement. Uh, of course, the unfinished area is mostly fine. And I hire people. And they, the insurance is actually pretty good. The initial contracting company, pretty good. They come and remove everything. And I give them the insurance money to rebuild and put the drywall and the ceiling back up. And they do. And as they're about to finish it, this guy comes up and he goes, hey, it's been raining all day. And I'm now noticing a puddle forming under the wall we just put back up. And so this is clearly a foundation thing. And I was like, hold the phone. You guys just get out of here. Sorry about this. I got to call a foundation company now. So I call a foundation company and they go, yeah, to investigate, we just need you to tear out all that drywall, the lower two feet that you just use the insurance money to put in. And I was like, I knew it. So I did that. And then they come and they're going to jackhammer out area in my foundation in the corner there and then build gutters so that any water that comes through the foundation goes in the gutter, goes to an additional sump pump. God and this, this fucking cunt bastard of a sales guy, this cunt, I talked to him and he's trying to buddy, buddy, be friendly to me. And like, oh, as I'm about to give him the deposit and everything, he's like, all right, it's 860 bucks or whatever for the deposit on this. And I'm like, okay. And just to confirm, this is going to be within my wall. You know, it's not going to be visible. There's not going to be anything taking up space because, you know, this finished room isn't the biggest room. I, I, you know, to fit everything, I need it to, it's going to be in the wall, right? And he goes, oh, yeah, you won't even know it's there. And I was like, good. Wanted to make sure of that before I gave you my card. Give him almost $900. This cunt leaves. We'll be there Monday. Monday rolls around. He's got $1,000 in my, of my money in his pocket. And he no, no call, no shows me. How to get no from call. 900 to 1000 I was saying almost a thousand. Like oh, okay, eight, okay. It was like eight bucks. He's got. It was like a few thousand dollar project. And uh, then Monday comes around. I call nothing. No call. No show. Tuesday <laughs> they call and they go. I am so sorry. We were so busy yesterday. And it's like, oh, really? I don't know what that's like. I was just watching paint dry. Like you're gonna. And they tell me like we'll be out there very soon. And I was like, oh, okay. So you'll be here today. No, Friday. Okay. So this is already becoming a fiasco. Friday they come out. The guy puts it in and he tells me when he's done, I'm, I'm working upstairs. I go down there to look at it. And this thing is three feet by three feet oh. in the corner of my room. There's a pipe going out of it. And I'm like, I'm about, and it's the guy who installed it. It's clearly not his fault. This is clearly how these things are installed. The cunt salesman is the one who told me it would be in the wall. This guy was like, yeah, this is just how it's done. I don't know why they would have told you that because that's not true. And I was like, awesome. He leaves. I, I finished paying for it. Monday comes around. I finally, this is months after the initial break because there were so many delays with the foundation company. Monday, I get the initial contracting company back out, the drywall people, the carpet people. They've been very easy to work with, very good to work with. And he, this guy goes down there, comes right back up, and he goes, I got bad news. 
that thing they put in is broken and it's spraying water on your basement. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing to catch water so there's no the water in your installed, basement. It's actually <laughs> spreading the black plague. Um, <laughs> have you been tested for plague? This is the sump pump. It's meant to get it out into my yard. Yes. And so I go down there and he had turned it off at that point. And I was like, what's going on? And he goes, watch. And he plugs it back in. A giant crack in this three-day-old, from Friday to Monday, PVC just starts going. <laughs> just spraying water out, and he unplugs it again. It slowly stops, and he's like, I'm so sorry, man. Like, And I'm like, dude, you're the drywall guy. This has nothing to do with you, but you got to go. This is like the third time you've come over, and I've told you to leave because you can't do it. <laughs> I, call the, I call the fucking foundation company again, and I'm like, hey, you know that thing that I paid thousands of dollars for three days ago? It's broken. It's destroyed. I need someone to come out here. Please hurry. And she's like, uh, actually, you're going to want to talk to Susan. I tell Susan that. And then I have to tell Ariel that. And then I have to tell Justin that. And then they assure me that Agatha is my ticket. And then they, they send me to Agatha and I leave a message. And she doesn't get back to me for, you know, 36 hours. It's like the next day. She's like, I was out of town. And I was like, where are you? And she, she tells me, oh, we can, we can schedule you for next Tuesday. You know, this is this is Tuesday of this week. And I was like, really? Like a whole week out? Like, I've already paid for this, honestly. And I, I think I said something to this effect. I was like, I've worked with a lot of companies, you know, getting things done on my house, and I've never had a worse experience or dealt with worse unprofessionalism than with you guys. It's been a it's been a travesty every step of the way. Like purposely using words like that so I don't curse, so I don't get hung up on or something. And she's like, I know, I'm really sorry about it. And I'm like, okay. And then I go, if you get any, any any inkling that you can get me taken care of sooner than Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday, please let me know. She's like, I will. I'll put a note on it. She calls me back 30 minutes later. She, Taylor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be Wednesday. <laughs> I knew I saw it. Got it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And so, <laughs> so now it's still fucking Wednesday. I have a non-functional sump pump. It's been raining a lot, and so every once in a while, I go down there, and I can see a small little bit of moisture where clearly it's leaking, and, you know, uh, oh, and I, I'm sorry. This, I, I skipped an entire wrong part. They came out and fixed that PVC pipe. The guy initially tried to go, I can just patch that PVC pipe, and I go, no, it's a uh, shitty pipe, yeah. replace the whole thing. And then he left, but then they came back again, the initial drywall people, and he was trying to put it back again. He goes, hey, there's still water coming out. They needed this gutter to be three feet longer. And so now I'm waiting for them to come tear out an additional three feet of drywall and then re-jackhammer three more feet of my foundation to build out this gutter. This has been <laughs> months in the making. And then yesterday, insult to injury. This is I've, I've, been, I've been annoyed at this. And I, I go down yesterday to work out my my solace, my time for me to, for me to get the the angst out for me to just go lift and, and, and have fun. I go down there and I'm pacing around to finish my first set of benches. And I start walking around my basement and I go, huh, what are all those fucking bugs on the ground in the corner? I go over there. I've got a termite problem. I've got a bunch of little like winged termites. And so I go, oh, and I don't have anything to spray on them except for spider poison. <laughs> and they're all over the place. And so I'm and they love spider poison. They love <laughs> it. It's like <laughs> fucking vitamin B12 to termites, apparently. They're, I can watch them actively grow and multiply every square. If the termites have was, wings, it's a big problem. Did you know that? It's a huge yes. problem. Those are yeah. queens, I think. It means no, no, they've matured, that they've been there for a long time. So they're called like breeding or like swarm termites. That's what they call them. And so like they're swarm termites, except they're all winged, but they can't fly. And so like there's a ton of them on the ground that have clearly dropped from this eye beam in my unfinished. Well, area. they like water, so <laughs> yeah, and they like I so, love like, it. And on the bright side, like I was like, I hope like like a retard. I'm like, spider poison, will that work on other bugs? And and You'd I think it would. Of, of course it will. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. like this is gonna be fine. Work on people. I do like work on people. I do one little misting. And the rate at which these fuckers died was amazing. Like apparently brown recluse are made of something a lot tougher than these guys. And so, yeah. and then I started spraying them. My, my uh, fiance comes down and is like, oh, this is so fucking gross. This is so disgusting. And I'm like, she's like, where are they coming from? And I was like looking around and I see like near a vent, there's a bunch of them hanging out up there. And so I have to like spray spider poison all over this thing. It's, and then I went down today. Or I went down last night. I woke up out of nowhere to pee at like four in the morning. And I was like, I need to go make sure there's no more bugs down there. No more bugs. We vacuumed them all up. And then I went down there again today. 
and there aren't any more. So I don't know what the fuck is up with them. Oh, they're hiding now. Oh, well, yeah, they don't go where the bug spray is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they that forced them to <laughs> no, tunnel they, they much were... <laughs> deeper into the hardwood of the home. <laughs> and so now, uh, now I'm waiting until Tuesday. So a nice gentleman from the bug place can come out. I'm I'm so aggravated with with hey, how this is, have you ever seen that movie like the there. what is it called the money pit? It's the money pit. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Tom Hanks, dude yeah. Taylor. I I've hired a contractor too. Oh, so we had the smallest job, right? We're, the railing on our front porch is rotted. Uh, the toilet wobbled, and the um. The coffee maker, we got a nice coffee maker that needs plumbing so we don't have to like fill the water all the time and something else. Maybe the hardware in a bathtub, right? Let's go over mm -hmm. this again. Coffee maker, bath, bathtub hard, hardware, wobbly toilet, and a front porch. Some rotted wood he's going to replace. Whew. So we hire him back in January. He works like a day and it's going great. Toilet's fucking solid as a rock. And he's sending pictures of the stuff you can't see so that you can admire the craftsmanship that is under the toilet, you know, in the marble floor or whatever kind of floor, I don't know, rock thing floor. So, uh, um, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. The next day he says, Woody, I can't come in. My wife has been badly hurt. We're not sure if she's going to walk again. And I'm oh, like, no. whoa, well, take the time you need. You know, my gosh. Like, this is a big deal. And he's like, yeah, I have to watch her. I had to take care of her, et cetera, et cetera. So he misses like a couple weeks after because of that. Dude, she was walking after two days, right? My sprained ankle was fucking worse than this woman's thing. And there's questions about whether she's going to walk again. But no, she's fine. But he misses weeks of work for that. And then he comes back. Works like a day or maybe didn't come in. Says, what do you think I got COVID? Right? He gets tested for COVID, doesn't have COVID, misses three fucking weeks of work for not COVID, <laughs> right? So I then gotta he, not COVID, back. gotta go. <laughs> yeah, so then <laughs> he's going to come back. He's like, Woody, I'm coming Monday. I swear I'm coming Monday. Woody, I'm on my way. Woody, I had a heart attack. <laughs> had a fucking heart attack. Oh my God, you take the time you need. A heart attack, goodness gracious. I'm not a monster. Okay, okay, it was indigestion. Misses three <laughs> fucking weeks for indigestion. Three more weeks for not a heart attack. Three weeks. Every so, time Woody calls him, hello, hypochondriac contracting, how can I help you? <laughs> oh, I, hang on, I, I, I can't continue this phone call. And I, he's, I just... I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. Me, <laughs> he's sending me pictures like trying to connect with me, you know? Oh, things are tough here. Things are tough. Watch, these are my support schnauzers. Right? He sends me pictures of his dogs and shit like that. What an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. What an asshole. He's got support schnauzers? Are you he fucking does. with me? Is this a joke? I can show you. Oh, show me. Wow. You're going to have to show me that this man has support schnauzers or I'm going to call you a liar. This guy's. A <laughs> this is. This is not a problem, <laughs> dude. dude y'all are so nice to these contractors. Like, like I get that not cursing at them is like, yeah. the, the the right way to do things, but at some point, not whipping their ass is just letting them slide. <laughs> like, the man has support uh, now. I mean, oh my fucking god, god, I see him. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Kyle, I, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Like, I always, I try to be. I've worked customer service jobs. I always oh, I know too. Yeah, I try to be polite. I try to be courteous. Apparently, th that is not the strategy with contractors. Dude, because if, if you are nice, they will walk all over yeah, you. Yeah, I'm very litigious. Schedule. Me they're too. Oh, that's how I turned it around. At one point in T's, I'm like, dude. At this point, we're getting attorneys involved. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know no what to do to at this that point. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, "Woody, don't do that. Give me a chance to prove you wrong." And I'm like, "You have had so many chances. You literally send me texts saying you're on the way, and then don't come." He's, he's like, "No, no, no." We, there was one point where uh, he's like, "The painters are scheduled for Friday." I said, "Seriously, it's like Wednesday at this point. You're going to get all your work done. Who are the painters?" And uh, he won't tell me. I'm like, who are the painters? He tells me something else about all the work he's going to get done and the troubles that he has in his life. And I'm like, who are the painters? I want to call the painters and see if they know that they're scheduled to come Friday. 
That might have been when I got the dog pictures. I don't know. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> well, there's Huey, Huey, and Louie. There's like yeah. four snouts. So then he's like, it's paw prints. He's and... like, it's <laughs> the same guys that pressure washed. It's like Salardo or something. And I'm like, well, fuck, he answered in such a way that I can't call. And anyway, he cancels work the next two days. I'm like, I, I guess. Names. I guess you I canceled the, the painters. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I, like I, I guess you canceled the painters. He's like, yep, I got that all taken care of. We canceled the painters. Right. So then he ends up doing the painting himself. He says, man, the prices these painters want are is outrageous. And it's like, you fuck, you never scheduled the painters. You found out the price and decided to paint yourself. You know you're lying to me. You're always, always lying to me. You lie so fucking much. I'm you like, need to do this. That's what you need to do. That's what I, I did. At one point, Look, I'm, I'm out so there talking to him. This. And I'm like, no. dude, the gap between what you say you're gonna do and what you actually do <laughs> is so wide, I can't I can't make that mental leap that when you tell me you're gonna do this, that, 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 I don't get it, I don't get it. I've never met anyone less reliable than you. This is like yeah. actual words I've said to him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's like, what do you give me a chance to prove you wrong? And eventually he finished the job. It was probably two weeks worth of work. He did it from That's January That's why we're hearing about this, by the until way. May. somebody's wondering, this has been ongoing for weeks and Woody didn't want to talk months. about it until it was months, done. Months, months. Like, like, like for anyone who's listening to this, like here's my like two cents on how you handle these awful, awful scenarios. Just real quick. It, it, towards the end, his wife was dying. His wife was dying. She's I, got she's lupus. Dead. She's no, got lupus. Be, I, I, I would say, you know what? You better hope she dies. Dude. Because if yeah. she's not dead tomorrow, I'm coming for her. Dude, he's every, dying. Every single morning that he doesn't show up, you should send him a photo of the obituary paper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't see her here. And you were at work yesterday. <laughs> Dude, by, uh, sorry I cut you off, Kyle. Right. But by the end with the dying wife stuff, I had no heart. I'm like, you're None. making your problems my problems. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to hear this. Sounds like a you problem. You know yeah. what problem I got? My coffee maker. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I, I. Is I just, your coffee maker alive? He wasn't credible anymore. Not. And by the way, I don't think lupus kills you. I, yeah, I, I, I don't mean. care if it does. I hope it does. I don't I want hope it to. I she's got it bad. No, you threaten these people with fucking litigation because nobody wants that. Nobody wants to show up in court. Nobody wants that. Everyone fears that so much. Believe me, I've been there. Nobody wants to go to court and have a judge deciding what, if, what they're going to have to pay out of pocket or potentially go to jail or something like that. Obviously, this is a civil like contractor dispute. You're not, nobody's going to jail, but you get what I'm saying. You threaten these people right away with litigation. If, if they have done you wrong, you, can, you, you don't owe these people anything. You've got to threaten them right away because like people who are already in that business and, and they have this level of shittiness, like it's, it's not a new thing to them. This yeah. is just how they operate and they're going to keep doing it to you. And you're not the only one that they are putting off. The reason they can't come tomorrow is because tomorrow they're going to a guy's house where they're five weeks late. That's not true. Yeah. Do you want to know why I know? I would love to because I bet it's hilarious. Doing meth? He fucked his tr no, fucked. He parked his trailer with tools in my driveway all winter long, from January oh, to Woody. May. You think it's his trailer? He stole that trailer from a real <laughs> contractor. In reality, he has stolen the identity of an actual contractor, and he's like living in his house like that scene in Unbreakable. Every the guy's tied to a radiator, and every night he's just drinking beer and spitting it on him. And like this man is an insane asylum kind uh, of character. He had his trailer, and that was the thing. So we have our driveway is uh, it's weird. You can enter the house from the north side and the eastern side, yeah. and the eastern driveway, the better one, was just like occupied all winter long just you've got, you've got a there. better driveway and you can't afford a hundred dollars for a dna test <laughs> <laughs> the man has an eastern time... driveway but he can't afford his dna test <laughs> fucking wayne manor over here i don't know where i'm from well, don't like use France, the eastern germany driveway. who knows <laughs> afternoon it's too hot it's too hot i drive into the western driveway afternoon i don't want to i want to keep my tires nice don't they know that in the summer i like to use the eastern driveway to avoid the glare. <laughs> we just got it repaved it has as like brand new dark asphalt it's so smooth i'm on the gravel driveway and i have to drive on gravel in my brand new pickup truck <laughs> i'm uh, trying to get out to off-road on one of my many hobbies <laughs> Uh, but yeah, with my so, friend the wizard, I'm so, and, and he did great work. It just took him twelve times Fuck longer it, than it should no, have. No, I like 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 my, my dumbass dad, wants to rehire him for like a one my, day job. My dad would always <gasps> threaten people. He would literally threaten people with physical violence, and that sounds like a terrible idea. But like, 
it would usually work. Yeah. Um, I, I, like, like there was a guy who was stealing tools from him once, a contractor. Um, like, like he's the contractor and he's stealing my dad's tools. And my dad like goes to the guy's house and the guy's daughter is there. And uh, it's like, she's like a little girl. She's like nine. And she's like, hey, is your dad around? He's like, no. He's like, have you seen my tools? And she's like, my daddy took your tools. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and he goes and he beats the shit out of this guy. And he's like, I'm going to come back. And if you've hurt that little girl, I'm going to come back every day. And you're getting it's, more of this. And just like beat the shit out of this guy who had stolen God. his tools. And, and he's like, and I want to know where my tools are. He's like, I've sold the tools. I'm so sorry. I sold the tools. Who'd you sell them to? So then he's like having to like go around and track down. It wasn't just tools. It was like uh, race car parts. It was like this real fancy like multi-barrel carburetor from a drag mm. race car. It was all this stuff this fucking scumbag had stolen. God. People are scummy. It's hard to find good contractors. And it seems like the contractor business is somewhat um, – populated by scummy people it seems like it's yeah i don't i don't know for what reason uh, um but it's hard to find good people to come into your home and do drywall carpeting heating and air duct work like plumbing you name it it's hard i it's, think they can take their breaking and entering skills and then go to prison and come out and they and that turns into like a bit, little bit of actual repair work and handyman work that they can that they can we did have those house. classes in prison like 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 you <laughs> did HVAC was a big one in prison. Oh, I HVAC. thought you had breaking yep. and entering classes in prison. Oh, no, no. You, <laughs> we taught well, those. If breaking anyone and needs the breaking and entering classes, in it's, it's some of the guys in prison because they got okay. caught doing it. Okay. So uh, I, I, I have a good contractor. Um, he built an amazing fence out front, and I'm like, I'm like uh, very um, little tiny like tile misalignments drive me nuts and drawers not doors not shutting completely correct yeah. and you have to shut them close I'm like it tweaks me out and this this fence he built is like I'll go out at night and just rub the fence where the joints are because they're so fucking perfect like laser aligned I'm like oh this I need this guy to redo my deck I need <laughs> I need this precision on my deck so I get a bunch of quotes. And he comes in way under everybody else. And I'm like, I, you know, actually thinking to myself, like, I don't care if you were the most expensive. I just need this kind of quality in the deck. But I'm also thinking he's, he's miss, he's, he didn't give me the right quote. Like he didn't, he didn't add in enough for whatever. Uh, and this was before lumber turned into the, the price of lumber turned oh, into I the forgot. global warming ground. It's crazy right now. Yeah. So he comes in every week while he's redoing the neck. He's like, hey, I got to talk to you. And I have this big smile on my face. I'm like, I know what you, I know what this is. I know what you want to ask me. He's like, yeah. Uh. So the lumber, uh, I called around and it was like, it's going to be a month or it's going to be another three grand. Like and he's doing it from like <laughs> further than hitting distance. He's like, I don't really know how to say it. it's going to be like another three thousand bucks i'm like he's, ah, head, he's using head movement while he tells you the price <laughs> yeah he's like ah, how's your day been you want to sit you want to sit down maybe put your hands behind hit put your hands in your pocket um so it's been great i don't even care every week yeah. he's like ah you know what did you want the old deck demo too because that's gonna be another thousand bucks i don't know i'm like oh you didn't what put the demo of the deck in the quote of course not of course you didn't you're fine no, you're fine no worry no worry about it. I get crazy it. what just like no leave the old deck there just nah, nah, just, there. just no, build over it <laughs> yeah you have phase technology right you can they can both <laughs> at the same yeah, time build inside that, of uh, it uh that dude i, I don't want to i don't want to take up any extra space either <laughs> yeah, uh, our house that, right? always has something that needs to get done. If this guy was on the ball, like he'd have a he'd have a real customer in you. Yeah, it, it, he, he'd work here full time. I'd have another sub dependent. Dude, like, let me tell you about the greatest employee of of our generation, mm -hmm. and it's this guy that works for my dad right now. Thank I think you. I've mentioned it before. Jeremy. It's shocking the, the the fucking jack of all trades this guy is. Um, oh, he is. He does everything for my dad for a very low wage, like like ten or fifteen dollars an hour plus like little bonuses depending on like what the job is. He does the grocery shopping, he puts the groceries away, and like this is a little thing, right? Little thing. My dad's got like obviously like a normal refrigerator, but then he's got like one of those like Coca Cola refrigerators. It's like Coca Cola themed, like, like glass in his little like front, on it. maybe. Yeah, it's got the lever, and it's like oh, looks cool. like a big Coca Cola thing, and it's in his like guitar room with all of his amps and guitars and like his big couch and everything, where he goes and like chills and plays. Well, the guy takes all of the sodas and like takes them out of their like six pack like 
plastic thing and like they're individually in there. Like, I don't know. That's just a little thing. The guy mops the floors and I mean, hands and knees scrubbing like Cinderella. Okay. <laughs> like, like dr sweat <laughs> dripping off of him. Like he has to work backwards because it clean his own sweat. He's sweating so, mm. so profusely. He makes the beds. He cleans the toilets. He, um, How he puts these things. Just every not. week, every like, like like there's a there's a chore list, and it happens every week. Like each of these, the floors all get scrubbed every week. The beds get made up every day. The um d dad's like, I can never find a, a salt shaker because he puts them away. Like everything <laughs> is put away in its place. Like like you can't even have salt and pepper like out on a countertop because everything is in its spot in its slot. Like all this like I don't the know spoons, if I like the that. ladles. The, the spatula is. I'd be like, listen, hung, Skippy. So. One of the salt shaker spots is right here on the counter. Right on the counter, because I need salt all the time. Like, what, if I, what if I decide to eat a tomato and I want some salt? No, it's put up. It's put away. Like, I went over there a few weeks ago, to, and I was, I was like, cooking my dad and I dinner. And I was like, where is everything? He's like, it's all got a spot. You'll figure it out. It's, 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 everything's put away. The guy, do, the guy cuts the grass. He cleans the gutters. He cleans the pool. He keeps the pH in the pool just perfect in the, in, the, in the saltwater pool. Like, he trims the roses. He fertilizes the garden. He picks the fruit in the garden and trims away like like the bad fruit so that the, the tomatoes will grow extra big. He works on the farm also like early in the morning and gets all that out of the way. He he tends to the computer systems that that moderate everything at the farm. Like he works at least 8 12 hours a day for my dad and I don't think my dad's paying him more than $400 a week. Oh, like, I was just about to say I knew the scam. Your father needs, this is need, not want, yeah. needs someone 10 hours a week. And this guy has turned it into a 70 hour a week job by doing more. Dad loves it. Dad, yeah, he's like, I'm not he's saying like, he's, with Adam. he's definitely not dishonest. He's just turned it no. into a bigger job uh, than it could have been. He did one he dishonest thing yeah. one time and dad caught him. He stole a little bit, like $20 or something like that. But it, dad was like, we call that spillage. That's what you call spillage, all right? You know, like, 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 oh, he took $20 out of an ashtray? Well, I've never seen anybody scrub a floor like this man before in my entire <laughs> life. I, I've had four wives, and I've never seen one of them mop a floor like, like this fucker. And I'd, I'd, I'd pay him $1,000 if he for, for a woman to scrub a floor like that. Never seen it in my life. I, I'm telling you, my dad, it seemed kind of, my dad didn't mean it this way. He was just trying to illustrate to me like how hardworking this guy is. But my dad sent me a picture of him scrubbing the floor, and he's just on his hands and knees, <laughs> and, and like he looked like a slave. He's a white guy. He looked like a slave though. He looked like an indentured servant scrubbing this floor. And his she's so red and and sweaty, and he's got his shirt off, and he's just like he's looking up like he's clearly like out of breath. He looks up, he's like. And my dad's like, ka -chink. I just want to show Kyle how hard you work. <laughs> and I'm just like, God damn, he's working hard. It's just He's trying to earn back trust after that $20 bill incident. Yeah, there is nothing that you can imagine um, like needing to do around a household and a farm that this man doesn't do at this point. My dad's can he, get termites? Can he redo foundations? Can he, can he do stuff like that? Uh, I mean, you, you pay for up. Not a plane ticket. No, no, no. A bus ticket, and this man will be at your house not to not tonight, but tomorrow. And <laughs> he'll do his damnedest to fix that that foundation. He'll be crawling through your ducts <laughs> like James Bond, looking for fucking termites. He'll be biting them. He won't even need poison. He doesn't he'll know how to fix a foundation or kill termites. He's just, doing, he's just he's hitting them, pushing he's dirt do it back all. in place. He's gonna grind the termites up, make a paste, and repair the foundation. <laughs> I like this I'm, guy. Man, now we're yeah. making money. <laughs> he's, um, he's clearly like gay, like like effeminate, um, mm -hmm. like, like like dude. I, I met him the other day. Dad, Dad was like, you know, he's been wanting to meet you for a while. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, he's like every now and then when you send me a picture of you, I show it to him, and he's like, oh, I want to meet him. <laughs> and so like i met him i shook his hand he's like it's real nice to meet you kyle it's real <laughs> nice i've just been looking forward to meeting you for a long time well, it needs to be asked does this guy yeah. keep in shape i mean you know scrubbing those floors too. keeps the man taut all right i'll say that about him i'll say that about him oh speaking yeah. of taut men um so um <laughs> our, our boy dirty lost some kind of a bet the other day and uh he lost the bet to ava you're familiar with ava right Mm -hmm. the, Remind me. 
she yeah, slash he like, like, like i asked oh, ava, now i know like, sure sure yeah i asked ava once like what her um or his Pronoun pronouns is. were and she says i'm just a faggot so i'm just like all right, but I still well, need the gonna, answer to that. <laughs> I'm not going to call you that. So I, <laughs> I, I, I say she, and uh, um, but but seems perfectly fine with he as well uh, with the pronouns. But um, I, I've come full circle on that. I used to be some kind of fuck. I don't know. Maybe I watched too much Shapiro or some sort of fucking Jordan Peterson shit about people holding you hostage about the language you use. And I and for some it clicked with me. <laughs> but now I'm just like, nah. If, if they want to be fucking she, they're she. If they want to be a fucking circle, they're a circle. I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, like, 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 like anything else is just almost bigoted. And and by almost I mean is. So anyway, she um she won this bet with Dirty. And uh, the, the deal was that Dirty had to post whatever she wanted on his uh, social media. And at first it was going to be his Instagram. And he's like, I got family on there. <laughs> you going to post. And she's like, all right, your Twitter then. And so he had to post this picture of Ava on his Twitter. Let me see if I can get the picture. I don't even <laughs> I, like he since deleted the tweet, but I'm going to see if I can get it. Oh, well, he, not much of a bet if he can delete it. He just let it live out there for 30 seconds and then got rid of it. Sounds it like on there for like a day and a half. Still seems like Ava's long cheating. enough, apparently. So Ava looking sexy, I guess. On... Ava looking sexy, got, got looking looking her best, like bunny eared femboy self, like 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 go, <laughs> go, like, like looking like. Oh, I, oh fuck it! Yeah. Find, find the picture. That's so funny. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. One so second. Ava just picked something to try and fuck with dirty as much as possible to embarrass him as to much as possible. Um. I'm gonna like share exit so it's easier to share rather than some sort of Discord link. It'll just take me a moment. Yeah, no problem. But um, that's hilarious. What was the bet again? Was it a poker thing? You know, I don't remember exactly what it was. It, it could have been a poker thing, or it could have been just like just some random bet they made together. Uh, I don't know. We do a lot of gambling in the Discord. Um, oh, he actually, I he one v one him on League, and the winner got to post whatever picture to the other's Twitter. That was the deal. Wow, and, and Ava is apparently a strong league player, and so this went on Dirty's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hang in there, everyone. I'll show it to you. The text to... reads, oh. "Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to knock. But since you have it out, why don't I come over and help you? Come, Daddy. <laughs> 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 Just the best. That's fantastic. I like how it's." It's even written in text in a way to to embarrass Dirty as much as possible. Yeah, that is Ava. Good for you, Ava. Ava Another looking victory over Dirty. Ava is not a late night snacker. No, Ava's oh, Ava's looking taut. Mm. Ava is a late night snack. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ava <can> get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that, that that's a way better bet than a monetary one. That's I funny. agree. That's yeah. a, that's that's how we're gonna have to start doing that bet. Or something oh. similar. Oh, right. We'll just do shirtless pics on Twitter, right? Oh. <laughs> I, I just decided what gets posted on the FPS Russia account. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. It's getting good. All right. Well, I don't like this one anymore. <laughs> Damn it. Like, yeah, I'm looking fat and awful, but I'm also naked, so I'm taking this account down with me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. No, you can be naked on Twitter, I think. Yeah, so that yeah. wouldn't even work. Yeah, you can be naked on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah good stuff oh all right so i want to talk death pool a little bit um mm. we, we never did like go back to like trim up our death pools um obviously i'm a man down and uh, i think that what we agreed on was i could make any changes any of us could make any changes we wanted um yeah. if that's not the case what i do want to do is replace um the dead person dmx on my deadpool with rondo quando the uh the rapper rondo uh, quando rondo quando okay um, he's an atlanta-based ra uh, rapper um Things just aren't going his way these days. He, he lives a, a very dangerous uh, uh, lifestyle. Um, so twenty-two, but he's 22. not sick. Not sick at all. Not sick okay. At all. Okay. Well, I'm down. Yeah. The rules, he's, if I recall, were uh, you can make any changes you want. You get first dibs to the people you already had. Yeah. I still, I still want the big fat guy from Lost. He's a ticking bomb. Oh, I yeah. love it. I love it. Hurley's a good one. Uh, who else? And, did have i don't recall if i'm allowed to i want to get rid of chris jericho mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. replace him with diego the nightmare sanchez that's good you know what I, i'm i'm gonna hold on to lil wayne 
I'm gonna hold on to Lil Wayne. Oh, you hang on to him for dear life. Yeah, and the in the fat uh, guy from Lost. But I guess I have a third. So, Dick, do you do any celebrities pop in your head or famous people who are under fifty, not dying, that you think will die soon? Under fifty? Like, yeah. To not make it harder, we do only under fifty death pools. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, wait, Kyle, did you did you not win because of? No, uh, I did win. I chose DMX, who was like forty nine yeah. years old, and the man passed. We just have to okay. re up now. Oh, oh, so you're doing it again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, instead of picking a whole new batch of five, we're just, obviously, I'm a man down, so I wanted to yeah. have five players. And uh, since we are doing, like, a reload, I figured I'd, I I thought Chris Jericho might be one of those wrestlers who has, like, CTE or is, like, maybe roid rage or something. But then, like, mm -hmm. I, I, I chose him too quickly because upon further yeah. research, real clean lifestyle, like, positive kind of vibes. I think he does one of those Instagrams where it's, like, Wake up, America! It's time to start lifting weights and eating Brussels sprouts and getting healthy with and being one with the and Lord. Living. Yeah, like <laughs> with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, like 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 he's one of those super healthy, like like Arkham mentally not tough. Meeting the Lord anytime soon. Yeah, he's what not about, meeting the Lord anytime soon. What about Jesus. Tess Holiday? Is she does she count as a celebrity? Because I saw that she was talking about anorexia. I'm the thinking maybe her person. anorexia will come back, dude, and that she'll starve herself to death. Did you guys see uh, here? I have the tweet in front of me. She wrote on Twitter, I'm anorexic and in recovery. I'm not ashamed to say it out loud anymore. I am the result of a culture that celebrates thinness and equates that to worth. But I get to write my own narrative now. I'm finally able to care for a body that I've punished my entire life and I am finally free. This poor woman is the result of a culture that celebrates thinness and, thinness and equates that to worth. That's why she's anorexic. Tess Holiday. She's 700 pounds. If we, did we got, did you get that part? She's about, <laughs> she's the size of, uh, she's Dude, the size she of absolutely Grindel. dominated anorexia. <laughs> when Grindel, about his mother-in-law, he's talking about her. She's, she's been in recovery. Uh, she's in recovery for everybody, for all the anorexics. She's like the Jesus of anorexia. She was I'm, in recovery for them all. It's like, yeah, it turns out like, being underweight is only one of the symptoms of anorexia. <laughs> And she has like all the others, like a bad relationship with food, and I don't know all that. But I'm what? like, I have huh? a bad relationship with food. <laughs> You're at a <laughs> <laughs> I, I We all do if we over. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm trying to like make sense of something that doesn't make sense in the slightest. She doesn't have anorexia. I would imagine somebody who's gone through like really devastating anorexia might see something like that and be like, what? You know, like, you know who are you actually serious? Beat are you serious? Because I weighed sixty five pounds when I was twenty one. Yeah. I was on I was on uh, death's door. They had to like show me a mirror and be like, "You need to gain weight. You're dying. Your bones are falling apart." Like, and not no, bulimia. The, the, the girls who actually like the girls who actually are like I beat anorexia are usually yoked. They're usually like they, they usually like turn to like bodybuilding and stuff like that. They, they just like pack on pounds and pounds of muscle so they can continue to like, and like. They're they're fucking they got protein farts like like these women are fucking pounding it pounding food away now. Have you like ever lifting a guy heavy with anorexia? Any of you? A guy with anorexia. I um, have it. I'm in recovery every day, about six times a day, more on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never known a guy who had anorexia. I've I, known I, some like super skinny guys, but I think it's just genetic. I don't think yeah, I've known any people with anorexia in real life. You, I've seen I them on of, YouTube. And yeah, I, I knew of like girls in high school who had it, but obviously like you don't bring that up but like this is when this is in grade school because they're hot there was this kid yeah. there was this kid that was a year older than me or yeah he was a year older than me he was a friend of mine's brother and so i was in first grade he was in second grade and he had anorexia as a second grade boy and like wouldn't eat wouldn't touch food like like and it caused for him because like especially at that age like he's I, i'm pretty sure I, I haven't kept in touch with these people at all in the last you know, almost 25 years but like like they were even talking at the time like yeah he's just not growing we keep telling him you need to eat. You're not growing. Like your younger brother's going to catch up to you. Like you're. I couldn't imagine being a parent and like dealing with that. With a what is that? Suppose a second grader, eight years old, an eight year old who like refuses to eat. Because not they, even. Fat, yeah, like seven. seven or something. Like, yeah, that that kid clearly had some some kind of issue going on. Probably some. Yeah, some I mean, I knew picky eaters. I knew picky eaters where it was like, yeah, they they they'd have to like pack their lunches because they just wouldn't eat like certain things, you know. But that's a completely separate thing. That's totally um, yeah. There's a bunch of picky kids. I don't I don't know what the anorexia for like kids that young is even about. Like how it even materializes necessarily. Because some like, kind of abuse, I would guess. Like that's how so many of those things manifest. Is 
like yeah yeah, yeah weird stuff like that like um i know of a girl who was molested by her father and so she she was she would not bathe so that she would be like filthy so that he wouldn't want to molest her really and sick. so that carried on mm -hmm. into adulthood so that she was just always filthy and wouldn't mm -hmm. take baths and stuff and like that's just like serious dark mental illness that you just it's terrible you know yeah so maybe there's some anorexia um that that comes from a place like that not necessarily molestation but like something deep rooted like that i've had this you not politically about correct work, thought man from time to time and it's mm. so let's say you're 17 and you have anorexia right let's all yeah. agree that's not good it's probably hot but not good now we fast forward she's past the anorexia she's 27 can she tap into that super willpower anytime she wants and stay thin right does, does she use her anorexic yeah. powers to just not get overweight in her 30s and 40s well, it's not a skill as much as I would understand it to be a compulsion. It's like a, a compulsive <laughs> disorder where they don't feel like they can eat. So can they tap into it and dial it up a little bit now and then? Be like, you know what? I need to be uh, compulsed to lose about 12 pounds. <laughs> and just turn that on. I don't yes, think they can. They definitely can. Can they? Uh, what he's wondering, I, like, you know, like, is there any way you could molest me into losing <laughs> three to five pounds over the weekend? Yeah. Because I'll take a little molestation. <laughs> It's like when the EPA shuts down the Ghostbusters containment thing and all the mm -hmm. ghosts shoot out. That's yeah. just what they do, except with their brain. So all of the, all of the, all of the reasons that they stopped eating in the first place go shooting out all over the place. And you're like, oh shit. Well, this thing's just now you're fat and annoying. Uh, <laughs> oh, they get fat. No, I would have thought uh, that someone who know. battled anorexia would have no trouble just staying in shape. No, because they have no idea what they look like. They look yeah. in the mirror and you just see a monster. It's like they don't know if they're hot or if they're 50 pounds overweight. Yeah. I'm okay like, if she thinks she looks too heavy. Always they, strive. They have <laughs> body, uh, dysphoria. Is it That's dysmorphia normal. or dysphoria? It's one of those. Dysmorphia. Dysmorphia or dysphoria. Yeah. One of them is, is it. But sure. yeah, they just like Dick said, they, they see themselves in the mirror and they may be like 65 pounds but in, to them, they don't see that. Like their reality is like, oh, I'm a big fat fucking mess, and I need just to, oh, bones. I can't, believe, I can't believe you just, ate that strawberry today, you animal. Oh, you're never gonna be like, or whatever the internal mental monologue is. It's just yeah, everybody oh, has body like, dysmorphia, right? Like there's every, um, I guess an int like like I'm watching that that TV show um Clarice right now. It's about um, it's like a it's a TV show that is a sequel to Silence of the Lambs. So it's Clarice mm -hmm. Starling, like right after she kills Buffalo Bill. Ooh. And uh, and so the girl who was down in the well, if you remember correctly, Buffalo Bill would kidnap old oh, chubby women, yeah. great big fat women, and because he wanted to like starve them so their skin would get a little loose, and then when he killed them, he could skin them and make his woman suit. So the the girl who was smart contractor. <laughs> so the girl who was rescued from down in the well, the pit, who was being starved, now she has this compulsive eating thing where, like, she's doing, like, hanging sit-ups, eating nothing but no low-fat yogurt. Like, but, and it's clearly, like, a, in a response to this, like, she doesn't want to be the kind of person that a Buffalo Bill would kidnap ever again. Like, she's just getting fucking ripped. She's like Linda Hamilton living in a room all by herself, just doing fucking chin-ups. Is it the same actress? No, um, it looks so much like her. It's okay. been decades, you know. Right, what then. am I thinking? Yeah. I mean, it would yeah. be neat if that actress got her shit together. Oh, uh, they did a good job of casting on this. The yeah. the the woman they have playing Jodie Foster, essentially, looks a bit like Jodie Foster, sounds a bit like Jodie Foster. She's a tiny woman like Jodie Foster is. It's it's an okay show. If you like Han like I like Hannibal. I like everything in that universe, um, of of like uh, Hannibal Lecter and all the books and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of into it right now. I've watched all the episodes that are out. <clears throat> I was talking about everyone having body dysmorphia. So I've lost some weight recently. I don't know if... Forget what I weighed last time Dick was on the show. But I, I peaked at 222. People asked me how much I weighed. I didn't want to tell them because I was embarrassed. But that, that was my starting weight, 222. And I've lost 29 pounds. I'm 193 now. Wow. Very yes. Nice. And I put on some muscle too. But I don't know the, like the gap. But I've been wow. lifting weights. And... Uh, when I weighed 200, I felt so great. I, like, I, I got like a four pack and I was like, I can't believe I look like this. Like, this is actually me. This isn't a trick. I can yeah. just 
Flex my abs anytime I want to and see him. Isn't this great? I've lost seven more pounds and I'm like, eh, you still got work to do. I'm, I'm, you look great. <laughs> I, I have so many shirtless pictures of Woody in my phone now. <laughs> <laughs> chat, they look great. His, his most recent picture is his best. Like, like he's looking best. great. And yeah. like, you mentioned that you're like, Jackie just said my smile looked good, but it was like, your smile did look really good. Uh, <laughs> you looked like you were about to try and sell me a pre-owned Acura. <laughs> I'd buy it too. <laughs> I would have bought it. I wasn't going to beat yeah, me up. <laughs> Jake might not, I got braces in October. Here's what happened. I got braces in October. And uh, they're these Invisalign braces. They're right here. And uh, um, now every time I eat, I have to take the braces out. You can't eat with them in. And then when I'm finished, I have to brush my braces and brush my teeth. It's like a chore. And what it's done is it made every eating decision a more conscious one. There is no little snack. There is no like eat and go to sleep. No, you can't eat and go to sleep. You have to, if you did that, hypothetically, you'd get out of bed, take your braces off, eat, get out of bed again, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, brush your braces. It's, it's a different process. And uh, that's how I lost my first eight pounds. And then that led to i don't know like a little bit of success was like oh let's take this farther and let's take i guess further let's take this further let's take this further and um then i started lifting and getting even more strict on the diet and i just kept going and he bought a gym that uh, rivals most com commercial gyms. <laughs> I, it, how many gyms do you have in that house <laughs> just a, one gym it, well, I think, the eastern gym is the good one <laughs> Yeah. No, like, there's a lot of dangerous characters in that southern gym i don't, I don't, go. <laughs> I don't think you have it, to get a guy in to put on your elevator a gym plaque when you put the gym in and you I know think, that it's on the second floor i think kyle overstates it it's it's really small but what's there is nice like i have a gym efficient i have a gym floor i've got a nice rack of dumbbells a squat rack and like a functional trainer and a couple benches and stuff and uh mirrors benches yeah, That's just more two. Than a gym. Uh, and, uh, and and one of the things I like the most is I, I bought a little mini split like air conditioner heater, so the gym is exactly the temperature I want. That, it's so funny uh, that yeah. like that you always like. It's so funny what other people sell about the stuff they have because like every time you talk about your gym, like if I were you, I'd be like, yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff and blah blah blah. But then there's a thousand dollar functional trainer in the corner that you can do this and this and this and you're all your ending thing your big hurrah is always and the climate control it's like, no, <laughs> it is. finish finish with the multifunctional trainer <laughs> the, the, the thing that if you saw it in like a lifetime fitness you'd be like damn that, that's a nice one like you just, like, dick you literally had you know the functional trainers yeah, he's got yeah. like the kind you would see at a gym like the kind that you need to like pass a class before they let you start taking. <laughs> Probably. It's nice. I, I like it. It does it. I ask it, it to. It weighs a metric ton. <laughs> you can't move it. Metric when the, the people came and installed it, it was like not in the corner and a little bit crooked. And they're like, all right, what do you think? And it's my nature to be like, great job, boys. But I'm like, we can't leave it there. We can't leave it there. You know, it's it's 14 inches from this wall and eight inches from this wall. And we want it in the corner. It's not a big room. So, you need, yeah. you know, you, you don't want to give up a foot even like, you know, and uh, the, I think you boys need to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the guys is like, I told you, I told you, I told you. And I'm like, he knew he knew that you did a bad job and you just wanted to stop here. But this guy knew and, and then they fixed if it. They would have left it there. Would how would you have even moved it? Like I, I like I, I don't know a like series a come of, along. <laughs> uh, yeah, like a series of levers and pulleys or something. Yeah. Right? Like, you know. I'm gonna have to get. I'm really gotta get strong now so that I can move my functional trainer <laughs> into the corner. Thing, that thing is so heavy. Like you'd have to do math to move it. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I'd move it without damaging the floor. Like even you a can't le move it without damaging the floor. It w literally probably weighs fourteen hundred pounds or yeah. something. It's something like it's really you don't heavy. Tear up anymore. So, uh, but they moved it like the, the four of them all were able to like lift and drag and yeah. get it in place. Yeah. But do you have a ton of baby termites in the corner of your gym? No, uh, <laughs> no, I, I like it a lot. That I'm glad that of. you two, I'm glad that you two have like forged this path of like figuring out what, what good gym equipment is. Whenever I get a new house, I think, uh, I think I'll look into maybe a home gym if I'm not like close to one, but like, it's so much more fun to do it at home anyway. 
I don't know so, about that. I kind of like it's I, on I your own. Like the you idea of, of as much being time. At, I'm of the opinion that there are smart people on both sides of this debate, right? There are people who are absolutely like, I don't know that I would stick to it as well as I have if I had to like get in the car and like bring my gym clothes and organize a bag daily to have clean stuff. Or you might stick to it more because think of it this way. Now you've gotten organized, you've gotten your car and you've driven somewhere. Are you really not going to do that last set? You're here. There's no, you could be at your house and you could be like, I'll come back. I'll go to the refrigerator and have some carrots. I'll I'll recuperate. Hey, a little extra rest time. Maybe I do a couple extra reps and then you you just never make it back into that room. Hmm. It it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. I I think people can be wired either way and like no one's necessarily right. I I go in there on my rest day sometimes and just be like, you know what? I'm going to do my, I just do my warm up typically. I do um, from Dick, the McGill three. Is that what it is? Oh yeah. The big three dude. That's life changing. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I, I do it on my rest days sometimes and i replace the crunches with hanging knee raises but it's basically the same and uh i do that or um i hurt my ankle lately so i'll just go in and do ankle pt on my rest days Mm -hmm. and stuff but i don't think i'd do that if i went to a commercial gym so that's fair that's definitely fair i I definitely i mean i I rarely miss workouts and i I think it's because of my home gym like because i still have like a job and shit like it's often that like afternoon time i'll go down and start working out and like you know, three sets into bench or, you know, seated row, whatever it is. Like I get an email that like needs immediate attention and I have to like run upstairs real quick, get on my laptop, do whatever I have to do. And then I run right back down. Like for me, it's really, really convenient. And it makes it for me, it like, it takes away any kind of excuse. So like, I guarantee I would, I would give myself fucking excuses or be like, Oh, you've been busy all day. And you just, Oh, you're so you're stressed about blah, blah, blah. Just, just take the day off. Whereas if it's in my basement and I spent all this money on that equipment, like there's a feeling of urgency and a feeling of guilt. If I like, if I go a week and I don't use it, I start to be like, what are you retarded? You're taking up all this space in your basement, thousands of dollars in plates and machines and power racks, barbells. And you're, and you're up here rewatching King of the Hill, like an asshole. Like, what are you doing? Get down there and start lifting. Yeah, the termites hurt when weird. they bite me, but I've got to get those bones. <laughs> yeah, I have to do it. And you know what? Motivation. I, it shows me that not even thousands of bugs crawling all over me can stop me. <laughs> ass. Taylor, yeah. do you not have a TV in your gym? No, I do. I have a TV in my gym. Oh, okay. I got to that, that would be my selling point of the gym. This gigantic, like, 65-inch TV that I, I installed poorly and as cheaply as possible. It's a little <laughs> bit crooked, but that's all right. I got a new TV and I'm like, well, I could either give this one away or just put it in the garage and like have three hour workout slash Mad Men marathons. <laughs> uh, Do you have a home gym? Miss, yeah, I miss going to the gym. I miss seeing I miss seeing like the occasional hot chick at the gym, which was very few and far between. But I love working out in my flip flops. Which they do not. Oh, that allow. sounds incredibly dangerous. Really? What are you doing in your flip flops? Yeah. Russian roulette I workouts. I, I do everything in my flip flops. I just love it. I flip flops and jeans. <laughs> now, you wear jeans when you're like squatting and shit. Yeah, that's how I love. I love working out in jeans and flip flops. Uh, I know it's dangerous. <laughs> I'm all about the flip flops too, man. But 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 if you're gonna be working with with plates, like like you, you got to put some sneakers Dude, on. I, I don't want to get sweaty in jeans. That sounds awful. It's great. No, it's great. It's like you feel like these are how jeans were meant to be. Like you're supposed to get all sweaty and, cr- and they start shaping. Do you to have your- barbell jeans? Um, I do have a workout set of jeans. Yeah. It's like this is the best one and I will only work out in these because they're all ripped on the night. I don't do it all the time. I'm not like a gay Coke uh, commercial or something. Like a- yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but I like having no shirt on. I like the danger. I like having absolutely no spotter ever. Yeah. Do you have a power rack where you have safeties, or what are you working with in there? Yeah, I have a power rack, but I don't, I don't do squats. That's a young man game. Well, I mean, for really. benching, like, do you do the safe? Uh, like, do you put the no. safeties in there? No, I go straight <laughs> off and I do it right. And man, I'll, I'll always, always go for 10. Never, ever, ever. I'll, I'll bump up five pounds, like, all right, here's one, dial 9 1. And then if something happens, hit the one with your nose. <laughs> <You're like laughs> over. I got a dog now, and I hope that if something happens, she would go get something, but she'd probably just sit there chewing on a piggy ear. Dude, there have been times that I've been flat benching in my basement where, like, if I didn't have those safeties, I would have died. Because it's yeah. like the last one up, it's like, awesome. you know, push like you're going to die. And it's like there's just there's no more juice in the in the tank. Like, And I drop it, and it clangs on the safeties. Like, 
three quarters of an inch above your chest. And it's it's mm. spooky, but Must my be. God, I'm thankful for that. You're just balls to the wall. I've never had safety. No, you I don't know how you. I no racks are for my. I've never had safety. I fail a bench I, I every just, other week. I just don't put the locks on, and if I fail, right. it gets spilt on the floor. Oh, mm. I mean. That's fair enough. I just, I'm in my house. I don't want to dump a heavy bench and then have it, have that bar go and hit the top of my power rack and probably come down. Yeah. No, I, I don't it want does. that. It that, does. That, so, that seems so much more dangerous than like trying to let it down as slowly as I can on the safe. Well, nothing's more dangerous than leaving 300 pounds on your chest. <laughs> well, but it's not on my chest. It's on the safeties. Well, there's no safeties. Except the safeties don't like on my power rack. I have a Titan X3. There's like the, you know how you put the, the bar in five or like six is like slightly too, too high. So if I come down, like I'm clanging on it before I can hit my chest yeah. and then five, I would just die slower because it's mm -hmm. too low. And so like, there have been times where I like dropped it on five and like, as it's coming down, I have to like, <gasps> go like that. And mm. then just kind of, I wonder if there are any like body. smart, I wonder if there, if any, there are any like smart safeties out there. Yeah, you know, you know, like with table saws, they have that that uh, technology where like, if it's flesh that touches the blade, the blade just instantly stops. Yeah. Is there anything like that that they can tell the difference between you just coming down and you and you running out of gas? Oh, I bet there's a a, a thing with a pedal that you press that's just like emergency, and like, like I, I guarantee there's a there's a there's a safety stop that involves like a pedal that's down by your feet that you can like press to like engage it or lock it or like get it off of you or something. That's I a good guarantee. idea. I thought about rigging something. Like I've always had a home gym. I've always thought about rigging something exactly like what you're describing up. Yeah. Uh, like if I, if I just thought of it just now, someone else already thought of it, engineered it, patented it and sold it. I guarantee it exists. Mm -hmm. So it would remove just like my salt and pepper in one jar thing that I came up with a year, years ago. <laughs> Yeah, but you just stole that from the peanut butter and jelly guys. I did, I did. But who? Where did they? Nobody likes that peanut. The, that the ratio's all wrong. I don't I like that kid, much jam. When I was a kid, I liked it because I thought it was like cool. Because I did, I couldn't imagine how they got it in there that way. How do they get it in there? <laughs> when I was like six. It's like, man, are they putting individual slices? And it's like, no, retard. It's like Aquafresh toothpaste. They're just firing yep. it out of there into into canisters. Oh, it took me like ten minutes. I don't have a TV. I just have a laptop on the stand. I found an old picture. You're gonna want a TV, yeah, you should, brother. You mount the TV. Like it just I, a, a, you don't do cardio though, so it's like you don't really need a TV. Yeah, you want the TV when you're just. I don't listen to music when I'm working out. I, I rewatch King of the Hill or I watch something funny or. If you know. you're gonna, if you're ever doing gonna do cardio, like the only way to do cardio is to like have a TV program in front of you and just just like zone. I'm out. watching Seinfeld. The pedals don't matter. The pedals mm -hmm. don't exist. The pedals. Seinfeld's don't exist. another good workout show. I watch that all the time. When Seinfeld's I'm a good one. Yeah, Seinfeld or um or just like YouTube videos, like even information something that's informational that requires a little brain uh, horsepower, like that'll keep you distracted from the monotony of like yeah. cardio, whatever cardio you're doing. Somebody like who's like just yoked out of their mind do the same exercise as me and explain. Oh, that's no fun. Or just watch uh, Predator. Well, I mean, yeah, just watch like a bunch of jacked guys. Or I mean, you know, porn. I, I remember uh, that'll do it. Gay porn. Yeah, gay porn <laughs> is excellent. It's really I motivating. thought you guys were gonna leave me alone on that limb. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, I just don't look at it, and then I'm like hearing motivation. It's like, take it, take it. <laughs> That's true. Take yeah, it. yeah, you like that, don't you, bitch? No, don't say that. That's not helping me lift. Take it. <laughs> Yeah, put that in your mouth, you dirty whore. What? Who owns this? <laughs> Who owns this? And you're like, I do. I do. I own the <laughs> You're getting that last fucking PR in. <laughs> yes. Who's my little bitch? Me. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep doing reps, I get to be the bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you, uh, Dick, do you just have the, the power rack? Or, like, are you all barbells, dumbbells? Like, how, how big of a sit setup do you have? Well, job. I used to have all these stupid, like, uh, stretchy elastic or uh, whatever they are. Resistance uh, bands? Resistance bands, yeah. But then I got back on the dirty stuff. I got back on the dirty weights. And the uh, I got um, – my sister had kids, so I inherited her uh, rack and bench a while ago. Um, but now she's Like a four-post squat rack? rack. What What's drinking, that? Taylor? Like a four-post squat rack? That's what we're yeah. talking about? Yeah. 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 Good. yeah. yeah. Um, that's all I got. It's the center of any good gym, according to is me. Is it regular Crown Royal? You got like some 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 like honey or apple or something? It's just regular. 
regular literally like i was give it give it a little for me oh that's nice i don't i don't know what what the different literally the reason i have this i i'm not a liquor drinker at all uh mostly just drink light beer when i do drink but like i was like up my ass yeah i, I boof I it sometimes like I, I, I boof yeah. it but uh basically i was like we were all registering for our wedding my fiance and i she was just like shooting the gun at things that she thought was cool and one of them was like a little you know those drink carts that you can put in like the corner of your dining room where you have like liquor bottles on it and the thing and like neither of us are really hard alcohol people but like we got that and i assembled it earlier this week and i've just been like looking it's, you know another friend got me this crystal decanter and i'm like i just want something to go in it so bad like i i look so cool and so i'm like right before the show i was like hey will you go like i'm tired of looking at this for like two weeks Go like buy any kind of whiskey. I want to put it in the crystal decanter and then I'm going to drink it out of a fancy cup. And I have these like circle ice cubes that are freezing right now. I'm going to try later. <laughs> and so she did. And like, and I don't, I don't know what I'm tasting or anything. I, I, I put so much fucking ice in this because, because I, I don't really want it to be that strong. Man, oh. fancy. It looks neat on there. There's like wine bottles that we also don't drink down there. You know, I got some, some fancy cups, some, so I guess Crown was the, what came to mind. I don't really know anything about whiskey, but Crown's kind of nice, right? It's, it's I like Crown. Enough. I like it. No, it's not. What's what's good, Dick? Tell me. What's a good whiskey? What's good? Well, yeah. like, a good whiskey. Uh, that, that God, you enjoy, that's like more of a, not not something super over the top fancy. Well, they all have just expensive expensive versions of um of of what they have. Like you got Rare Breed, Gentleman Jack. Um, those are probably a little bit higher. Maker's Merv has Maker's Mark has a reserve. Uh, it's fine. It's just. It's not as bad as um, it's not as bad as like Jack or Jim Beam. Uh, yeah, Jack. Is, you should get Tony Soprano special. Get that Glenlivet. Is that what he yeah. drinks? All right, I'll yeah. buy one. Is that expensive? It's not cheap. It can be. It, it's all. It depends, depends on how which much one you get. Right. It's, it's like McCallum. If it's like a twelve yeah. year or a eighteen or twenty something year. Okay. If or not an some sort of blend of like the, the, they've got the mother cask from the old country that's eight hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah, My girl, I, I, I basically like I'm going to buy some bottles to have on there to look nice in the corner, but I can already like foresee what's going to happen. It's going to be like some Saturday and I'll have friends over and I'm like, you see my drink cart? Yeah. You guys want to have a drink? Like, yeah. Let's just go get some Bud Light, though. I don't want to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's how it'll end up going because, you know, the beer's just better. I like the carbonation. I, I like hate it. Lights. I hate it. I, if, I'm, if I was I don't like alcohol to begin with, but if I was going to drink, I would I would want some nice tequila. I'd want a nice, uh, nice tequila, something pretty high end. Um, um, even the rocks tequila is actually OK. Like, like like back when I could drink, like like I tried the rocks tequila, I think it's called Tierra Mana or something, uh, something like that. It's OK. Um, but uh, but no, I, I like I like nice tequila with a little bit of lime and uh, and just kind of straight up. I, I do like it chilled. Um, but, but, I know uh, tequila brands very well. I just do what you said years ago, which is like, make sure it says agave. agave and that way there's no like grain alcohol, like uh, Jose Cuervo where they're like making it cheaper. Yeah. That's why yeah. So many people apparently are like, Oh, tequila really fucks me up and I have hangovers. And it's like, well, that's cause you were drinking grain alcohol mixed with shitty tequila. Yeah. Yeah. You're not even drinking tequila. It's, it's like, yeah, as long as it's like, 51 percent tequila in the bottle we can call it tequila and it's just like okay well maybe i want 100 percent tequila in my tequila like like make that the bare minimum but um i can't remember the the brands that i liked before um but they always there was one that was in this really fancy bottle that had like a decanter top it looked like a big fucking golden egg yeah it was in the cool. top i fucking it was so fucking good i like yeah. the way the i don't know what the decanter is meant to do does it do any? So when I put whiskey into that crystal square decanter, am oh, I yeah. supposed to leave it? Am I supposed to leave that open? And what am I doing? No, no, no. This is the the purpose of a decanter is that so you is that so your wife doesn't know how much you're drinking, because you can always fill it up and then throw the bottle away. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent serious about. I'm I'm decanter life big time. <laughs> and I. I not even I know how much I'm drinking. I just go to the store. Every time I'm at the store, I buy all the bottles of wild turkey. And then the, so, uh, me or someone keeps the decanter mm -hmm. full. Um, I, I swear <laughs> to God, that's the purpose. There's not like it doesn't it doesn't need to breathe. The whiskey doesn't need to breathe. It's just so you, no one could count how much liquor you're drinking. So it literally doesn't do anything but look cooler. 
No, no, it just looks, it's glass. It's, it's not some kind of like special liquor massaging glass that you put that well, in. You, know, you, you see those special shaped things where they're like, you pour wine in there and then they say, wine wait, is alive. wait a little while. Yeah, wine is alive though. Liquor, liquor is not. Liquor is just uh, ethanol. It's just a chemical mixed with oh. Uh, oak. I'm still going to keep liquor in there, even if it doesn't do anything. It looks so much neater than the regular bottle. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't want to have a crappy uh whiskey bottle sitting out there no, 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 no. that's trash man. Life, man no i'm gonna line the whole thing with warm miller lights no. <laughs> that's, your, that's your beer that, no so no like i don't I, I just thought of that because my, my brother came in town like three weeks ago and he brought a bunch of miller light and i still have like 10 cans of miller light sitting in a box in the corner of my kitchen because it's like there is something off about the way miller light tastes compared to other light beers there's something yeah. if you there's yes. yeah, yeah. I just like I like Bud Select, which I don't know if that's old. everywhere. Uh, I'm every time I have a party, there's always some joker who will bring like a 24 pack of Modelo, and then it will sit in my. It will shift back and forth from the garage to like the counter, slowly getting whittled away at for over like three beers here and there because yeah. it's just you know. Modelo is like, really good. And go, come on, buddy. Who, uh, what, whose house are you coming to? Here, bringing this on the day of my Cinco de Mayo. You're bringing me <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> fucking twenty-four pack. Look what I got over here: a Golden Road six pack, a Wolf Pup. These that these people have robbed me, and here's you, something that you just probably grabbed out of the store and didn't yeah. even pay for. Get it oh, out of here. Shit. Are are you a a beer guy at all, or a, a fancy liquor decanter man? Um, I'll drink it all. If it's if it if it will make me forget about all the problems that I caused with liquor, I will drink it. I every a couple of times a year, I'll convince myself like, yeah, this is the time I'm going to understand wine, and I'll like go oh, no. and, buy, and then like I'll go wow. buy some wine, and like the first couple of nights, like you try it like with dinner or something, you're like, man, I'm like I'm like a fancy adult, like I'm, and then like it'll come up, and it's like I, I just I just I really don't want that. I want beer. I want a light, crisp, refreshing beer. I don't want this heavy red wine that's going to make me just... And wine drunk, people talk about that. Like Wine drunk is the least pleasant drunk. It's It makes you lethargic. It makes you lazier than any hey. other kind of drunk, I feel like. Uh, I hate wine. I'm with you on that one. Not one glass if I have to, but... Mm. I'm not I'll say, what not cares good with the steak? That's what I want to know. What was that, Kyle? Sorry. I'm not a big fan of wine. I never have been. I don't really like beer either. Beer to me has to be like accompanied with like a beer food. Like I would never just sit and like watch a game and drink beer after beer. But if we have like hot dogs or like mm -hmm. um, like wings or something like that, then I'll drink a white trash beer. Like I, like, like Miller Lite is my like go to like light beer because I want it to taste like fucking water. Like, like I don't want it to taste like beer or Corona or a Dos Equis. Dos Equis uh, in the green bottle is probably my favorite beer. I've been getting like into nothing. White Claws lately. I don't know if you gentlemen have heard of this. Those are pretty uh, good. Oh, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> they are good. Yeah. Yeah. It's what the TikTok yellow. crowd likes. So I've been trying to uh, learn their ways. Body da. I got a, what do you got? Like a 17 year old girlfriend? Is that why you're breaking out the White Claws? Or? You know, hope that's the plan. This is step <laughs> one of the plan. That's how you do that. Yeah. You start with the White yeah. Claws. Yeah, I know some people who drink those. Uh, I've never had one. Um, probably would be delicious. Sounds delicious. Yeah, I think they came out after your whole after, hullabaloo. Yeah, I'd rather just get stoned as a motherfucker. Just so stoned I could barely move, which is the plan. And Let's you see. will, I promise. Let's see, we are 148 days out. 148. Two hours, 51 minutes, 12 seconds. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Uh, until what? my probation's over and I can smoke dope. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're wow. like half, you're three quarters of the way through. No, at least. least. Yeah, more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna move to a yeah. more weed oh, yeah. friendly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like like the moment that t thing clicks over, that I'm gonna time it just right so that that seven four seven is like crossing <laughs> the state line. <laughs> oh. Have somebody in first class throw an edible at you. So he's no, no. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking, fucking dart me with marijuana concentrate the moment. Be <laughs> bear right down your gut. <laughs> oh, it hurts so much. Okay, I'm high. I'm high now. Okay, we're good. But <laughs> didn't you think Biden would like loosen up all the weed no, shit? No, Biden's is still an old fucking fart man. See, look, look. 
He's no Bernie Sanders, all right? Look, I, we need to do ads after this, but like I'm steeped in this nonsense right now. You want to know who's leading the charge for marijuana legalization? That, that fucking Mitch McConnell, right? Like, like, like <laughs> not Mitch McConnell. Um, who's the who's the um who's the majority leader? What's his fucking name? Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, that guy. Yeah, yeah the old, old old white dude. From yes. New York. Yeah, you're right. I remember. He's that. leading the fucking charge, but but and, he's and, like uh, we're sending it to Biden's desk, whether he wants it or not. Make yeah, we'll see about that sign. because like there's like three or four Democrats who are not down for the legalized marijuana in the Senate. It, it, who like, are like, they? That's bullshit. I don't know. Is there's Manchin a list one? of them. I, Manchin, maybe, maybe even Cory Booker too. Like, like there's like three or four Booker. of them. Um, I, I don't know. I was looking at it the other day. They're they're against legalization, and so like, but you need the supermajority, right, to avoid the filibuster. You need sixty votes, so you need every Democrat plus, uh, you know, nine or ten, whatever it is, uh, Republicans, and that just seems like it's far fetched. Uh, wow. Well, I, I want to look into this and get all the numbers, but it's slow pace. The yeah, it, it's pretty much what I just said. It's th there was like four or five Dems who were just like, "Uh, uh, no, we're not up for legal marijuana." So it's we not think Booker. it causes more problems than than it does good. Where we, we think it's going to create a drug epidemic, you know, like it does in all those and all those other places where it's legal and for all forty percent of the United States and the in Canada and Mexico, you know, where they have those epidemics of marijuana dopers running through the streets, starting fires and murdering and wait, no, they just eat nachos and chill. So Cory yeah. Booker says he wants, he's going to release a draft bill to end marijuana prohibition. So I don't think he's the anti guy, but I, I believe you that there's probably some Democrats who aren't on board. I, I, I don't know why it's even a partisan issue. I, I, who is the dumbass who's not f five? What are, it's four or five. There's four or five. Of them, oh, oh, is what oh, I was indicating mistake. by that. Just mirror um, like animal would. I, I yeah, it's fun. We developed this while you were off screen. What do you? Yeah, you don't know about this. <laughs> this, 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 is the, this is the private joke between the three of us. You're not. <laughs> hey, boys. You'll, you'll never get it, and it's oh so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I wish I could figure out who the holdup is. I'll have to look at this offline. Here, you, uh, there's multiple holdups. What do you take a little time? Uh, I'm going to take a pick. That if you would like. And we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by a company we know and love, Postmates. You know what's great about eating your favorite thing? Eating it. You know what's not great? Going and getting it. And the only fast things that do deliver are not what you're craving. That's where Postmates steps in, the app that adds a delivery option to your favorite restaurants. Imagine anything you want to eat delivered. You don't have to drive, park, or even talk on the phone to order. Just download the app and order 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. You can even see where your food is and track the driver. Forgot the eggs and milk? No problem. Craving a tasty burger? Check. Looking for the perfect bottle of red wine or a summer beer? Order up. Postmates is your new long-term munchies booty call. <clears throat> for a limited time, Postmates is giving you 100 bucks of free delivery credit for your first seven days. $100 of free delivery credit your first seven days. All you have to do, download the app today and use code PKA to start your $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. $100. That's great. That is code PKA for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. Save the hassle. Get the food you love fast at Postmates with code PKA. Get yourself some tasty food or a summer beer, whatever the hell you want. Track your driver. going to be very convenient. And what are you going to need after you have some delicious oniony and garlicky food? You're going to need your breath fixed. That brings us to Smart Mouth. Everyone talk or everyone hates talking to someone with bad breath. That humid, awful smell keeps you from focusing on anything other than finding an excuse to leave. Now just think of all the times you were the gross, smelly one and the other person was thinking about trying to get away. Probably can't think of any examples. That's because we rarely have an accurate read on our own breath odor. In other words, you could be walking around with trash mouth, not even realize you're grossing everybody out. That's why Smart Mouth was invented. Smart Mouth's clinically proven two liquid formula combines to instantly eliminate bad breath and prevent bad breath from returning all day long. Rinse once in the morning for all day clean breath and once before bed to prevent morning breath. Just two uses a day and you'll never have bad breath guaranteed. Whether the boardroom or the bedroom, having confidence in your breath spells success. Go to smartmouth.com slash PKA now for a free coupon. You can find Smart Mouth products in the oral health aisle at Walgreens, CVS, Target, Rite Aid, Amazon, Walmart, or wherever you shop. Once again, that is smartmouth.com slash PKA for your coupon. So check coupon. them out for your coupon. Get coupon. Your coupon. And Check them get your out. Breath smelling good, and also get yourself some some Postmates free delivery. I've looked into it. There are two Democrats 
against marijuana. There are three more Democrats on the fence about it. And it doesn't appear that there are any Republicans looking to, like, make up those numbers. What about Rand Paul? I, I, he's all... He's, I, I think Rand Paul doesn't like the part of the bill that that either um, either some of the taxation issues, because, you know, he's got that libertarian uh, um, spin to him, yeah. or maybe even part of what the taxation... Um, you know what the tax dollars go to because i believe the tax dollars go to like minority groups or minority marijuana businesses um to fund that not just marijuana businesses specifically minority marijuana specifically yes um, yeah we got to get this black uh and brown marijuana business so it's literally like a a racial requirement to get this yeah yeah because because the idea behind a lot of this is that um black and brown people have been targeted by uh, marijuana uh, laws in the past, because apparently not one white person has had any <laughs> issues due to <laughs> marijuana law. Not one. Not one. Give me one example of yeah, but, but one find of me those someone, Find people. me someone rich and famous who also got in trouble. Well, oh, Kyle, wait. oh <laughs> that would never happen. It'd always Kyle's be a some poor nobody a you've never heard of. Yeah, you're a Neanderthal. We're, yeah, we're they rest- go after the, ne- the, the talls. The Neanderthals. <laughs> they, they, they need um, special provisions in that bill for those of us with Neanderthals. So Kyle's exactly Maybe right. There are two Republicans, Cynthia Loomis and Rand Paul, who are open to descheduling marijuana. I guess that's legalizing descheduling. Dude, they can't even get the bill to like fix the banking through. <laughs> but they balked at tax and racial equity pr- provisions. Provisions. Yeah. So Loomis, haven't even heard of tax that. and racial yeah. equity provisions like see, the see like, like they just tried to get the banking bill through that would allow for like, you know, banks to be able to handle like marijuana businesses, deposits and and okay. uh, and such. So they, they can run a business and not worry about any sort of federal interference that didn't make it through the Senate. Like, like they can't get that going. Can't get it co-sponsored or whatever. I'm not I don't remember. <laughs> But um, most of my knowledge about how uh, the fucking Congress works comes from that fucking cartoon with the little bill that dances. It's a good cartoon. I'm just a bill or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, if I, I, I do yeah. feel like the Democrats who do everything fucking wrong, in my opinion, are doing this right. This is a popular issue. Most people want this. Be the pot party. Your dumbass is a... People who don't like guns, it's the ninth most important thing to them. People who do like guns, number one. This is they can there's they can be single issue voters. They're pro gun. The people who are against guns are more pro health care or fuck the rich or whatever, you know, than they are anti gun. Yeah. I saw um, uh, my buddy thing. uh Democrats are on the popular side of this. They should twist that knife. My buddy Eric, you know, Iraq veteran eight 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 eight. Uh so I happened to catch one of his tweets the other day and it was like we need a politician who isn't some 70 or 80 year old fuddy buddy stuck in the 70s who thinks marijuana is evil, who can support gun gun rights and has some common sense. It's like, how is that so hard to find? And yeah. It's, like, paid it's funny stuff. you said that. The, like, they literally said, I think it was the Alaskan guy, but I need to see it again. We're in the middle of an opioid emide- epidemic. We can't legalize pot. It's a gateway drug to opiates. Huh. I mean, that's so true. I've had <laughs> all, the, I, I, all the evidence I, of that. I've never even women. wanted an opiate. You know why? Because I got weed, motherfucker. <laughs> I've got weed. Like, when they took my weed away, I was like, well, it's time to get some dental work now. You know why? They're going to hook me up with some Tylenol 3. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, was I, was, I was getting that. elective dental work, so they would hook me up with something to take the edge off. I would way rather do uh, acid than Vicodin than all the Vicodin in the world. And I love them both, but uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, if I had my druthers, I'd do them both at the same time. That's <laughs> isn't acid a bad time and confusing and hallucinogen and like no, that's all that's all horse shit. Uh, it just makes you it 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 honestly, if you're doing it with a bunch of people, uh, just okay. like one hit, you will have it will be like a uh, you will have the funniest night of your life like everything that everybody says is hilarious you will gut laugh from deeper than you've ever laughed before uh the hallucinations there is there is mild visual hallucinations like if you look at stucco or if you look at anything that has like a pattern to it um you know like a random pattern or anything like that like a moving blanket which i'm looking at right now um but but there's no like all of the all of the hollywood shit like people's faces are melting off 
Um, I, I don't. I think it's a bunch of people who like wanted to look cool. Like they did a little bit of drugs, or maybe they didn't even do it and just made it up. Like they were drinking eight hundred proof beer. Isn't yeah? Is no acid and LSD are they different? They're different things. Or same, thing. Thing. same thing. Same thing. LSD, the, LSD yeah, is like, the one yeah. where like you really need a babysitter, a sober person to make sure that you don't make terrible decisions, right? I don't think so. I mean, okay. I uh, can function fine. I, I, I think what you, you just, really need is like a planned environment. Like, like you wouldn't want to be like, all right, busy day at the office today. I got my proof case, my hit of acid, and my coffee. All right, let's get to it. A lot of big decisions to make today. The boardroom is going to be counting on us. Like, like it's more guys- of like, all right, I've got dinner planned. I got, I got, I got microwave dinners. I got my my two best friends here. We got the lights turned down. We're gonna watch these movies. Like, there's a little music in the background. The phone is turned off. Let's do some acid. It's 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 more like that. Because I, I, I've done mushrooms a couple times. And like with that, I don't know how that compares to LSD. I know, I, I guess there's some Mushrooms, more. I'm on my ass. I'm like, I'm like I can't function. I got to sit. I, I'm, it's like super weed for me. Oh, um, the first time I took them, I just had pretty colors, you know. And then the second time I had like actual visual hallucinations where like things were stretching and um, like perspective was being like altered. Breathing. Yeah. I don't remember any breathing issues other than when I passed out, but I no, think that's like, just because I had the panic that, attack. Like, that objects will breathe at you. Like, oh, I don't remember anything like that. Um, colors were incredibly vibrant, though, which was, like, really nice. I mean, we were talking to our friend the other day who has the extreme color blindness, and I was like, I don't know anything about color blindness, but I wonder, like, what he would see if he was on a fat dose of mushrooms. He, like, he sees, like, like um, the movie flashback scene version of reality yeah like like, like when the protagonist is like before they had color he's in mm-hmm. like he's he sees like the first five minutes of x-men first class right? yeah they've drug like, like they've, they've slid the slider all the way to the left and it's like tans and grays or something like that like like he can't see any of the colors essentially the way he described it yeah that would suck just seeing everything in gray scale yeah, yeah. I, I, I felt like I was a little mean to him, and, 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 it, and he didn't laugh at my joke about how I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out later and just enjoy all the beautiful colors. You guys ever do that? And he just sat there like stony face, and I was like, well, god damn, man. I didn't mean to be mean. <laughs> oh, Pete Bobbity doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did either. But but uh, but yeah, I felt bad. I, w- I, I wish he'd get those glasses. I almost want to help him get them. He was like, oh, they're so expensive. I was like, how much? $600. And it's just like... Oh, that's not too come to on see? for colors. Maybe yeah. we uh maybe we save up Bobby, you know? Like like I know, I know you like your supplements. I, I you're probably spending that every couple me- months on your your supplements and stuff. Um goodness, I'd want to see you colors. You make all your money back because all you have to do is make some overly dramatic YouTube video with sad music of you crying. <laughs> and yeah, we'll promote it. Yeah. You know what? How about all of us just make that video? I, I have. I've <laughs> we'll never pretend to be colorblind. <laughs> I'll just pretend yeah. to be colorblind. What if? What if you? Racist. What if you did that, but then you suddenly became very racist? Now that you could tell the difference, and that was the video. <laughs> <laughs> you put on the glasses and then started going on a rant about all the other colors of yeah. people. Unbeknownst to me, this guy's brown and this guy's yellow. And- <laughs> I always wondered why my neighbor was such a douchebag. Now I know. <laughs> well, like, the, you're, you're like these. You're like, like, TV and it shows you crying and then it pans and you're watching Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> Just a black and white movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. We should all fake being colorblind for the clout. Too late now. <laughs> Too late now. You know uh, you should look- move, uh, uh, you should move to LA with your uh, with your weed problems. Oh babe. yeah, I love the taxes there. That that sounds like a great idea. Let's oh, let's yeah. go somewhere where we get taxed at like a 45% rate on and at so every cute. scale. Um, how yeah. about how about like any other place except for New York and the world? Um, I would <laughs> I would rather I would rather hang myself than move to fucking LA. Um, uh, right now I'm probably moving to Colorado, but like shit, I, like like why not go to Vegas and avoid like don't they have no state income tax there? Like, like they do. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you live in a goddamn desert, but I like to play cards, and they got legal weed. You go outside, they got legal prostitution, which isn't really my thing, but I think it's cool that it's there. Um, or, or you could go all the way up to Oregon, where they've decriminalized every fucking drug that you can think of, and they have Indian casinos. I, that's a reoccurring theme to me. I like to gamble. I like to play poker. 
um, or, or fucking, there, there's lots of places. Any of the places that have medical marijuana and also have like very low taxes, especially like the places that have no state income tax, like mm. that's much more advantageous for me, much more attractive of, of a destination for me than LA. I didn't, li- I've never liked LA, man. I don't even know if it's true. You have the correct. You have the correct response. I was bringing. I was saying it because they they did this wonderful thing in LA, um, where they require they legalize weed. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can have a business on it. But in order to get a license for your business, whatever business it is, growing, cultivating, testing, selling, uh, they're only giving out a certain number of licenses, like a taxi cab medallion. Mm-hmm. And the first people in line are people who've been to prison for ten years on weed crimes. So uh, they're like, only did the two months. Well, they, it goes down. And once they run oh. out of guys in 10 years, so they've got, so they set up this mate. Now you think, oh, isn't that equitable? Isn't that wonderful? They're giving something back to the community. But it turns <laughs> out, it turns out that just because you went to prison for these crimes doesn't mean you know how to run a business and that you're still a criminal, that you're yeah. still like basically a criminal. So they've, all of our, like our entire weed landscape in LA, in like the Los Angeles area. Shady as fuck. Is, it's shady as fuck. It's full of people who are always trying. Like, okay, well, that's that's a nice business, but how can we squeeze a little more? How, is there anything yeah. illegal we could do? You want a hand Just- job? Will you will you dope? <laughs> <laughs> so there's like a sub market of guys trying to sell just their convictions to you, so you can have a oh. business that has them as a 51 percent partner because they've been in prison for 10 years. All right, anybody um, out there in LA who's uh, interested in getting this started, I yeah. will. I will jump on board, partner with you. I will, I will uh, start a temporary residence there, which you will pay for, and and uh, just let me know if you want to skip ahead in that line. We'll be dude, partners on the marijuana business that you do everything for. There's a real That's business great. opportunity here. You know, I, we used to do that with um, black owned businesses when I worked in construction. So here's what would happen: the states would put out contracts, and the contracts could only be awarded to. I think it was black owned businesses or maybe it was minority owned is how they phrased it. Minority owned businesses. So what these minority owned businesses would do is nothing. They would just take 5% of the profits and be like the front man. And then some other business would do it all behind the scenes and they just sort of skimmed it off the top. And, uh, I, I remember it. I was like, man, we buy a lot of stuff from this company. And they're like, yeah, we don't add, they don't do anything. They just add 5%. They're the, the Tony price. Sopranos I, I, of I the operation. This, I've seen this firsthand of, yeah. of like special like Me black too. owned business, business, yeah, like small business loans and things where it's like, all right, well, I'm talking to my black friend and he applied for the loan and he owns 51% of the business and I run it. And, and he kind of just. This sounds like the HUD scam that Tony Soprano did where <laughs> they have like the black uh, doctor apply for the loan to buy the low income housing and you get like the government loan because you're you're turning low income housing into minority neighborhood like housing and then you default on the loans after you've gutted the houses <laughs> and they just all chop up the money. Uh, this sounds a lot like that. It, so I don't want to do anything mob related, but yeah, if anybody <laughs> wants a legitimate business that involves someone who's done hard time uh, for uh, for for marijuana crimes, yeah, I would absolutely jump on board with you as long as yeah. it's uh, you know. Kyle will do legal. nothing except I will skim do absolutely profits. nothing except for <laughs> skim profits and be there to sign paperwork. Yeah, Ooh, perfect. Photo After wild. you fax it to my real home in another state. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guaranteed turnaround time less than three weeks. I mean, instantaneous. I get, I get, I get on the ball. You fax me something, you're getting it right fuck back. I don't, I don't like people who take a long time to reply to emails. Okay. I'll say this about my probation officer, fucking professional. I love that dude. When, when, when I wanted to go gambling at the casino, I, I like, I, I typed this email and I was like, hey, it seems like a dumb question. Um, can I go gamble in another state for a few days, even though I'm on probation? It was 90 seconds later when I got the reply. Absolutely. Which casino? Where will you be staying? And I'm just like, Harris Cherokee Casino, Cherokee, North Carolina. I'm staying at the resort. I got a, I got a suite. Have fun. <laughs> it's just like, mm. like, 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 perfect. I love that. And he's clearly getting them on his phone, just like anybody who's a goddamn professional should. Yeah. I get my emails on my phone, and you get replied back to them within seconds. You send me a WhatsApp, a text, a, a, anything. You get a fucking response. I was good that way. If he's awake, he replies. I insta-reply to everything. Sometimes he's asleep when people would be awake. 
Yeah. All right. yeah. You can't count on me to be awake at noon. All right. <laughs> but if I'm awake, but but hey, if it's 4 a.m. and you've got a question, you're probably going to get an answer. That's This is 100% true. Yeah, you're very responsive. But sometimes those 3 p.m. messages out like a light. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, get nothing from you. <laughs> I, I value heavily a place that has blue skies, like sunshine. That's one of the things I look at. I like you look at taxes and, you know, someone else might be looking at school systems or whatever, but I, blue skies means a lot to me. Yeah. If, 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 if I could find a place that was like 30 days of night, that vampire movie, like, like if I could go to like, like Juneau, Alaska or something where there's like three months of darkness a year, I'd pick that. Honestly, oh, Alaska's on the list. I'm going to look into what kind of fucking internet Alaska has. Oh, They're wow. on the list now. Okay, It's like 90% I, men, though. Isn't it? Alaska? Yeah, I perfect. Could, okay, Alaska's off the list. But, <laughs> yeah, but I do like it dark. I do like it dark. Um, like, like, like every room in my house that I spend any significant amount of time in it has blackout curtains. There's blackout curtains there. There's blackout curtains in my bedroom. I, I like waking up and not knowing if it's noon or midnight. I love it. I love it. That is part of my recipe for depression. Like if you wanted to yeah. get me depressed, part of it would be keeping me in blacked out rooms. We, we, I'm playing this game on hard mode, Woody. Okay, okay. okay, okay. You I, 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 want, I want depression to try to creep into my life on a daily basis. <laughs> you bring it. So that I can stomp it out. And okay. just and, and that's my little victory every day. Just getting out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and we See, get that done do by 4 p.m. You to feel accomplished. I make it out of bed. We're, whoo, we did it again. Uh, we did it again, boys. <laughs> that's like a little hobby that you have with yourself, making yourself depressed, draining yeah. your serotonin. Yeah. Just like okay. just like the, the hobby I have where I tie nooses and hang them in my house occasionally. I love that. <laughs> I think of it as arts and crafts. Uh, uh, I guess that could be perceived as some sort of weird racist joke. It's not. That, that was supposed to be a suicide joke. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I took it as suicide. You know who's yeah, looking good, hot good. lately? He's looking, <laughs> he's looking good. Who? Melinda Gates. I never realized oh. how good looking this woman was until she oh, got single. She's looking like she's looking like 30, 40 billion she's hot. Looking like a snack, in, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess they didn't give any dirt. They're being classy about it, but they've been married or she and Bill Gates have been married for twenty seven years. And uh, they did a statement. After a great deal of thought and a lot of work on our relationship, we've made the decision to end our marriage. And that's about as good as it gets. So what happens to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Do they just keep partnering on that? I bet they keep partnering on it. It, it seems like the sort of thing that they would just keep, keep going um, because it does seem like clearly they're not trying to make money, I don't think. It seems like they're just trying to do good. They seem like Good doers, do gooders, do gooders. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they say good doers? That's better. It Who's microchip? Yeah, I'd rather be a idea. good doer than a do gooder. I agree. I'm, you know, I never thought about it, but you, I'm on yeah. team. Good um, doer. I, speaking of good doers, I want to watch that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on that animated show you've been trying to get me to watch tonight, the Invincible thing on Amazon. Yes. I've yeah. been, I, I, I put it on my watch list. It's, it's queued up in there in the other room. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out. You this told. is a non-spoiler, but they do something stylistically that I think is cool. Uh, so the guy's name is Invincible, and in the intro, it's just a short little flash screen that says Invincible on it, and they work Invincible into a second into a sentence i meant to say so you know you're watching the show and a various amount of time can go in like it it might be 90 seconds into the show it might be nine minutes into the show and then they hit you with the title they're like yeah you know like this fucking tortoise on the ground is and then bam the invincible, invincible. title screen hits you and i'm like God, you fuckers got style I, I like what you're doing here you know what i miss like it, and it seems like it's been so long that it's not even a thing anymore is one punch man Ooh. Yeah, it's been Me so too. long. Like, like, so what happened? It uh, as far as I know is they switched animation studios last year, and it was clearly worse animation. But I was still like, all right, I, I do like this. And if I remember correctly, that shit. And I don't mean last year. I mean like two years ago, maybe. But it ended on this cliffhanger, where like he was about to go fight another big bad, and like, it's it seems like it's been two and a half years since I've been waiting on him to go do this thing. I'm about to like start reading the. 
is it manga? Is is that what it's called? Like they've got so many fucking different Japanese names for different kinds of fucking mm. animated comic books. Why can't they just all call them all comic books, whether it's <laughs> porn or whatever? Yeah, I was. Uh, I think I read. I broke down and read the uh, plot synopses for the next season. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. Season, yeah, uh, in that second season, the fight at the the monster fight at the like whatever that wrestling thing was. Do you remember that? It seemed to last for like six episodes, and I kind of got a little bored and just started to read ahead. But it does seem like it's been forever. So that show. It's been for first season was incredible. Like they need to get on their shit. Like like. In America, like money fucking takes over. And whenever you've got some like animators who are dragging ass, they're like, look, what size check do we need to write you so that we get a fucking season of this every year? But that's what they did to like fucking uh, Dan Harmon so that we get like Rick and Morty every year now. And it's happening. Like, like Rick and Morty is coming out next month. And the season after that will be coming out next year. And do you know again, how much him to get that going? It's it's a massive deal. It was like a hundred million dollar plus deal that involves many seasons of Rick and Morty. I mean, Rick and Morty's a good show, but a hundred million dollars good? No. Let me That's see exactly what it was. I mean, it must be way more popular than we even realize. Yeah. To for a hundred million dollar deal. God, that's so awesome. I wish I had a hundred million dollars. So they they were new for 70 ass. episodes. Uh, back in 2018, I'm trying to find like the size of the deal. Um, if it's not public, whatever. That's just way more than I would have guessed for Rick and Morty. Is, is it through Hulu now? No, their you know, their show so they, opposites is through Hulu. That shows Cartoon weird. Network. Are or they doing that? this? Thing where they all move right. like uh, t popular shows around to all the subscription networks so you have to move your subscription like south park i used to get on hulu but then now it's hbo max so i yeah. gotta move over there is that the scam with these guys <laughs> now? They do it, but they do that like net or literally seinfeld was on netflix like five years ago and then it was on hulu and then yeah. they took it off, and then they put it back on hulu and then they took it off again and now it's back on hulu again and I think that, like when they initially removed Seinfeld from Hulu, they saw way more cancellations than they thought they would, and so they put him back on there. But like the the deal to get Seinfeld on Hulu was so, some outrageous sum of money. Like Friends and Seinfeld, the IP there is worth so fucking much. Maybe Friends is even bigger. I don't know. Maybe Friends is the deal I'm thinking of. Woody, you have a look in your eye. Like Seinfeld's big too. I remember Jerry Seinfeld became nearly a billionaire. I think Justin Rowland gets like four million an episode, and they've agreed to seventy more episodes. It's something like that. I looked up One Punch Man, so there was a four-year gap between seasons one and two, and it was because they changed production studios. Yeah. Uh, season three isn't coming out until twenty twenty-two or three, so it's not oh. even this year, and it's yeah. May, and uh, it seems to be because they're going to change productions again because people again. didn't like the animation. It was bad. It was noticeably worse and like mm. affected the show. Um, like, like, and, and like the internet's so weird about that show. Like I see so many people who like fantasize about fucking that little green girl. And it's like, the, it's, she's like a green haired, super strong. Like she's like the second strongest hero or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I don't even remember everybody's names. It's been so long since the show's been like relevant and in my little sphere of influence or whatever. How old is this green girl supposed to be? Is she like a thousand? So I think she has vampire. green hair. Yeah, she's green hair. Probably. Yeah. Her. and she like flies. Yeah, yeah she got. They didn't even want to fuck her. The animation was so bad. Yeah, I see lots of at? nude like drawings of her and and like it, she looks her. twelve years old in the pictures I'm looking at, or maybe not in the 16. pictures I've seen. She is well developed. She looks like it's <laughs> Well, I don't know, because there's clearly different artists here. This one, she looks like a young girl. This person's iteration looks like an adult woman with enormous breasts. <laughs> you know, Did you look her I'm up on Bing, down, Taylor? <laughs> I am, in fairness, now that I'm scrolling down the images, most of these seem to be an adult woman with big boobs. No, yeah. not what your kids do. Yeah, she's a child whose superhero is enormous tits. <laughs> <laughs> well, but in this one, the big-titted lady is talking to... Oh, no, wait. Uh... A purple-haired woman with big tits is talking to the green-haired woman. Yeah, okay. her sister is like also a superhero, if I remember correctly, and they're both hot. This she show looks is stupid. all different ages. You, you have never seen it? 
Uh, I watched one episode when you recommended it like four years ago, and I got to the point where they got where he fought the lobster monster, and I got past that, and I was like, I don't think this is my jam. And oh, it gets infinitely better after the lobster monster. That's you like how he gets his powers. Pilot? Yeah, I watched part of the pilot, and then I I, I love I, his workout program. Well, I did. But, I thought the workout program was the funniest part. I enjoyed where he's like 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, run 10 miles, five no kilometers air, today, no air conditioning or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like some, not- someone at they keep they keep asking him like, dude, because he's he's in a world where superheroes exist and they have this very specific ranking um, system for them, and like there is like there are like Superman level characters in here, and then there's him. And he's so overpowered that like no one can even comprehend it. But occasionally someone will. They'll be like, they'll actually see him do something. They'll see him like lift a planet or like punch a building down or like or, or just take out the biggest, baddest monster like with a thump. And they'll be and they'll, they're just like, dude, just tell me. Please tell me your secret. He's like, All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> but it's hard. And you're not gonna want to do it. I'll do anything. I'll sell my soul. I'll murder my family. I'll eat babies all day and all night. All right, I'll tell you. I do a hundred push-ups a day, a hundred sit-ups a day, <laughs> and I run five kilometers a day. And and no air conditioning in the summer, <laughs> and no heat in the winter. And they're like, that's not even a very strenuous physical <laughs> workout program. That's like. That's like medium level. Like, 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 yeah, that's I'll, what like every college athlete would laugh at that. Like, like, like any real athlete would laugh at that. Like, like see, I, all I'm of like, us could do that. Like, like it's, it's nonsense. Like, Kyle, what I do like, I'll give this show a chance. I'll give it. I was more shitting on it because I can tell you guys liked it. But what's fun like, and what I, would be I'd a like cool Kyle. YouTube series, it, and I've seen it done before, is people who go on that program and do a do a thirty day before and after, and it's very effective at like trimming somebody down because running five k a day is the hard part. That's the part that would break me down. I, I feel like if I did a hundred push ups and sit ups every day, at the end of the thirty days, I'd be better at it. But I ran a mile a day for a month, and uh, parts of me got better at it, but parts of me just like degraded. Like, can I do it on an elliptical? To, to, to keep my knees safe. That was the part that degraded. I have one bone in particular with like plates and screws in it. And I don't feel it all the time. But when I pounded on it every day, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm very aware of my tibia or fibia. It's one of those. Yeah, I got my dad on the elliptical. Um, I, I got I, he's uh, he's lost uh, 37 pounds, I think. Nice. Wow. And, That's uh, huge. And, and uh, he's looking to lose, I think, 20 more. And, uh, and uh, the pandemic was just... He's like, I just didn't do anything. I just gained too much weight. So he's uh he's been losing weight, and uh, and I got him on the uh, the elliptical. So he's he's been he's I think he's starting like today with the elliptical part of things. I have a theory. Oh, I almost forgot. He's got a he told me a great date story the other day. Go, go ahead. I think you had a thing. It was real quick on the pandemic yeah. weight gain. I think it's partly not doing anything, but mostly living next to the pantry. People are just and not indoors more. Like there's no one to judge you. Oh, that could be too. That could be me. But for me, like if I spend all my time in the living room, which is just next to our pantry, that's a recipe for gaining weight. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Um, he, so uh, we were talking about Tinder and, you know, Bumble and all the various dating sites the other day. And he's like, I matched with this lady the other day. And you know how it is. She had those pictures that were from the shoulder up. <laughs> And um, I don't know how many times I'm going to bite that hook and get reeled <laughs> in, but. Uh, Did you so, encounter this girl in real life? Yeah. So, uh, so I, you know, we, we go and we meet and uh, she gets out of her car and she slides into mine. And I look and Kyle, have you ever seen Hellboy? And I'm like, yeah, I, I've seen Hellboy. He's like, you know how he's got that one arm that's just enormous. And then, I mean, he's a big man all the way around, but the one arm is just cartoonishly big. Yeah. He's like, well, this woman had a Hellboy arm. <laughs> <laughs> one of her arms was so like swollen with fat that it just ballooned down to the wrist. And when the wrist met the arm, it looked like he wrapped a rubber band around it <laughs> three times over and there was a crease. And the hand was inflated like you'd 
blown up a rubber glove, and the arm looked like if you poked it with a needle, it would pop. Was the other arm normal, though? <laughs> the other arm was normal, though. How bizarre. Like, as normal as a big fat woman's arm can be, that is. But then she had that big hellboy arm that she just slapped on my center console and I was trying to stay away from it. Now, <laughs> jack, jack me off with the other hand. <laughs> like, I, I was like, well, what kind of date had you planned? He's like, well, we were just going to, we never met before. So we were just going to run well, some I errands. Trying to dicker. <laughs> trying to <laughs> dicker. <laughs> like, like they were going to run some errands and like, and, and then go get some dinner and then go from there. So he, he was like, well, like I was running, gonna, I was like, "Hey, I, I'm going to go to Home Depot this afternoon. That it's near where you live. You could accompany me there. I'm buying flowers for my garden. We could go back to my house. We could plant some flowers and do a little gardening, and then we'll have some dinner. That was kind of the evening's plan." He's like, "Kyle, she got out of my car, my truck, and she could barely walk. She was shuffling." She was shuffling into wow. the Home Depot, and he's like, "I took about five steps, and I said, you know what?" change my mind i don't think i want those flowers after all let's uh let's just go get something to eat he's like so i took her to arby's i got her a... <laughs> you couldn't even take her to a good fast food place no I, I, i'm gonna go the other direction arby's this is a golden corral woman this is a buffet oh. chick he has here he didn't recognize what he sit had. down if you take her to golden corral she can eat while you drive her back to your car if you take her to arby's it's i'm just he's trying a... i'm a people pleaser kyle no, I put the pieces together. It's just like I would feel almost too. I would feel so bad. Like, so because she knows the score. She knows what's up. She knows her way around a golden corral. All you can eat buffet. Well, all also, I know she, is she posted the misleading photos that entrapped him in that scenario. So for that reason, I, I decree that he is blameless. Well, he got her a big beef and cheddar, <laughs> took her back to her car and he called it a day. Just and Woody has linked a picture here of what Hellboy Arm Syndrome looks like. That's, <laughs> that's the medical uh, 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 name for Wait, it. Wait, Woody, what is this called? It's All called right. Hellboy Arm uh, uh, <laughs> Syndrome. She oh, has man. lymphedema. I instantly knew what she had when Kyle described the symptom. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what Boogie had in his leg. But Boogie was symmetrical with his lymphedema, I think. Yeah, he, had, sure. it, he, he had, had it everywhere. <laughs> yes, at least both legs. He was, he was eat up with it. She has. <laughs> <laughs> That's a southern uh, way of saying you I mean, got how, it everywhere. <laughs> how does this? Oh, I know. How how does uh how does this happen to a thin person? I don't get it. Oh, she it, was not a thin person. No, it doesn't. this this inflicts mostly fat people. There are some oh, people no, online like this, that don't okay, look well, super fat. This graphic is misleading because that looks like a normal thin. This woman. is drawn. <laughs> this is yeah. And like, do you not watch my six hundred pound life every day? Is that? Oh, not I a... watch it intermittently, and it is it's great. Oh. I also enjoy the show Thousand Pound Sisters, yes. because because it's actually a conservative estimate of their weight. If they were being accurate, it'd be like the thirteen hundred pound sisters, and and the one that weighs eight hundred pounds is so jealous of that svelte five fifty one that it's oh. hilarious. Where she's like. And and Christy's ever since we were kids, she was always the one getting getting attention from the boys, and I never liked that. And it's like that's the one who's so overweight that there is a shelf on her forehead that has come yeah. out. That's the it's the like, Neanderthal. It's the her. Neanderthal it's forehead, but it's not it's not stiff bone. It's fat. It's like you could press into it, and you could write your name in cursive on her forehead, and it would stick for a Beautiful. few seconds. Sometimes people get this who are thin. Uh, it can be a side effect of cancer treatment, and it damages their lymphatic system, so they don't drain properly. So I guess some bumps. people are unfairly stricken with this, and some get it as a punishment for eating too much. Yeah, God, God sends it as a, a, you know, a malady for one of the seven deadly sins, gluttony. That sounds sciencey. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it sounds sciencey because <laughs> I invoked God, right? <laughs> Kyle, does your dad have a plan now for if a woman gets out of her car and the shocks like sigh or say <laughs> hallelujah? Does he just uh, pedal it? Like, don't he's turn a lot the engine nicer off. Than me. I'll I just remembered I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a car with the Dodge trucks. You can get the air suspension. How fucking funny would it be if he pumped it up when she said it? <laughs> you hear the air compressor <laughs> kick on. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> climb up in. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it. <laughs> What's the problem? I'm out of here. 
Uh, I, I left my stepladder at home. Uh, I like your way more. Mine was as a reaction to her making the suspension sag. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Beef it up a little bit. Yeah. Hey, have but... you seen the video of that guy, um, the failed heist video where that dude is driving that van? Yes. Like, like, he's, like he's out of fucking Fast and the Furious. He looks like a driving instructor from high school. He looks super nerdy. He looks like the sniper come alongside from too. Like, oh, I saw this. Yeah. And and he, then, he's just like, and you and you see so it's this like yeah the, the the skinny white guy is like doing the driving and then there's the this like black soldier next to him and it is so funny to watch that guy's face because he is he is he is not down or not trained for whatever is happening <laughs> and this other guy is and at one point the the guy in the passenger seat like tries to hand the driver his gun and the driver's like what I know. I can't, I'm, no, I'm no. trying to the black, the black guy gets out his handgun, and the white guy's like, no, no, no. Get the AR-15. And, like, hands it the big gun. And he's like, all right, all right, Ben. And he's just like, he's fast and the furious in it. And they, like, try to, like, make a roadblock. And he, and they get out with guns. He drives straight through them. Not They have to, like, dive out of the way. He's totally willing to run these people down on the interstate. It's I love that man. I would love to talk to him. What a badass. Yeah. Did you gather what country it was? It looks like Mexico to me. Okay. Yeah, I interpret gonna, it as farther south, but I'm not sure. I'm trying to find the video of it. I don't know. Oh, I've got it right called, here. But it's it's really neat. You can't but you can't really tell because you can't see the surrounding area where he's turned. Oh. Is there a camera on the front of his his car also? Yeah. yeah I you get both angles seen, here. Oh, I've only seen the version that showed the uh the front camera. I'm sure we can't watch this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it on my own. It's only 45 <laughs> seconds. That's really Yeah, it's weird. actually on, a, I know these guys. This is a Funker, a Funker 530. Um, these guys have filmed for me before. Um, they, they've been to my house. Uh, real nice guys. They're from Canada. And uh, and they do a lot of this like combat and veteran footage, uh, YouTube stuff. I don't know how they monetize it. Um, what country are they in as this is happening? Is this the US? Oh, shit. I just saw the part Kyle was talking about. He aimed for them. There, there's like a roadblock, and two lanes are open, and he swerves towards the bad guys to run them down with his truck. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and he's just like, "Oh, really? Roadblocking me, eh? Have some of this, boys!" And he tries to run them down. It's great. Yeah, he's clearly very well trained in the. The black guy looks so scared. Yeah, the, the black guy is like day one, and then he like hits the ranger on purpose. Clearly, as it tries to come by him, it like like I don't know what he's got in that truck that's so valuable cash. to him. Is it cash? Yeah, this is a th someone's trying to rob them, right? That's um, what I thought, but I didn't know what he yeah. had. Are they in like a Brinks truck kind of thing? I think I thought so. That's my guess. How much yeah. money do they have in those Brinks trucks? Like, I how much do you think on a couple hundred thousand millions? Couple hundred it, thousand, I would guess. Is it like it, it depends, like what day it is, right, and what they're up to that day. Like, like they could be fulfilling like a special order, like, 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 they, yeah. like, like maybe a bank is like, oh, we need a half a million dollars cash to do this transaction we're doing, and like it's added to the regular thing where they they're they're stopping by bank after bank after bank, picking up deposits, and if you get them at the end of their route, like maybe they've got close to a million dollars cash in there. Bro, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know how it. But like people put way. I don't more think we're supposed to know. They're in their like safety deposit boxes. So if they're moving like that content around, it could be jewels and things. I, well, they I, need I, cash I, to like do stimulus. Like if how you, do you go, rob a Brinks truck, do, do people ever get away with robbing like a Brinks truck? I know, you, you would think you'd see that the on the thing, news occasionally. I think I think that stuff happens, and they don't put it on the news on purpose. Yeah, you think like, I made like, my money at a Minecraft website? There's <laughs> 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 about three rusted out Brinks trucks. <laughs> it's like, I hope they buy this Minecraft shit. <laughs> Why did you build your house in uh, Nazi gold? <laughs> well, They've got Woody in an interrogation room, bright lights on him. How do you tame a horse in Minecraft? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you give them apples. <laughs> I think you give them apples. Yeah, you'd be fucked. You couldn't Slapping say Slapping you with a phone book. <laughs> a bag of oranges. <laughs> fucking you up. Because, <sighs> I mean, like, I've seen the people. I assume the Brinks truck, and I say Brinks because that's the brand, or the company that comes to mind, but I yeah. imagine those trucks have to be doing all the heavy lifting with technology because I've seen the individuals carrying the bags of money out and it's like that's just 
that's a blimpy employee you know yeah. like you know they or at least a couple i've seen that did not look like the kind of people you'd be afraid to rob have you ever so, seen the town yeah with uh ben affleck, ben affleck. And, uh, and uh hawkeye yeah the town's a very good movie it's a great movie it's about some guys who rob brinks trucks yeah, it's a great movie. When they it's wear those, funny. is that the one where they wear the nun masks when they're yeah, when something they're like robbing? that. I think they that wear different was, masks. Yeah. I like that movie so much that it, you know, I didn't even mind that Ben Affleck was in it. He's good in it. I think Ben Affleck's a good actor when he wants to be. Like he can turn it on. I mean, the way he, I just remember like him actively taking me out of Goodwill Hunting when I saw it for the first time. Oh, because he was that's just where, that's one of his better Matt. roles in my opinion. I, just, I, think I didn't think he was good. I thought Matt Damon and and Robin Williams. Oh, they were, they were, elevated. They were so, stealing the show, and yeah. and every time Matt Damon and and was around Ben Affleck, it was like, all right, get, get back to the Matt Damon story. Uh, and then and then in Casey Affleck's in it too. Like they they get the whole crew in there. Casey Affleck is it? Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't recognize him. Now that you say it, yeah, Casey is the better actor. I is can't he? picture his face. He it's. Young he's ben one Affleck's of the boys face. in the crew. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the boys in the crew. They, he helps fix up that shit box car for Matt Damon at the end. <sighs> How about another, uh, yeah. Brinks robbery movie called Groundhog's Day. You guys know. Oh, he's yeah. Like, he just walks up, grabs the money, and turns around and walks away because he knows the timing. That's how to do it. Yeah, you just have to. That's, you ever, right. that's how you do it. That's how you fucking do it. You just I, be like Bill Murray. Like, he just did a superpower a, where you, know, you get to live an the infinite same time day. loop type scenario. And have you guys ever seen the deleted scenes of the from Groundhog's Day with all the no. suicides? Yeah, um, the suicides in the pool game. What, uh, the, what is it? It gets it, it gets a little dark. It's it definitely dark. darker. That, but they're uh, they're worth watching. But wow, they would have made the movie uh, crappy. Oh. Yeah, well, well, like the thing is, like Bill Murray gets wet. So you you if you had to guess, Taylor, how long do you think Bill Murray was in that loop? Uh, Based on what's on screen, twelve thousand days. Twelve thousand days. I'm saying that because I saw some bullshit like behind the scenes thing where it was oh. way more time than is it all realistic. So yeah, 32 it's, years. It's all, I want to play yeah. Kyle's game. Like I, I cuz if you take based away the, the skills screen, he yeah. developed, like based on the screen, it seems like 28 days or something like that, you know, like a real yeah, short amount exactly. of time. But he mastered the piano if I recall, mm -hmm. and he may have become a magician. The ice cha the chainsaw oh, ice sculpting. The chainsaw yep. ice sculpting. French. French <laughs> I forgot that. Um, French poetry even. Like, like, not even just French, but he had memorized all that French poetry that he just, like, so rambles off to her. If you if you look into that stuff, then there's this implication that it was years and years of training. So, shitty, but even then, it seems like six years. It comes to almost 34 years. Oh. Well, what's the total number of days? It's, I, I believe it's exactly what you said. It's, it's 12,395 days. Damn, the things you remember... I don't yeah. remember some of my great aunt's names. How did they calculate that? Like, couldn't he have done two things in a day? Piano and French? It, it, was, it was the same kind of way they calculate, like, fantasy things, where it's like, how hot is a lightsaber? A bajillion degrees. <laughs> like, it's just some guy making it up. How long was he in there? Oh, well, it's more interesting if I goose this. Uh, 12,000 days. <laughs> like, yeah. That can Taylor, there's some real science that goes into those infographics. Don't knock those. You think so? <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> that's what I do. That's my <laughs> actual job. <laughs> making making uh, lightsaber heat infographics. Exactly the one you're talking about, yeah. Well, the idea uh, was it takes like <laughs> it takes like ten years to get to master something. It is is part. But he of only like, plays what, that one song. So what if he only learned that one song on the piano? And I was like, well, well what we're under the impression. I was going to say, how do we know he knows piano? French? He might know enough French, which I could learn in the yeah. day. He's still a scumbag. He just learned enough French for so, that. That one piano he song. He just learned how to kidnap someone. I wonder how many times he fucked that chick, though. Right? If he had 32 years in this loop, he Nancy? must have figured out the sequence to fuck the, the brunette. Yeah. Oh, Rita. Yeah. Yeah, the one that he really liked, right? He really she's liked from, this uh, girl. She's, she's from down here in Georgia. And he learned he a couple things about Andy her, McDowell. remember? Yeah, I always thought she was cool. He's probably trying different sex moves in bed. Like Jerry Seinfeld sex move. You know he raped her at least once. Yeah. I mean, 12,000 days? 
Is it the whole thing a like, scam to have sex with her? Like that's, that's that is testing the limits of consent. The whole thing the is to like period. is to improve himself, right? Like 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 to make him to better himself, mm -hmm. and that's why at the end he like breaks out of it because like he becomes a better person, not just because he can ice sculpt, speak French, play the piano, and he does all those good deeds, but yeah, but but yeah, at, at least ten years is is what it would take, right? To just do most of that stuff like like and because we're under the imp the impression that he didn't just memorize a french poem he learned french and then and then mastered french poetry is it, what is what we're, we're we're what you have to assume there. I thought he just memorized. he didn't just learn to chainsaw sculpt that one thing he mastered chainsaw sculpting you know <laughs> like, like like he did all of those things um no it i, I don't know it on, on one hand clearly I, I think it would play out exactly the way it plays out in the movie. At first, it's incredible fun. It's just like limitless fun of gorging on everything and doing whatever you want. And then after a year, it's just suicide attempt after suicide <laughs> attempt after suicide attempt. Like like he literally kills himself like hundreds and hundreds of times or something. Like all you sorts of wrong ways. Thing. I mean, I definitely like the first few days you spend time like big heists and like figuring out exactly what he did how to rob a bank that would be a ton of fun like i've said before like you know those like thought processes and, and things you walk through in your mind when you're trying to fall asleep or like bored or like those fantasy thoughts for me for many years it's been how would i rob a bank and i still it's just an interesting thing to think about i imagine like robbing a bank and Taylor, all the steps it would take. how would you rob a bank oh i mean it would never go well you go first all the, all the plans that you take are like you you are you immediately come up against like the amount of technology they have now in banks like it's no. not like 19 lemon juice on your face makes you invisible oh yeah lemon <laughs> juice oh my eyes <laughs> you know what do you know what actually what actually makes you invisible um you can make those uh led light glasses that completely spoof fucking security cameras have you seen those in action i, I think not. i That's have cool. yeah um you could, like i saw a guy make them for like 12 dollars, and uh, he shows what you look like on security cameras and your face glows bright white that completely nullifies oh, security but it's just cameras. a normal looking pair of glasses as you're walking yeah. around yeah okay i, I well, don't think it's is it ir light or led is I don't remember exactly what it was. I just I, I saw a Reddit post. I clicked it. I, I watched him make them, and then I saw what it looked like when he was on camera. But here's how I would rob a bank. Um, obviously, we want to wear a mask, right? But yeah, the of problem course. now Cover the problem the problem is you walk into a bank wearing a mask. Someone's gonna call the fucking police because they just saw someone walk into the bank wearing a mask. Yeah. Except for one day of the year, which is Halloween. <laughs> You see a guy walk into the bank with a bag and a mask on any day except for October 31st. You get scared. No, that's nobody watch... walking into the bank with a mask and a bag on the 31st. That's outrageous. We I did it all the time. The as kids. Is... We, we went to the bank to trick or treat. First of all, the bag, pumpkin hey, bag. First of all, the mask. Ass community where you go into the bank to <laughs> trick or treat. Every, we went everywhere. Every local business participates in trick or treating. It's a small town. No. You wear you don't just wear like a fucking like hockey mask or like a ski mask. You put a costume on when you go into the bank to rob it, and you bring your like like people with you who are also robbing it, and you all like walk in with costume? with those pumpkin. <laughs> with those, yeah. yeah, whatever you're gonna dress. <laughs> you dress like Grimace. <laughs> walk in as Batman. It doesn't matter. You know, Kyle, we're and, in a pandemic. Why don't you just wear a mask for COVID and wear sunglasses? See, this is that's normal helpful. Fun that's helpful these days. Yeah, right. Like, like that's that that's that's a new thing, though. Honestly, but. there should be like a spree of bank robberies <laughs> with the mask going on. I, dude, I can see myself going to the bank and like the bump. Oh, oh no, he bumped his mic <laughs> and he turned off. <laughs> yeah, you're muted. <laughs> he turned off. <laughs> he head butted his fucking audio I setup. I can see into myself and then blundering yeah, into the mic. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> that was part of the bit but yeah anyway it, you'd fog up your glasses and wouldn't be able to see anything while you robbed the bank but other than that it's a good plan yeah, <laughs> I, yeah uh, what, what, what was your next step Kyle so you're wearing a mask you got a bag it's Halloween you're the only one in there with the mask and a bag because let's pretend you're in not the town you grew up in you're in a, in a 
I, I go in dressed as like Batman or something, like a full on like high quality costume, or like the Joker, like I did for Halloween a couple years ago. Like let's like wear a costume. Once you huh? get up to the teller, or is that okay. you, you go to the teller, and what do you say? What's your your thing? Um, I think you'd need to little, do a little research because there's only about a hundred thousand dollars behind the counter of like a federal bank, and you really want to like be able to get into like the uh, the vault. Yeah. So like you'd need to know something about that. You'd need to know that someone was coming in and the vault was going to be open, which is like beyond my bank robbing expertise. But if you just want to get out of there with seventy to one hundred and ten thousand dollars, you could just rob the tellers there by passing them a note. Seems like what you should do then is like wait for the bank manager to leave, discern his schedule over time, learn where he lives so you can like drop some threats when you're back there. And then you could can the bank manager even get into the vault? Yeah, they I think so. it, it's, it's, it's on a time. It's on a timer in a lot of places. So like like what you could do, I mean, if you if you if you're just going to be a fucking criminal, then, you know, you could go to the bank manager's house the night before. Yeah, that's the scenario. We're criminals. We're robbing a bank. Like, and I mean, we do it way more than the night before. We figure out his schedule. We figure out his. I mean, his, as someone who's done a little time, I feel like you want to <laughs> minimize like the danger as much the the, ye the potential years as many as possible. So when you add like kidnapping and home invasion and armed robbery to the mix, like you're really spending the rest of your life in prison. Whereas the bank robbery, go big you or go can home. get you, you can get down to like 17, 18 years. You know, you'll be out eventually. But when you start adding assault weapons, kidnapping, and all that other stuff, now you're just never going back home. So you right? wouldn't bring a gun? I wouldn't bring a gun. Not a real So one. what would you do to threat? Oh, you'd bring a fake gun? Yeah, fake gun. Okay. And what would the verbiage be? Give me the fucking money. No, like, you wouldn't want to say anything. You'd want to pass a note. You'd want okay, to draw what as would your notes as possible. I, I circle yes or no. Do you want to go out with me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, see, you can pass that one first. Establish you're insane. And willing to do anything, and then then fire the second. Note. Um, I I don't know. I don't even know if I want to go any farther with the scenario and explaining how to rob a bank. But my thing was always that like Halloween mm -hmm. would be a perfect time because of masks and bags, um, because you could walk right in with a mask and a bag. And then when you left, especially if you were in like a city, you'd blend right in with crowds of people also in masks and bags. Change your costume. Yeah, you could just change the costume. Yeah, he was dressed as. Fucking Christian Bale Batman. And meanwhile, you're switching into fucking... Like, what if you had like a nun Batman? costume? <laughs> you had like a nun costume and then like you can pull that right off and you're something completely different underneath. Like, that looks know. just like him. Uh, no. I like Taylor's he's idea of switching to Adam, Michael Adam Keaton West. Batman afterwards. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> Adam West. Like, it's Michael Keaton. He can't turn his head. That's the Michael <laughs> Keaton Batman. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, the Adam West suit. You can see your fucking... Yeah, he's got the white, <laughs> the white eyebrows drawn on. Yeah, it's Adam West. <laughs> <laughs> um, banks have between bank. 50 and 200 grand so 200 grand would be a big bank to have in I cash bet, I bet that's a lie I bet it's more than that mm. yeah I've always heard 100 behind the, behind the fibbering. counter how much is in the vault like a million more I don't think that I, I just read the headline it, it said something like people think there's money in the vault but there's really not Oh, that's I don't believe that article. I mean, it's Warner yeah. Populous, right? There's some, guy, there's some guy with a top hat and a monocle writing that. Some people think yeah. there are lots of money. There's lots of money in the this vault. This may surprise yeah, bank robbers, but according to FBI data, the average bank robbery yielded only four thousand three hundred thirty dollars. Nah, what? The FBI, that reflects they wouldn't like how little is kept up front with the tellers. Four grand. See, you wouldn't have repeated bank robbers if that was the case. You yeah. just wouldn't. Wow. No, what, because they only have four grand. Of course, they need to repeat. They just the wouldn't risk it again. They would find like people, well, they got they away with it. You'd be you'd do so much better with home invasions if you could only get four thousand dollars. Like you could come into my house. You, <laughs> you just said something you shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, I'm the opposite. You could come into some people's homes <laughs> and you could make it out of there with ten thousand in just a minute or two. You know, <laughs> there's nothing useful in my house. What are you gonna? You know, the most expensive thing in my house, I think, it's my fucking functional trainer. <laughs> it's your camera gear, brother. No, yeah, I don't think it's worth that a, much. You find a couple people just down there. He. <laughs> <laughs> they steal yeah, the functional trader. They earned right. it. You, you just come down there and you're like, if you can steal it, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> your uh, your guns are, are are pretty valuable, and they can be taken out. I, I, I'm not going to list your fucking belongings. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> You know, up on the second floor, third third door to the left, there's that room. You know where the breakaway closet? 
<laughs> it's not to go down that that uh that, that alley but but you know what i'm saying is like there's got to be more than four thousand dollars in a bank in the yeah end. for sure like, like, unless you like are a shitty bank robber who believed them it was saying four grand up front with the tellers that's that's you have to go to the back i guess to get more than that i don't know i feel like if i was a bank teller i would immediately now that they're syndrome. Now, i'd be like we're in this together buddy like come <laughs> on i work for the bank i make four i have bucks. went in to like get like um large amounts of cash before i was buying a vehicle one time and uh we were just going to do the transaction in cash and uh i think i got like eighteen thousand or something like that and they did have that have to go like in the back and like bring like a bag of money out to like get me eighteen thousand dollars i needed 750 for something i don't remember what it was not long ago and uh they had it right up there with the tellers yeah they've got they've got like that kind of money right there for sure because i like i've done that plenty of times um but i've a couple times i've pulled ten thousand out and they always had to like go get it mm. well somewhere in what's between another, what's another fun crime to think about robbing banks is always the one that i go to because it makes the most sense is like a fun thing to plan because you're yeah. robbing bank banks are evil and so it's fun to think about i don't what, what other ones do you guys i think car heists i think car heists in general like like stealing like a like a really really expensive car is interesting like that nick cage movie was good gone in 60 seconds the one where they're stealing like a hundred high-end cars in one night or whatever it is would you do it from like a dealership or an individual? I guess they were they all from from individuals because they're like getting these like super rare collectors cars, like 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 one of one hundreds and like like one of ones and stuff like that. Like ultra. Oh, it's good. Did it's, he pay off? Um, what are the people called to park your cars? It starts with valet. valets. Yeah, valet. Did he pay off valets to find out where the good cars were? They did a bunch of research. It was one of those movies where like they get the team together and Robert Duvall is part of the team. And um, um, who was uh, Brad Pitt's wife for a while? Angelina um, Jolie. Angelina Jolie. She's part of the team. She's super hot in that movie. Um, and then obviously Nick Cage. And the deal is like Nick Cage's brother is in some trouble with like some gangsters or something like that. And Nick Cage is like a retired car thief. And they're like, you have to fulfill this deal for us or your brother's dead. And he's like, that's impossible. What you want me to do? He's like, all right, well, your brother's dead then. So he has to like get a whole team of people together to help him steal. It's like a hundred cars in 48 hours or something. And it's everything from like an Escalade to like that, um, that one Mustang. Um, Shelby. It's, I think it's a Shelby, Shelby but it's a special Shelby GT. It's, um, let me see what it's Shelby called. Shelby exactly. Cobra. I'm just naming things I don't know much about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's called, uh, it's, uh, oh, Eleanor is what he called it. It's a customized 71 Mustang sports roof redressed to 73 that features an independent filmmaker. Good um, God. Blah, blah, blah. The Eleanor name is also used in 2000 remake for a customized, it's a Shelby Mustang GT500, um, like a 71, 72 model, something like that. Not a Cobra? It, Bullshit. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a sick looking car. I'll, I'll, I'll pull the picture of it. But uh, but he drives this thing like a. At the end of the movie, he's being chased by like the entire LAPD, and he, and a helicopter, and he's driving this thing like a bat out of hell because he's got to get to the dock, and it's it's a really good scene. It's a cool. I can't car. believe you haven't seen that, Taylor. It's Gone good. Sixty. It's pretty good movie. Little nice little heist yeah. movie. There's a ton of movies that Kyle has on the list for me that I need to watch. And that one doesn't even come. Well, actually, it's TV more than anything. You want me to watch Battlestar Galactica? Oh, um, is that is that good or not? I couldn't, can't tell I by mean, your how, how long are you going to commit to this uh, <laughs> education program? There's <laughs> nerdery when you're done with that one. How long is Battlestar Galactica? How many seasons was it? I don't really know. I need to watch at least three seasons. How many oh, are there? Like nine? There might be five. Okay. Oh, the other sh no supernatural was the one you want me to watch. Oh that no, 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 no! I don't you want you to watch that. I, I told That's you that. I, I I watched like part of the first season of Supernatural like six months ago or so. I liked it. It was it's really good. entertaining. It, it was good. It kept me engaged. I liked I liked the silliness of the creatures and how the show's not taking itself seriously at all. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Supernatural is a good show. The special like, effects like, are hysterical. They get better. 
they get better. Um, Damn it, I was wishing they wouldn't. I <laughs> like of it. Uh, like, all right, this show's about dragons, so we're going to make their thumbs glow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they, they, I don't know why they decided to make a dragon episode when they clearly could not afford a dragon. <laughs> like, they just make some flapping noises, and the guy's in the room all of a sudden. That literally happens. So um, you never see the full dragon form. It's just not even close. <laughs> not even close. Like, 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 I can't. I can't explain to you how much they underplayed the dragon aspect of the dragon. Game of Thrones just did man. that. Like, they eventually For, had dragons, but they you know, teased it. You know, and it, she, they they, they she were had like dragons in the bird cage, and they're like, "Let me see the dragons," and she's like. No, <laughs> like, you're just saving money on no. CGI. We already we already showed him once this episode. So. <laughs> so CGI then, is expensive. But the thing about that show, it like with Battlestar Galactica. Again, I, I I'm a little foggy on this. I haven't watched it recently, but it seems to me that there's like ten or fifteen episodes a season or something. Like it's not like crazy amounts of episodes. Like maybe even the first season is like ten episodes. Could be. It could be. It could be a little off on that. But Supernatural, I know is like 20 to 24 episodes a season for like 20 fucking seasons. Like yeah. there's legitimately like four or 500 episodes the, of the that most, show. The most supernatural thing about that show is how the protagonist still looks so great. Oh, oh my God. They, they, they age very well, like fine wine. Like, That's like, the like, supernatural part of the show. I'm over here aging like fucking heavy cream. And they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're aging like... Like fine wine, like uh, like whiskey, or I guess not whiskey in a decanter. Since Dick told me that's actually not a thing, it's just dude. It's just kind of fun to watch <laughs> actors age like regular. You know, ever watch Psych? Uh, no. Oh, you guys don't know Psych? Psych's a fun show. It might be a little better if you're older because they make references to stuff from like my childhood. But anyway, uh, the lead actor in it, first season, very handsome guy. Fifth season, my man's filled out a little bit. You know, like like they don't even make reference to it, but you're like, dude, that guy, he's eating well for the last five years. He is not the same. He just, it, I wonder if I can find it. Nothing wrong with eating well. <laughs> no, uh, Psych season one. This will just take me a moment. Yeah, yeah, psych- but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put supernatural on you because that is just. Far too much of a commitment. Oh, you um, gotta be retired. Well, Battlestar is the number one thing you've you've voiced. Battlestar, on me. yeah. So the Battlestar is legit, man. It's like like it, believe- it, there's nothing bad about it. Like like the acting, the special the special effects are so much better than the budget. It, it's like all right, it's not Star Wars. Okay, it doesn't look like Star Wars. It looks real though. Somehow, it looks like gritty. Like it looks grounded in a reality that exists. Like like their space planes look like fighter jets that go into space it's like they when they get out of them and the, it, they're really there it looks like to me like, like it looks like they built these props of like space planes vipers they're called and they're really fucking there like like, like they look real and mm-hmm. when they're like in space combat and they like zoom in on the pilot's face and he's like you know doing his thing and doing loop-de-loops it's like that looks real and uh the, o- the only things that look bad are the CGI Cylons when they've got like the, the, the big mechanical Cylons moving around that can look kind of shitty at times, but they don't show that a ton. Um, the space battles look real. Um, they don't use like a lot of like laser blasting type weapons. It's like missiles and machine gun fire I, I in space. Galactica is not the one where their, their ship is so strong that they beat everyone. It's the one where That's their Star ship Wars. is kind of shitty. Yeah, the 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 deal is Wait, that is when the, the Star Trek that has is, really good oh ship. Trek I said Star, it wrong. Star Trek the, Star Trek the, the Star Trek Enterprise is the <laughs> flagship of the what entire Enterprise. Like it's like the best ship. Oh yeah, he filled out. <laughs> wow. Oh, I am. Oh, the I am. The 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 <laughs> he was Look so at handsome that. at the start. And my, he, my man discovered oh my, the, my man discovered the Italian meat and cheese section. Of the, <laughs> <laughs> the a lot of prosciutto, a lot of gabagoo, a lot of, a lot of prosciutto, a lot of sopressata, a lot of mats, cool. a lot of fresh mats. Oh, <laughs> fucking ziti. Uh, what'd you say, um, Dick? Does it? Did his jokes change to like from like smart? Uh, from I, like smug skinny guy to just fat guy jokes by the now end the of it. Now the background music is it's tuba sounds when you. When you <laughs> <laughs> it, 
<laughs> they never really made <laughs> reference that. <laughs> to how his face changed, but it it did. And uh, I don't know. I kind of liked it. It humanized him for me. But oh, okay. Out. So uh, another like, thing about Battlestar Galactica. Um, so the deal is like, like the, the 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 interesting thing is that like so the Cylon the machine people come back and like decimate humankind right, and the way they do it is with, with like a computer virus. It's it's kind of like Terminator too. How they, they, they like their artificial intelligent computer computer virus goes into all the humans' defense systems and turns them on themselves, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and so like everything that's high tech killed itself like 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 and just it like like all of the like super high tech defense systems and spaceships all just got the switch flipped on them so when the yeah. cylons came they just ran right over everything the battle star star galactica it's called the galactica a battle star is like saying it's like big, the, biggest ship, right that star yeah a battle star is like a class of ship so the the battle star galactica was on its way to be retired and put literally into a museum. It was going to become its own museum that people could visit to see what battle stars used to look like in the old days. Like they've got like phones that like hang up on the wall to communicate around. They don't have a networked computer system inside. Like they have computers, but they're they're not wired. It's not there's no there's no network. It's really ass backwards kind of technology. Yeah. I mean it's it's like it's defunct technology. It's you can go to the space they can go to space and they have like corded phones. Um, What's well, a military ship? Like, a, <laughs> think of it like a submarine. It's it's very you much go like to space. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah, they, uh, go to the space and yet it is still corded phones. Why is this? They got a guy out back just letting out cable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like corded to like it's like the comm, right? If he wants to like talk over the intercom it's to everybody, like the Green Army Man, yeah, the comm. He grabs I like a uh, you know a, a phone piece off the wall, and so so it's unaffected by that whole like computer attack and so they're like the last ship standing and that's that's kind of a big part of the show it's a big premise of the show is that like okay. this old defunct technology is all that still works and, and what services mm. is Battlestar Galactica on is it for free somewhere I don't know not for free but I have Hulu Netflix Prime I, I have all the the streaming things I'm I only have Disney Plus because they have all the Simpsons and so once they get rid of the Simpsons, I'm getting rid of Disney. Oh, those motherfuckers! They're, see, they always have some, and then they'll send it to HBO Go yeah. or something like that. I got bad news. But that's literally what is it? Do I have to? I'm not buying it. Well, I guess you won't be watching then because it's on okay. Peacock, buddy. It's on Peacock. How much is it? Hmm. It's free on Peacock. I don't know what Peacock is. Peacock's NBC. It's oh, free so, if you okay, so it's free if I buy a new NBC streaming service. How much? The same is the one. NBC? Streaming service, fucking. I don't know what I pay, but I wanted the Office, man. I can't live my life with no Office in it, so I got Peacock. It's like I think like base basic bitch version is like four dollars a month, like super cheap. But then like the Office version is like eight or nine. I don't really know. I, I don't need to introduce office. you guys to my guy. Who's your? guy? I gotta introduce you guys to my guy. He's called a probation officer. <laughs> 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 I, I pay won't... for my content. If you look. Look, I do too. I'll I say pay this for I, a lot, but the, at some point, I feel like I, it, it's, I don't want to pay anymore. Look, I don't want to pay anymore either. And in whatever it is, 148 days and one hour and 13 minutes or whatever it is, we'll stop paying. But for now, I'm going to pay. Yeah, talk to Woody and his uh, guy, and I'm sure he'll have Battlestar Galactica to you for free in like eight minutes. So we got the off. He has an, a system to request movies that haven't come out yet, and I've tested it twice. He's very responsive. Who the hell is this wizard? He's not the I, one who almost died in the forest. They call him the wizard. <laughs> uh, so Battlestar Galactica. Dude, he watches the show. And if we mention stuff that like, well, he already has Battlestar Galactica. But if, if we mention stuff, he'll be like, oh, well, shit. Is we're it like gonna a need this. server or something? Yes. Yeah. A what server? Plex. Uh, I don't know what that means. Well, oh, you need God. a short You're about education. To find out, my friend. Oh, yeah, the world is about to the 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 scales are about to be removed from your eyes, like a like a biblical prophet. <laughs> <laughs> is that just a bu bunch of free media? It's uh, it's, it's, a, it's a it's, it's a an lifestyle. interface. To it's like, a lifestyle. you're gonna walk through that fucking uh, cupboard into Narnia, and on the other side is. Yeah. All of the entertainment you've ever even fucking heard. Taylor, of. think of a service that is like 
Peacock, Netflix, HBO Max, Showtime, and all Disney the media Plus. ever Disney Plus combined but free. Oh man, I get and it. Easily searchable. <laughs> in, it's indexed and Good. searchable. Like yeah. you just go like, hey, I'd like to watch Battlestar Galactica. Boom, there it is. But I, at the same time, I'd like to watch uh, Bad Batch, that new Disney Plus show. Boom, right there. Same, same place. Same yeah. place. Just I, I'm just going to do Captain America and Winter Soldier and see if it's there. Uh, it's like porn hub there. of her regular hub. Well, here's the movie oh, part. Oh, it's like Pornhub, but regular. You know what? I could use regular hub. Yeah. But I also don't have that deep of a of a media diet, honestly. Like I, I don't you watch see too much King of the Hill. God damn it! You gotta you gotta you're you're like that that guy Boom. who only eats. You're like one of those kids that only eats fucking like fucking one food or something like that. You, it's you, not you, that I'm just watching King. There's there's a there's you're a eating pizza pockets and you're and you're eight years old and it's time to expand your horizons to there's, some there's lasagna or something that i like watching over and over i like the first 10 to 12 seasons of the simpsons i like king of the hill i like the first you know probably about 10 12 seasons of family guy uh it's always sunny seinfeld uh what else what else oh i love like dick said i like those shows like 600 pound life and thousand pound sisters those are if you've never watched thousand pound sisters it is it is so fucking funny it is it's 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 genuinely funny dick knows like there some of the 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 fat bitches jokes are actually really good i can't um, watch it it's too gross for me it's, nah, it's like, like it's, that one girl has like fat rolls on her head like on her forehead yeah and it's like uh-huh. actually kind of like nasty to look at like i can't yeah it. but you need to watch it so you can see her getting and then bad stuff happens to her it's yeah. hilarious <laughs> i'm paying my bills Sometimes good things happen to them, but then also like they have the the. How standard, many seasons like, of Thousand Pound Sisters are there? There can't possibly be more than three. Uh, he has two of them. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ! Well, I was saying there couldn't be more than three because you know nature's going to take its course at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you this: there won't be five. Oh, yeah, it, there won't be. That's a four season show, Max. <laughs> replace one. That's one will one will croak, and they'll replace her with two more fatter sisters. <laughs> Fat dwarves. Total. They can get the total uh, when it's all said and done to like ten thousand pounds. The the best thing about my six hundred pound life is the Iranian doctor who does not give a fuck about anybody's feelings. Like like someone will walk in and it'll be like, "Here's Christy, and she weighed six hundred and fifty pounds last Tuesday or a a month ago," and then she goes in, she's like, "Well, I lost six pounds. That's pretty good news, isn't it?" And then he'll walk in and be like. Christy, you are not losing any weight. You have lost six pounds in the last month. That is unacceptable. I don't think you understand. You are dying. You are <laughs> going to die in the next... If you were to die in the next month, I would not be surprised. It's like, it's like I dream that. of talking to women the way that guy talks to women. Like, <laughs> no, you really are so fat is because you eat too much. You are addicted to food and you're not serious about it. And they're like, I am serious. <laughs> I am serious. I, I drove all the way here from Dallas. That's what you know. I love it. I got in a minivan. My boyfriend forklifted me into a minivan. I'm serious. Goes, you are not serious because you keep eating and you are enabling it. And I'm done with you. I'm yeah. done with you. Every time he's, so he's like he's, he's like a borderline Gordon Ramsay no of fat emotion. people. No where emotion. He just, he shuts and it down. It. You could have he, easily lost thirty pound this month, and you lost six. And you lost six pound. Do you think this is going to get you on the right track? No, it is not. You are dying. And he says stuff <laughs> like that. And they like, and just like Dick said. They have histrionic freakouts, or the family <laughs> sitting next to them will be like, "Well, I'm," uh, and then like their three hundred and fifty pound dad looks svelte next to them. They're like, yeah. well, so you get all the food, and well, yeah, I get all the food for the family. I gotta feed the family. It's like, so do you realize what you're doing is killing your daughter? You every time you go and buy it, KFC, you're killing her. It's like. Well, I just see it as providing food for I love her so. Well, I don't care what you say. You are killing her. And if you all do not get back in shape, you are gone. There are many more. And he talks like slow like that. There are many more people here who will work for it. I will not waste my time on you if you are going to come in here and lie to me about how much you've been eating. Because and because they'll say that they'll be like, you've lost 10 pounds. You went from 720 to 710. They're like, ho, 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 ho. And he's like, this is, and you tell me you abide by the diet. 
Yeah, yeah, I've been abiding by the diet. I've been doing it. You are lying to my face. (laughs) Now you are lying to my face on this because you would have lost 39 pounds if you had abided by the diet. It's like, that's, well, it's held in water weight. No, this is math. I have done it. (laughs) You would have lost 40 ish pounds had you stuck to the diet. You are lying to me. And I'm, if you lie to me, I love that. (laughs) He is he is hilarious. How, how know, long had they lo- how, how long had they been dieting to lose ten pounds? Oh, sometimes it's alive. like sometimes it'll be <laughs> <They're alive>. sometimes. <laughs> 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 That's funny. That's a great line. <laughs> they fucking, they'll take like a whole cauldron of food off the stove and bring it over and shovel. And every episode has, I'm sure it's contractually ob- obligated, but they all have a shower scene where they're in their fucking right. Re- and they're not like, they don't have any resources. So they're in like the, one of those shitty apartment fiberglass showers using a fucking, using a, a, a rag, yeah, a, hockey, a hockey stick with a rag it. tape to it. <laughs> Through their folds. Oh, it's so nasty. Dude, you guys are um, all guys, talking about how disgusting good. it is. It's just making me hungry. I'm so hungry Man, right I now. Know. I have 835 <laughs> calories left below my BMR, and it's 1030 at night. I have well, food coming to me after the show. Guess I, what? These ladies are not concerned at all with how many calories they have left. <laughs> Because you do the you do the math on it, and it and, and like first of all, like the like the two thousand pound sisters or the six hundred pound people, six hundred pound life is honestly a really conservative estimate for that show. Most yeah. of them are well over six hundred pounds, but even like the thousand pound sisters, it shows them in their home, and each of them at any given time have like a a, a personal two liter of soda, and like you'll see in different scenes that the soda was here. And now it's up here again. So a, a new a new two liter has been cracked to facilitate that. a canner of soda, so nobody's yeah, counting. <laughs> de- All right, you guys, I gotta go. It was a hell. Of, I love hanging oh. out with you guys. Um, Thanks I'm so much, on, man. I really Dick out. Bye. Always enjoy later. it. All right, later, man. Later, later, later. Everybody, go check out the Dick Show. Dick dot Show, great guy, very funny. Lots of people talking about him. Great guy, very funny guy. He's super. He's he's wrong about me being disgusting and fat. I don't care for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, I saw what you linked here, Woody. So I oh, think yeah. that this two hundred. So basically, Kyle, to catch you up to the NHL thing, the, yeah, the yeah. Tom the Tom Wilson scenario where he acted like an asshole and intentionally tried to ruin people's careers and, and hurt them. He got no suspension for that. We were talking about what we thought might happen yeah. on Tuesday. Zero suspension. Keep in mind that the NHL does this based on history, and he has five prior suspensions. Can I interrupt? Huge, no. yeah, of I, I feel like we haven't laid this out for people who didn't see PKN. You're Tom right, Wilson right. is a player for the Rangers, and he uh, got into Cap- a fight. Oh, with the Capitals, my mistake. He was playing against the Rangers. And uh, he got into a fight kind of with two people. One guy, as the guy was sort of falling forward, he put his chest on that person's back and sort of rammed his face into the ground. And then another guy did – help me out, Taylor. What was this? Did he have two so offenses? The, the, uh, yeah. So, so the first one was like uh, Buknevich was falling in front of him, and he did something which is well understood to be a dirty thing in the NHL. You're playing on ice, one of the hardest surfaces in the world, and he put his 6'5", 240-pound frame on top of this guy as he was falling and put his legs behind him like a wrestling thing to drive his face into the ground and and that guy's out for the season the guy who he did that to he he has concussion protocol he's probably having like light visibility problems he did that the other person he did it with was artemi panarin uh the all-star of the rangers one of the best players in the nhl he's an 80 million dollar asset for the most valuable franchise in the nhl the new york rangers the only one that's worth like two billion dollars for the franchise and he he grabbed the back of artemi panarin's head his hair because he has long hockey hair and he pulled him to the ice and went on top of him. And you can see Artemi Panarin's head bounce off the ice. And so now Artemi Panarin is out for the rest of the season. Granted, New York not making the playoffs. So it's not the end of the world. And but the that's season is over. like five games. The, the season's almost over. But even so, this is an all star and $80 million asset for the New York Rangers, who has a huge contract sign. And he cracked his head on the ice. And it was only like a little bit later that they're like, yeah, Artemi Panarin is going to have to go to like, therapy for this and like and like try and and get back on his feet like this is no joke concussion protocol is no joke concussions fuck you up and he did that to him 
And this guy, Tom Wilson, has done this many times. He uh, got suspended for 20 games just two years ago for hurting a blue player, a, a blues player, in a pregame, in a pregame of the season. He did that. He is he's a genuine retard piece of shit. And I I hope like really, really the only way that the Rangers could have handled because what the Rangers did was all wrong. You know, and I'm going to say some things that are like not hockey. <clears throat> OK, but like this is the way it works if you have a player like Tom Wilson on your team is the Rangers tried to go after Tom Wilson in this most recent game. They tried to make him pay for it. No, if you actually want to make a player like Tom Wilson pay for this behavior, what you do is you send someone out there and you take a wild, dangerous run at Alex Ovechkin. You take a dangerous run at Nicholas Backstrom. You destroy their goalie when he's behind the net. That's what you actually do to shut this shit down. You sh- you say, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna pull dirty moves on us. We're gonna pull up an AHL guy, and his entire job is gonna be to hurt Alex Ovechkin, the best goal scorer in NHL history." And until Wilson stops behaving, Wayne this- carry on. <laughs> I like it better if they go after the coach because then it's just ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling like, you, like, it, like you bring up the AHL game. guy, he like comes out on the ice, like 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 that fucking what's grabs what's him the by movie? the tie. And pull he, he goes Adam to the Sandler, other bench uh... and just grabs the coach and drags him onto the ice and starts beating the shit out of him. Then it's just clear, like like, like what they were going for there. I mean, it, but it was it's not even the coach as much as it is Tom Wilson. Yeah, but he this, can do a lot more damage to the coach. He's probably like a 50-year-old man who hasn't been on the ice in a decade or more. They don't, they don't care if, if they're – I mean, first of all, if you grabbed a coach, you're kicked out of the NHL forever. You can't do that. He but wasn't like, making and, and it. I, we get somebody not, off the street. We get a fan out of the stand. <laughs> find a big one. I, I'm not saying that this is morally right. <laughs> I'm just saying that hey, if buddy, the Rangers, can you skate? It doesn't matter. You won't need them. Come on. If, if, There's if one the Rangers, dude in snowshoes <laughs> shuffling out there. I, I'm telling Throw you, on these cleats. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know hockey pretty well, and I, I know the pace of the game. And you, the, the the thing the Rangers did, which first of all they did do the right thing by starting the next game with a line brawl. So they put their fourth line out there and they tell every single forward to start a fight instantly. So there's three fights right off the bat on the drop of the puck on the first period. That's the right move. You're supposed they to. They lost that. two out of three of those fights. They lost two out of three of those fights, and. And well, actually, uh, you, I, I would say that they lost one. They clearly won one, and then one was a draw because I don't like that shit where they count the winner of a hockey fight as whoever threw the person down. Because sometimes the person who gets thrown down is just wah, 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 just fucking him up in the face, and then the guy who's getting fucked up is like, Whoa! and they're like, oh, he ended up on top. He won. No, that guy's got like two bleeding eye sockets and the other guy got tossed to the ice. Who cares? So I, I would have said it was more of a draw off the line brawl. But truly, if they wanted to, to get to Wilson in a true way, because you can't beat up Tom Wilson. The Rangers don't have a big enough player. If they want a big enough guy to beat up Tom Wilson, they got to bring in Vegas and let Ryan Reeves knock his shit in. Yeah. But what they okay. should have done is been like, hey, do the line brawl and then the rest of the game, Fuck up their star players. TJ Oshi, fuck him up. You take a penalty, who cares? Right out of the playoffs, hurt them. Make them pay in the playoffs. Make it so that Ovechkin's ankle hurts in the playoffs. And this is dirty hockey I'm talking about. Just hit about. him with a stick, you, right? You have to respond in kind. If Tom Wilson's going to do this shit, then goddamn, the Rangers better go in there and make him pay for this shit. And the way you make him pay, a bullshit player who's not going to win games on his own, is by destroying the star players on their team. But that's, that's really hard to, to do. do. Ovechkin's not easy to hit, and he's a big guy himself. That, that's why I said back. We're gonna need one guy to hold him because Ovechkin <laughs> would. O- Ovechkin is honestly a hard guy to truck because he's like six four and like. <laughs> o- Ovechkin is the best goal scorer in the league. He's six four and bef- in, in his early career, he's the he, second best hitter. He's like he's in, a real yeah, problem. In, in his in, in his early see, career, I was picturing Ovechkin as like a speedy little guy, like like he's like five eight, but he's twice as fast as everyone else. Like he's in and out of the lines or something. Ovechkin is a monster. He's and that's just a gigantic, he's, talented he's man. So dangerous is because like early in his career, he would throw huge huge hits all the time and steal the puck and then score. But he, some of his hits would be so big that he would get penalties. And they're like, you're way too valuable to go in the box. Please don't go in the box. You're the best goal scorer in NHL history. The best pure goal scorer, I'll say. So that's what the Rangers should have done if they were trying to get serious. What the Rangers did as far as their statement, I think was awesome. It was great of them to call out Peros in the NHL on their bullshit for not suspending Tom Wilson for this. And the only re- and and 
like I said, there were enforcers, there were NHL commentators saying things like, I don't know why the hell the NHL wouldn't punish Wilson other than if they were to punish him, the extent to which they punished him would have to be so severe that it would pull him out of the playoffs. And we want Washington to do well in the playoffs because since they won the cup in 2018, they're one of the biggest franchises, you know, recency bias, things like that. And so I could absolutely see that happening where they give Tom Wilson the benefit of the doubt because they want to see Washington have a, a, a deep so it's run. business. It made a business decision. It's probably a business decision, but uh, I don't care about that. It's it's fucking yeah. It, it even from fair. the outside looking in, for someone like me, because um, like the guys in the OG side of the re- uh, subreddit were posting pictures of like the the um, the Rangers uh, box, like the penalty box, and how it was just stacked full of guys and everything. I sent them to you guys on WhatsApp, and it was just everybody's kind of incensed about it. It's 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 pretty ridiculous the way that was handled. Yeah, it's know, ridiculous man. the way it was handled, and like. Just, just the over the line way that Wilson plays. It's not hard nosed hockey. It's not like you want to see hard nosed hockey. There's a million other players you can look to. He's a dirty player. He's the kind of guy who knows. And also Wilson, he turtles every time he plays a team like Vegas Dude, because I Ryan Reeves funny. Is on Vegas because he does not want anything to do with Ryan Reeves because Ryan Reeves will humiliate him on the ice. And so this guy will throw a dirty ass hit and then skate like a bitch back to the bench, or he'll fight someone four inches shorter than him. Tom Wilson is a fucking bitch. I had, I had like a dozen people, only two of which I knew were capital fans in my pre PKA stream, Taylor Merka on Twitch. Follow me. Multiple people all trying to goad me into arguments and off like in the beginning part of the stream, I was like, you're not going to great bait, mate. I rated eight out of eight, but I'm not <laughs> going to fall for it. And then by the end of the stream, I'm like, but he was fucking doing this. <laughs> I, I, totally, I totally fell into it. But yeah, it's, it's a really interesting thing to see. The fact that they find Tom Wilson $5,000 for a hit that anyone else would be suspended. And then they find the New York Rangers two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for their statement where they called out george peros the the head of uh, nhl player safety a former enforcer by the way if you can find 15 minute compilations of a guy fighting and hurting people on youtube in the nhl that guy has no business being the director of player safety like george peros single-handedly doled out dozens of concussions and hurt people forever shanahan was a tough guy and he was great at that job Shanahan was great at that. Wait, no. Was Shanahan the head of player safety? Brandon Shanahan? I'm almost positive. If he was, I would give him the benefit of the doubt because Shanahan is a good example of a hard-nosed player. He did things that now would be seen as dirty, but back then were okay. You know, even like back then, you could say like like Eve, Scott Stevens' antics in 2002 were edgy in 2002. No one was like, that's hard-nosed hockey other than Devils fans. But hmm. it's it just totally, you know, Shanahan was a player before a bruiser. He never tried to end anybody's career. He's he's one of the best players of all time. You know, top 100 at least. Well, more than top 100. But uh, yeah, I I hate that. Uh, I I actually really like the Washington Capitals as a team. I think Backstrom and Ovi are such a cool combo. I like Oshie. He played for the Blues for the longest time. We drafted him. It's it's literally just Tom Wilson. Everyone but Tom <sighs> Wilson I like on the Capitals. But this I, guy's a piece of shit. Fuck do you him. remember? You are you too young for Sean Avery? No, not at all. Yeah, Sean Avery was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Avery was a total piece of shit, but he was an annoying troll piece of shit. And I, I couldn't make up my mind if I disliked him or not. Like, they made new rules about him. Kyle, you've probably heard about it because I know you watched a YouTube channel where they talked about new rules. Mm-hmm. Plays going on, and he would just put his stick in front of the goalie's face, <laughs> waving it back and forth. Just hard to see, hard to see, hard to see doing that to him. <laughs> And the, it's like the Air Bud rules. They're like, well, there's no rule against that. <laughs> like, but you really shouldn't be able to do that. And there were a couple. He would just come out with annoying ways to like distract the goalie. Inner, I, yeah, he was always doing shit. Remember that guy? Who's the Bruins who lick the other guy? Oh god, uh, that, that was a uh, Brad Marchand. There's no rules about licking people either. And, and you're like, what? There are now. There should be. There- they they made a rule that that is roughing or something. <laughs> 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 so no longer can you lick someone's face uh, as you're playing. But yeah, yeah. Sean a- And you know what's funny? I think it was Sean Avery who I saw on Twitter. Like, and I was watching it. And first of all, Sean Avery, very like weird spoken guy. Like he talks like a serial killer. If you watch him, him hmm. talk. 
And his take, like I was, I, I watched his clip on the whole Tom Wilson thing. And I was like, I wonder what Sean Avery's going to say. He totally agreed with me. He was like, you know what? That he's just waving his me. stick in the man's face. <laughs> and, and like, like it's not like he's standing flat footed in front of him. And he's with got his back like to the play. Just like, bothering he's, the he's goalie. Windshield wiper. And he's not doing it like tr he's not trying to hide it. I've seen him do it three times and we're 30 <laughs> seconds into the video. Like, like yeah. it's an active play. Like, like they're trying to score. His back and is he, to the play and he's just yeah, all over this. Just, <laughs> and he's having a blast to it. And it, and it was smart. It was funny. But like his take on the Tom Wilson thing was exactly what I said. He was like, yeah, you put me in the game after that. I don't give a fuck about Tom Wilson. I don't care what I'm going to do. Is I'm good, and he says it like that. And he was actually, you know, not a bad. He was a skilled NHLer. He's like, what I do is I dish in a nice juicy puck behind the net. I get their goalie to come out to collect it. As he's coming out to collect it, I take ten strides to get as fast as I can, and I hit the goalie as hard as I can behind the net, and I try and knock him out, and I try and take him out of the game. And then Tom Wilson's gonna learn that you can't do that. Otherwise, someone like me is going to take your goalie out of the game. And I was like, you know what? That, you know, if, if Tom Wilson's going to behave that way offensively, he better be fucking prepared defensively for his players. And you know what will happen immediately when something like that happens? Ovechkin, Backstrom, Oshie, Holt, well, not Holtby anymore, whoever their, their starting goalie is, they're all going to talk to him privately and scold him and be like, Tom, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you not realize what's happening here? Our most useful players are getting hurt and targeted because of your antics. Get your shit together. Get it together. That's what would actually happen. They would say, you're you're going to let Ovechkin and our goalie get run because you want to well, hurt... Well, not Ovechkin. We've covered that. He's very hard to run. Okay, you couldn't hurt Ovechkin. <laughs> okay. well, the Backstrom, the guy that sets up Ovechkin for all of his shots. You could hurt Backstrom pretty easily. He's not a big guy. He's like 5'11". And so you could pretty pretty easily smash him. I, I just, you know, and also like it doesn't make me seem good at all to be agreeing with Sean Avery <laughs> because no. you, you look up Sean Avery on YouTube and some of the shit he does. The only person who's like totally dirtier than him is Rafi Torres. Do you remember Rafi Torres? I uh, no, I'm trying to. Yeah, that, that I guy. Know, I, I was watching. Uh, it's funny. I was watching uh, compilations just the other evening on YouTube of pests and bullies getting their comeuppance like whole montages of it and i was <laughs> i was just loving it like even seeing people like sean avery like just get jacked and and like be on the ground like oh, oh. it's Dude, like yeah that's what you get bitch that's what you get for trying to ruin other and sean I avery hate pests, way, it, but i love to hate pests i'm so glad they exist in the nhl i i and it takes well not as much anymore but it used to take bravery to be a pest because people would beat you up for it you know and sure it's easy to think that because they're pro hockey players, they don't mind getting beating up, beaten up or like it's okay or it's part of their job or they're fearless or maybe don't feel pain. They're pro hockey players, right? No, they hate being beaten up. They really dislike it as much as you or I would. And they fear it. They they, they get, um, like I was hearing enforcers talk about this shit. Like, you, you know, you're going to fight that night. You've got butterflies in your stomach. Like, have you ever been... Maybe like there's a fight waiting for you at the end of school. It still feels like that in the NHL, and everyone thinks I'm gonna win. You know, and it's, sometimes I don't well, win. You have to just watch the first ten seconds of this clip, Kyle and Woody. So this is Tom Wilson, the guy I'm talking about, skating up to Ryan Reeves. Ryan Reeves is an amateur boxer for the Golden Knights. He <laughs> looks away, oh. like he's not gonna punch him in the face, and then he decks. Ryan Reeves with a sharp, hard punch. Perfect. And crumples that little bitch. I, Ryan Reeves was was one of my favorite blues when he played for us, and I still love the dude now that he plays for Vegas. That, I real. did like the first ten seconds of that. I wish yeah. I could show, dude. NHL in particular is rough for. Uh, <laughs> oh, when he fucks up right there, just the whop, just right in his he fucking. He just throws place. a real quick, nice little short left punch <laughs> without to the looking. Guy's chin. Without looking, Without, perfect aim. Yeah, it's perfect. It, it decks him. Can yeah, anybody look, beat Ryan Reeves? Uh, if someone was to beat Ryan Reeves, it'd probably be Zdeno Chara. Oh. And that's only because he's six foot ten. Dude, that was fun. So Chara was on the ice when the there were three fights at the beginning of the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so 
There are three fights that break out. No one wants to fight Chara. Chara skates over to the Rangers and he's like, hey, you guys want to fight? And they're like, no. <laughs> so he respected it. He was like, yeah, if you don't want to fight, all right, we'll just sit That's here what's great. That's what's great about ch- someone like Chara is like he'll fight when he wants to, but he respects the code of like, hey, do you guys want to fight? Well, no, I'm a f- I'm a six foot defenseman and I have nothing to do with this. They called me up two days ago. <laughs> All right. Like, oh, but uh, Zdeno Chara did have a fight in the last week and now he is the oldest recorded NHLer to get in a fight, 43 years old. And he beat the shit out of that guy. It yeah. wasn't even close. There's a there's a photo of him that's all over the place where he just looks like fucking Frankenstein with his fucked up teeth, like pulling back to beat this guy up. I watched a video of Young Chara in a fight. It was linked on Reddit not long ago. <laughs> I I make these references to Bam Bam from the Flintstones. I don't know if other people have seen it. I get it. I get it. And, and, and he's just just the guy. He's, he's got him off his feet. He's off balance, and he's throwing him left and right, and he's literally like pulling him through the air like a windsock. And uh, it was like, oh my god, you could do that to a grown man. Yeah, he's Sorry. enormously strong. There, in the in the fight that he's in, where he's looking like a fucking beast in the last week, he's mm-hmm. fighting Matt Martin, who is six foot four and a fighter. And so he's not beating up some nobody. He's beating up someone whose most of their job is throwing big hits and fighting. So but he's six. I, I like that about Chara. I like that about Chara. Chara's done some dirty shit. That shit about Pacioretty. And now I'm talking to the eight people out there who know the, the hit I'm talking about. <laughs> All the Montreal fans and, and the Toronto fans know what I'm talking about. Mm, you but pluralized yeah. that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, there's a bunch of Toronto fans. Even in my 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 way smaller than this show stream, when I talk about hockey, tons of Toronto fans, some Canucks fans, Montreal fans, and then thankfully – because I've amalgamated so many people into being Blues fans that we can uh-huh. still outnumber them. <clears throat> I'm so excited well, for the playoffs to happen. I really want Kyle's Colorado Avalanche to take first place in the division so we can watch Blues versus Avalanche first round. That only would be a couple great. games behind. Very close. Yeah, you're really close to the Vegas Golden Knights and taking them over. You the Hurricanes are the best team in the NHL right now. They're doing tremendous. Best who, record, who they, longest uh, win streak. Who are they slated to play in the first round? I don't know. It is is that division all solidified? No, I think. Uh, it, oh, it looks like they're going to have the pleasure of dominating Nashville. Oh, if you got more hockey talk, I'll wait. No, mm-hmm. no, you're okay. Go ahead. So we were talking about um, that Fabia guy, who's uh, Diego Sanchez's like cult leader mm-hmm. um, on PKN, and uh, today I saw Cowboy Cerrone's like interview where like the fight Saturday night and so Cowboy Cerrone is being interviewed he was going to be Diego's opponent made a lot of sense they're both veterans older guys not doing so hot in the last four or five fights and so and Cowboy's a great guy great interview he has no like he knows where he is career wise anyway he's uh, he's like uh, he's talking about his Fabia guy and uh and they were like Diego says that he rolled with Fabia once and Fabia tapped him in 40 seconds. What do you make of that? And he's like, I think he was, oh, I believe he tapped him, but I think, I don't think they were talking about jujitsu. You know what I mean? <laughs> different strokes for different oh, folks. Hell fellas. yeah, brother. Hell yeah. He's do you like, know that he's Cowboy like, has a history with Diego and hates him? Uh, I, I, didn't, have a I didn't know that, but, but, but he went, he basically went on and said that Diego was gay and that, um, <laughs> and that Fabia was his cult leader slash lover. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> Which is literally what I was guessing at on PKN, saying that Fabia was molesting uh, Diego and that now, he was, was absolutely the, cold. Was the Fabia Diego camp hyper defensive about it? Well, they're complete. They're out of the UFC, so nobody knows what oh. they say about anything. Oh, okay. You know, he he got cut from the UFC for you know the 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 shenanigans. He should just wait. So if he fired that guy, his trainer, he could get back in the UFC. I doubt it. Because he doesn't have belong to, in the UFC. He doesn't belong in the UFC. Um, and, and plus, Dana White paid him $220,000 basically just to leave, essentially, at the at the end of their little uh, discussion recently. Huh. So he's done, and Bellator says they don't want him. That's as of like three hours ago. Shit, where do you even go after that? Bare knuckle fighting. Oh, is that what he's going to do? Uh, I, that would be my guess. He hasn't said. But that's where you go when Bellator doesn't want you and the UFC has cut you. How much bigger is UFC than Bellator? 
I would say UFC is like 75% of the market and Bellator is the like is like 20% and then everybody oh, okay. else is five. Well, then, then Bellator is definitely no slouch in that market. No like, slouch at all. And uh, I, I, I saw a, a post the other day where they were arguing that Bellator's light heavyweight division is better than the UFC's, and I agree. Interesting. So you could get a real rivalry in these divisions or these If they did players. like some sort of like um, – what do they call it? A Grand Prix? Is that what they call it, Woody? When they have like like a like a tournament in I one night? I think you're right. Oh, I, maybe yeah. If they had like some sort of a Grand Prix style tournament where they had like the UFC's top five mm. face off against Bellator's top five at light heavyweight, my money would be on Bellator uh, winning like three fifths of of the fights and and taking the championship. Is that the only weight you would say that about? I haven't looked match? at their roster, but but their in particular, the UFC just isn't very deep. the 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 thing about the UFC that's the only place that I can I can think of right now off the top of my head where the UFC is just not very deep, and that's partially because John Jones moved up, DC retired, and like a lot a lot of pieces are moving around. They caught him at recently. a weak moment, and and the other thing that's tricky. So Michael Chandler was their champ at one fifty five. Mm. Now he's walked into the UFC's 155 and might be their best fighter. Who's better? Very good. Right? So Khabib wow. is better, but he retired. Now I'm we a have... big Gaethje fan. He rides high for me. Poirier as well. Um, and uh, and look, I'm never. I'm not going to give up, up on Tony Ferguson until he loses one more. And uh, and Oliveira is is uh, way more talented than I give him credit for. Is how I like to yeah, describe yeah, yeah. him. I think the the three of those guys, not not so much um, Ferguson, but mm-hmm. Poirier, uh, Gaethje, and uh, Chandler. I don't know who comes out on top. Yeah, yeah, and um, and look, Connor's about to fight Poirier again, and we'll see what happens, and that will decide what I think about both of them. Yeah. Did you see? Um, the hell's the Trump guy, the MAGA guy at one seventy, Colby Covington. Did you see him talk about Connor? No. Is he trying to get a fight with Connor? Although, although not to cut you off, but like there's two Trump guys at that weight. Masvidal also Trump guy. Okay. Um, Trump called Masvidal after his loss last fight and said Usman got a lucky shot on him. It was, it was fun to listen to. This is a Colby's line. I haven't seen it. This is uh, referring to what McGregor said, but I've heard about it. And it's obviously just Connor trying to get some hype, get some headlines. Come on, dude. You just got knocked out by Dustin Sarrier. Come on. Are you serious? You want a title shot at 170? You're getting beat up by gatekeeper lightweights. And now you want to come to the top of the 170 welterweight division? Everyone knows what Connor's doing. He's not really going to do that. He's not really going to come up and fight welterweight. He's just doing that to grab attention, to grab headlines, make people think he's being taken seriously. Because honestly, Connor's a joke. He's a laughing stock in the MMA community. And even to casual fans, they're just like, Connor's washed up. He's done. He's made all that money with his whiskey. He made all that money with the Mayweather fight. He has no motivation. Nothing gets him up early in the morning to fight. He tries to say it's for his kids, but man, the guy's done. He's got nothing left in the tank. Fucking Colby hitting hard. I agree with all that. Um, I think I, I think I agree with all that. Um, like like ninety nine percent of it, at the very least. Uh, like like man, and, and I don't think it's all negative, right? What he didn't say is he doesn't have the skills to cut it. He doesn't have like 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 he didn't say that because I don't think it's true. I think if Connor was dirt mm-hmm. poor right now and like, like like this is like a Rocky movie. This is just like a Rocky movie. Like Connor just made way too much fucking money. He was too good for his own good. If that, like, 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 literally, he was too good for his own good. He was too flashy, too entertaining, and the too only thing marketable. That, okay, now I'm starting to agree. I was about to say something I disagree. He didn't make all that money because he was the best at 155 we've ever seen, or he was. He made all that money because he's the most entertaining at 155 to watch. He and could 45. put on a fucking show yeah. and he could promote a fight. 145 and, wasn't interesting until Connor existed. Mm, I don't have an opinion about that, but Ooh, Jose Aldo, like, did. Guy yeah. fucking pulled out of so like six fights. Yeah, he was always cracking. I, I don't remember. He was always having some kind of a fucking issue yeah. with a weight cut or something like that. But in any case, like like yeah, Connor got way too rich for his own good. Um, I don't know why he still wants to like be in this. I don't know why he isn't just enjoying his money on a beach with whores. Like why? Did, I don't know why he's still. Some people like the attention. He can get it other ways though. Like. Maybe I saw I saw Logan Paul. I saw so Logan Paul's about to fight um, Mayweather, right? 
and I saw they had a confrontation where they're like, Did you see, they had a scrum, they had a little scuffle, did they? And uh, and uh, Logan, like, like Mayweather's talking shit to Logan, and Logan does the most juvenile thing I've ever seen done. Like, like it was fun to see Connor and him kind of like mince words with each other. Logan just goes, Got your hat, and he yanks the hat off his head and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> I like and Mayweather it. is like melting down, like give me my hat back. He's <laughs> like, nah, I got your hat. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. His fucking hat. Mayweather just got hair surgery or something. He got all his hair back. Oh, maybe that's why he took his hat then. Yeah, he might be sensitive to the whole hat situation because Mayweather was a bald dude and now he's not. Now he's got great hair. Yoinked his fucking hat off his head. Um, I, I had a clip of it somewhere, but I'm I'm failing. That's interesting. But, uh, I, I didn't. Then that probably is why he was so turned off by the hat thing. I didn't know there was a baldness issue. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. The, a half a billion dollars really gets rid of that. Oh yeah, he's got a full head of hair. He yoinks it off his head and runs away. And Mayweather like takes off after him. But but Mayweather's got like a full like fucking thick black man head of hair. Yeah, I. I Did we just lose Taylor? No, no, I'm right. I here. didn't lose. Oh, it. okay. My didn't. screen got weird. My, that's on me. And uh, I don't know if you know Mayweather and Fifty Cent are friends. Fifty Cent's roasting him. Apparently, Mayweather got a beard transplant too. What? Yeah. You know, I want to see if Derek talks beard about beard transplant. This. I never hear about anybody getting that. I'm looking at pictures that make it look like a beard transplant. Uh, Why would you get a beard transplant? Just, just don't have a beard if you don't grow one. That, that that seems scary. It's not like a, or I guess what they're doing is just inserting hair follicles into yeah. your, your face. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I don't that. know. It, Look at that. Where is it? Oh, they, oh, why did they go with pubic hair, though? <laughs> That's a thing. Like, so hair transplants, if you don't know, I'm, I think there's more than one way to do it. One is to cut a whole, like, football shape off the back of your head and put it somewhere else. And the other way, I'm, I'm, I might be wrong about this, but I think the more common way is they take it follicle by follicle off the back of your hair here where you don't bald, and then they put it in the front and reinsert it one by one. And then they like come and go or something. It takes a couple months before you get your final hairline. Yeah. With the beard though, like you can't take head hair and put it on your beard, I think. It would it's come in as hair. head hair. Yeah, right? It's not a whisker. So where is the donor hair for a beard? Yeah, I don't get that because your beard's probably similar to mine, as is it's Kyle's. Hair. Similar to mine. Yeah, it's, it's all like, stiff and whiskery. Like my, too. If if like a like if a head hair of mine falls out on my counter in my bathroom and a beard hair does, it doesn't take any differentiation for me to be like that's clearly They're the very beard different. Hair. The one that's four times as thick and that's like hard and stiff. Yeah, that's my beard hair. Obviously. Yeah, it's almost made to be armor or something, like like evolutionarily. Like it's 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 made yeah. to be some tough stuff. It's you the can toughest hair on our body. Like like I, I compare compared it to pubic hair, but it's not. Pubic hair is like light and fluffy hair. I know that like Woody, you've mentioned it. I've given myself splinters from my from my beard hair. You have yeah. too. Where like it'll yeah. stick in there. Like cause it's just I did it from my head hair. I think less now. It's maybe thinner, but it it used to be like a running thing in the fact like it, when Jackie would cut my hair, you get splinters from it. But Oof. I feel like it's thinner than it used to be. You can do that minoxidil thing. I know someone who's doing the minoxidil beard stuff right now but with a micro like, needling and uh is with, with and compounding with minoxidil. It works. Like I, like you, I'm Come pushing on, fifty. I'm happy with it. <laughs> like, uh, no, I'm, no beard. Oh, beard. oh, mm. yeah. I, I, they 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 run that that uh, electronic micro needler over their face, and uh, and then they uh, put the minoxidil treatment on there, and it soaks into the holes that you've just punched in your face, and you grow a beard. <laughs> and in like six to eight months, you like double, triple your beard. Like, there's like some crazy before and afters. Is that what he did? No. Oh, I'm not saying that's what he did. I, I seriously would imagine he has some. They probably took dead man's beard hair and stuck it into him. He paid what <laughs> that man can pay for whatever, you know, it takes. That's that's fucking that's a dead man's beard. He's wearing. <laughs> I choose to believe that. I like it. Should we wrap? Yeah, yeah. I think so. The night is still young. I like that show. PKA 542. It's a good show. <laughs>